Welcome to the Planescape, where good and evil clash, where law and order maintain their delicate balance, the battleground for gods and monsters. Many heroes have written their legends in the stars of the Astral Sea, but these are not their stories. The Per Aspera and her crew, Kiana, Finbar, Virla, and Danny, may not be the stuff of legends yet, but they're definitely rolling with difficulty. Hello, and welcome to our little planes hopping D&D campaign, folks. My name is Austin, your friendly neighborhood dungeon master, and as always, I am joined by my torpid slushalottles tied to tough tubs of terrifying temperatures. Say hello, everyone. <laughs> Howdy. I still feel bad that we couldn't save it. We Don't left them behind. Mm-hmm. I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to rub it in just a little bit. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Hi, audience. Uh, and that's tough with T-U-F-F. Uh, it's a volcanic rock. Uh-huh, yeah. Oh, like the Minecraft We've all played rock. Minecraft. It's like yeah. Minecraft, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, welcome back for uh, uh, Season 3, Episode 2, More Exciting Adventures of the Question Mark Crew of the Paraspera? <gasps> Don't what? you dare. Don't How? you put that question mark in there. So before we find out what a kind of unhinged nonsense our heroes get up to when they no longer have each other to tether themselves down, uh, I'm going to throw it over to uh, our producer, Sophia, to please uh, tell us about our sponsor. Yeah, well, uh, thanks for kicking that on over here. Um, maybe getting an offsides penalty. I don't know a lot about soccer, but I do know that. Uh, we're today, this adventure, is brought to you by World Anvil, uh, our, our tri- tested and true friend. Uh, throughout these many adventures. Uh, today, uh, World Anvil is bringing you an adventure. I, this is going so bad. <laughs> uh, World Anvil it's is okay. a brother. Right, cut it. Cut <laughs> it from the top. No, I've thrown her off. We, we, <coughs> we power through. Uh, I should have gone with the... Lottles. I should have gone with the baseball metaphor. In, in trying to forge through a new sport, I instead threw off you're the entire... Still doing the met- you're still doing the bit? Always. Just, just do the... Even just always. Do the, the just do the the disgraceful <laughs> defeat, you turn to baseball... Today's adventure is brought to you by World Anvil. (laughs) World Anvil is a browser-based world-building tool designed to help you, the creator, write and world-build, all while keeping your work organized and in one place. World maps, calendars, customizable wikis, visual timelines, and more let you decide how best to build your world. And when you're ready to write, look no further than the built-in word processor. You can write your prose directly in World Anvil to keep every step of the process in one place. We all know TTRPGs are all about the power of friendship, and with real-time collaboration, you can work with your players or other creators on the same project. On top of all that jazz, World Anvil recently rolled out a new feature called Whiteboards. This visual canvas allows creators to freely draw out their ideas, adding diagrams, flowcharts, mood boards, and more. If you're a more visual creator, this feature is perfect for you. You can chart out character arcs, storyboard key scenes, uh, design a plan that will help you win the ship back from your kind of pseudo uncle in a series of complex diagrams of the junkyard you grew up in or whatever else you need to help make the story you see in your mind come to life. Interested? Of course you are. And it only gets better because for our listeners, World Anvil is offering a special discount. Just use code PLUG at checkout for 40% off a yearly membership. That's code PLUG, P-L-U-G, at checkout for 40% off a yearly membership. Thanks again to World Anvil for sponsoring today's adventure and for suffering through the introduction to this ad read. I'm a professional. <laughs> With that, we're going <laughs> to run up to the pitch. And we're going to run up to the pitch? Kick it on we're, back. We're trying... I haven't played soccer since we're I was like eight. Now? <laughs> are you. Are you. Are you I was golfing. We're just making a sports thing now. Is a soccer thing now? Soccer pitch, that's a thing, right? Am I crazy? Uh, you came okay. to the wrong group for that one. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Soccer pitch. No one can tell me I'm wrong because no one knows the truth. <laughs> hey, don't, okay, we don't know okay. enough about sports to dispute you. <laughs> no, no, no. I Googled it. Uh, the, there is a <laughs> Wikipedia page it, for football pitch. Uh, yeah, it's the okay, playing surface for the game of association football. <laughs> oh. Its dimensions and markings are defined by law one of the laws of the game. Point, Richie. All oh, right. wait, I know about the laws of the game. <laughs> you do? <laughs> yeah. Do you know yeah, why I it's capitalized it ominously? Sometimes I like to joke about the importance of the laws of the game. We don't need to get into it right now. Yeah, I was going to say, speaking anyway. of the laws the of the game. The only laws of the game uh, I care about are rolling initiative. <laughs> <laughs> Austin, please take us to whatever adventure awaits, because otherwise this oh. could go on forever. 
The energy well, is already see. immaculate. <laughs> let's see what adventure awaits. When last we left our heroes, shipless, homeless, perhaps, given uh, a forced shore leave, so to speak, the heroes of the Prospera find themselves dispersed to their own goals, quests, uh, following their own whims across the vast planescape. To begin with, well, let's see where we begin. Uh, can I have everyone uh, roll a d20? Let's see who rolls highest. Oh, We're rolling oh, initiative. oh God. Let's go. No, no, no. Or... If it's initiative, I win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, DM, if it's a natty one, do I just not play this round? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Okay. Well, thanks All right. for joining us. Right. We go back to the ship and Kiana's not there? Wow, oh, just order a pizza. Really put my legs up for the night. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kiana finds a new home. Rolled new character. Okay. Uh, so we got a one and a four. I'm assuming those are not the highest. So what? Noir and Wally. I rolled a five. <laughs> you guys. You are. I rolled a 13. I got a 13. How lucky. We're off to a rip yeah. roar and start today, On baby. this week's episode of okay. The Biggest Loser. <laughs> yeah. That's, this is Amazing. What we're well, then, with a 13, let us begin with the tale of Virla. <laughs> the tale of Virla. We begin in a scene we're familiar with a vast uh, array network of gears and cogs, some uh, as small as you would find inside of a watch, some massive spanning the size of great lakes, maybe perhaps even continents. Uh, all throughout it, that constant tick, 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 rhythmic and, and never-ending. The uh, strange physical nature of this plane casting it half in light, half in shadow. We see we see a familiar Mechanite. Virla, you approach the door to uh, the sanctum of Maxim, the familiar fortress uh, walls flecked with that sort of dull pewter that uh, almost seems to give a hum as you approach. You can feel it not just in your ears, but almost being transmitted through your feet uh, as you approach door that you've seen a few times before. Uh, quick, quick question, DM. Mm -hmm. How did I get here? <laughs> How did I get here? Everyone who has left, which is everyone except for the, the oh, with the exception of Danny, uh, has had to book passage and basically hi, um, hitchhike hijack. <laughs> that would be the adventure. <laughs> basically had to hitchhike their way here uh, to places across the uh, uh, across the landscape. Maybe you so. hired Davian. <laughs> Perhaps you hired yeah, Davian. Yeah. All right. Davian well, is the war, so. <laughs> I will. I will never show it. But Birla is very grumpy. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Uh, but he'll go ahead and just uh, knock. I, I forget Boom. how to enter. <laughs> Boom. Uh, you had a password. There's a magic key. Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I believe it. Wait, I no, scan. I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what if I were Kiana? What would Kiana <laughs> tell me the password is? Try I, climbing uh, in the window. Uh, DM, do I remember what it is? A, uh, a something personal to you that only you would know. Uh, I do okay. remember who this is, but. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll, I'll go in and I will just sort of speak uh, Emerson, I believe is what it was. <laughs> that yeah. is correct. Oh, the arcane okay. lock disarms. The doors swing open. You walk into the uh, familiar faceted entryway that has that, that spiral staircase going up around the outside into the dull light above. The doors close behind you. And after about 30 seconds... You know, not long enough that you start to think something's wrong, but long enough that there's like a, a, a soft awkwardness falls around as you're not sure which way to go. From the door on the left side, which is the door that you've, you've come through in the past, uh, you see at first here metal on metal as uh, Maxim himself walks in, uh, seemingly unsurprised by your arrival. Ah, uh, Mirla, allow me to welcome you to my sanctum. I trust your journey was without tribulation in a sense no uh i am i do not come with my ship i have been placed on shore leave but i was able to get here fine all the same uh, uh, i i meant to thank you for this and i reach into sort of my satchel and i take out a little clockwork wasp that sort of flits around for a bit before i sort of catch it and then store it back in my satchel um you sent this some time ago, and I never did thank you. Naturally. Uh, your thanks is appreciated. I merely wish to keep you abreast of the progress 
progress is made on the staff as well, I assure you, though. I've been somewhat busy of late with... Well, perhaps it is easier if I show you, please, to my study. And I will follow him. For context, like, between seasons one and two, which I am interpreting to be between, like, in the eighth month downtime, Austin sent me, Noir, physical person, an actual clockwork wasp, uh, along with, like, a little <clears throat> a little note uh, written in Maxim's hand to Virla. Uh, <laughs> it was very sweet. And... Uh, yeah, I'm a big dork. Yeah. <laughs> Those things, if, if that's the size of the actual clockwork swarm wasp, I, that has to, I've just reframed that as much more terrifying in my head. Uh, I, think I, they're mean, I think they're probably about regular wasps. Although, you know what? Sure. There's probably a variation. It's probably yeah. a variation. I mean, it explains the damage that he does with it. So. That's true. Sure does. Size. That's true. <laughs> Jesus Those Christ. Those things mean business. I'm getting attacked by palm-sized wasps. I'm not sticking around to find out what else that guy can do. <laughs> yeah, for, for reference for the people only listening, everyone but us five, it's yeah. massive. I'll send a uh, picture. We'll tweet uh, a little picture drops. of it up. Oh, yeah, yeah you totally should. Yeah. With a, like yeah. a quarter for scale. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, a real wasp for scale. Um, <laughs> Gotta catch yeah, one. Yeah, go on. Catch one. <laughs> okay, oh, follow, you follow through. Uh, you make it into uh, the room that you've now seen uh, before. There's uh, rows of books. There's the his what you now know to be sort of his fiddling attempts at the the memory orbs, the memory spheres that that sit in here as well. This is sort of his messing about space. You come to realize as you walk sure. in and you see there's some of these uh, mechanical beetles and wasps are just like kind of floating around, uh, floating around. You see the staff is on like kind of half taken apart sitting on the uh the one of the workbenches there there's a, go ahead and roll an insight check for Virla actually sure read the room why don't you <laughs> not great six there's 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 a lot going on in here um yeah <laughs> which uh makes sense as he begins to uh explain he says to you after your request that I look into the acquisition of um Perhaps some better armament or fortification for yourself, given your precarious line of work. I located just such an item in the possession of another. Ah. Chainmail forged by elves is notoriously uh, light and easy to maneuver, and even if someone is not practiced in such matters. Locating it, it seems, was the easy part, however. Obtaining it, I would require your aid. I am happy to give it. Very well. I spoke with an order who call themselves the few. They are a group of elves who immigrated to the Astral Sea some unknown ages ago. Often shrouded in mystery, contact with them is often difficult beyond just cursory exchanges when they choose to make port. I was lucky enough to speak to one, Ethrevel, who informed me she could supply just such an armor as well as fulfill some of my interests in allowing me an hour of interrogation with herself. However, that must please you. It does. The elves, even those not of the Silver Sea, are notoriously long-lived, possess many insights into many different cultures. One from the Astral Sea, where they do not age. Well, as I said, little is known of them, but there's the potential to learn of perhaps histories even predating the Spell Plague. That is interesting. You said there was a a uh, perhaps, however. Indeed. As I said, these few, however many they are, are very long-lived and well-connected. Their prices are not low as a result, and their interests... exotic. No. Ethereval has requested that we procure for her a spell currently forgotten to any living mortal mage. 
Ooh, <laughs> oh, cool. golly gosh. If only one of us were besties with Mistra. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Pocket Kiana's getting sassy today. <laughs> Did they tell you the nature of this spell? No, fortunately. The demands were unspecific beyond this. It seems that the function of the spell, to Evenville at least, is of minimal importance. Either she seeks to have it simply as a curio, or this is a test, or perhaps, what do you often say? Prank upon us to seem the fool on an impossible task. Well, assuming that it isn't the latter, then I suppose we shall put our best foot forward in trying to procure it. Indeed, and even if it is the latter, I am not one to be made the fool. I've gone ahead, and in the last several weeks, driven into some of my research moves and you see mage hands uh starts to go through like tons of notes that are just like all over there's like coffee tables in here work desks Mm -hmm. some are just on the floor goes through a pile of like crumpled papers and pulls out one that is only half crumpled it's not the first time in my work i've had to search for deep history regarding a fiend that we might speak with Ah. I have done such a thing. I have located the true name of a lore devil of the Nine Hells of Bator. See, motions towards the magic circle that's on the floor that you've seen oh, in okay. here, the, yeah. the runes. My intention, with your aid, of course, will be to summon this devil here, speak with them on obtaining a forgotten spell, bargain their freedom for it. And then, once we have obtained that, you with your skills in copying scrolls, make two copies in addition to the first. One for yourself, one for myself. The original to be given to Yathrevel. The second for me to keep. Indeed. Payment for your help with the devil. And here I and thought then the chain payment of the spell enough. for the chain. I see. Oh, you do me too kind. Um, DM, what do I know about lore devils? Because this is the Go first that Noir has heard check. of anything like that. Arcana or religion? Okay. You know when someone um actually is you on a forum? That's yeah. Like Alright, I'm not using this one <laughs> anymore. That's a 10. It's a 10. Uh, yeah. There's lots of different kinds of devils, uh, and sure. it's definitely not peaking you as one of the like common ranks. You've been mm-hmm. to hell. You've seen, you know, about imps and lemores, which are the lowest of the devils, bearded devils, and barbed devils. They have different rank. Some of them are in parallel to each other with different purposes, but it all goes from the lowest of the lemores all the way up to the highest as um, the uh, well, as Modius, the the, uh, yeah. the king of hell. Uh, yeah. the dukes and duchesses that rule over the different layers. So somewhere in this hierarchy, lore devil resides, and sure. uh, it's unclear where exactly, but you haven't heard of it, so it's probably not one of the low ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, then in that case, I'll say to Maxim, uh, in the effort of full transparency, I hold no spells that can physically hold or mentally dominate any fiendish type. Um, but if you are confident in my abilities, then I shall be at your service. No, and yours. No. It's not domination require. I suspect with a fiend that would not be successful. No. I will summon the fiend here. I have proper magics to do so. What I require of you while I focus on maintaining the spell is bargaining and a keen insight into whatever contracts may be laid by this Contracts, you say? <laughs> legal battle, you, you say? You go to court, but we're getting a legal very, episode. All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, Virla physically leans forward at the, at the prospect <laughs> of this. Wonderful. Is there anything you wish to prepare? 
I don't think there's anything I can't... Oh, well, I'll bring Bing out just for the sake of things. Just in case. <laughs> Get an extra um, pair of eyes on this one. Yeah. I don't know if it's possible or even beneficial to, to cast it inside the magic sphere, but... Um, or the magic circle, rather. But, I mean, I, I, I guess that would be the only benefit of having Bang out. Um, Do you want to know how the magic circle works? Uh, me you as can, a... You can roll an arcana to see if Virla already knows. Sure, alright. Alright, don't, don't fuck Just me on this. I've been I'm rolling like dog water. water. Bring it up. Alright, 15. 15. We're creeping up there. That's only a third level spell. The thing is, he has to cast. You have to cast it one uh, once per day for an entire year in order to um, sure. make it permanent, which is uh, a convenient thing to have. It is a ten foot radius and twenty foot high cylinder of magical energy. Mm -hmm. uh, the entire cylinder is uh, composed of uh, the, the circle itself is composed of various runes drawn on the floor. You can choose any uh, from a list of different extra dimensional creatures. So it doesn't work on humanoids, for example. So yeah. uh, under no circumstances, for example, can you be trapped within mm -hmm. this. It's It works on celestials, fey, fiends, elementals, that sort of thing. It affects them in the following ways. Uh, first off, you can use it as a like safety box for yourself and stand inside yeah. of it. You guys are certainly circle. using it the reverse way. Creatures can't willingly enter by non-magical means. So, yeah, can't like it's hard for them to get in and out. They can't cross the line, right? Yeah. So, I, I, they're on the inside. They can't exit by non-magical means is what I mean to say. Sure. If they try to get out using magic, they have to uh, use a... There's a charisma saving throw involved. So, they can't just walk through and they have to try to, you know, uh, they, they have to have enough willpower to even attempt to use magic to do it. While within the cylinder, uh, the creature has disadvantage on attack rolls against targets outside. So you can still be targeted with uh, attack rolls, for example, but it has a disadvantage. You on the outside cannot be charmed, frightened, or possessed by the creature. So you couldn't be dominated, you can't be... things like that. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Um, uh, it usually lasts right. for one hour, but Maxim has uh, cast this uh, every day for a year in the same spot to make it right. permanent. Okay. With that information, I will not hold Bing out. And then the only things I will do, and that I'll consider preparation, is just to clarify. And so the information you wish me to uh, get out of this devil is information regarding this forgotten spell. Are you... Are you okay? Is the few okay with having their name be used in this conversation, or would they wish to remain anonymous? curious. No specifications were made as they do not understand the workings by which I, we obtained the spell today, but well, as I said, their memories are quite long, so perhaps let us not do anything unnecessarily to invite their wrath. Understood. At your leisure, then. Very well. He uh, goes and he pulls out a scroll. As he does so, he also places um, on the ground, he pulls out uh, what looks like a crystal stopper vial, that is filled with red liquid and has like something floating inside of it. I should say sinking. It's sitting on the bottom of the of the vial. He places that on the ground. He pulls out, and you see the uh, as you've seen before when scrolls are are used, the magic within them ignites. Uh, the scroll begins to dissolve. As he reads, there is an arcane tongue that is used. But as he finishes, he speaks in common. I call forth Kinzero of Dis. Keeper of secrets and scrolls to the Lord of the Second. Heed my summon, fiend of the Nine Hells of Mator. The light in the room, which you hadn't even noticed that there's like, you know, there's there's uh, dancing lights that are kind of permanently fixed in here, kind of dims a little bit. Not a chill, but sort of like a dull heat fills the room. As you see almost like warped into space. You've seen plane ships before and it's sort of a creature seems to kind of like vibrate in and then collapse, uh, vibrate outwards and then collapses in. Mm -hmm. It's almost the reverse of that where it's like kind of like warps in the space and then expands out. This creature is being forcibly pulled from its home. You see the lore devil emerges. It stands taller than you, though not by much. It is a slightly hunched figure 
wrapped in what would appear to the layman to be bandages, but upon a short inspection, uh, you can see are actually scrolls that have like light infernal writing that kind of like, it, it's almost, it's written, but it kind of, the one ring style like appears and disappears in like red. So it'll like appear and like kind of travel down the band. So it's really hard to make out exactly what each of these scrolls says, um, but he's wrapped in this as if he is a mummy. Mm-hmm. And all that you see are there are two yellow curving horns that come out of the head, like rams. And you can see within a shadow of kind of like two scrolls that are peaked apart, you can see two red burning eyes. A brief moment, this all happens very quickly. All of that is absorbed. He looks around hurriedly, lashes out a hand, and mm-hmm. there is a spark of gold and red arcane energy as he like gets shocked by the the magic circle and yeah. pulls his hand back <sighs> who calls upon the librarian of the changing city kinziru he who knows a thousand things and keeps a thousand secrets for his world mm, interesting there is no foe here for me to face you see he kind of looks around a brief glimpse at each you and then Maxim standing behind who is holding concentration on this spell by the way Mm -hmm. no foe no purple worm for me to kill no planetar no lich queen Hmm. if you of folly do not wish for me to fight then surely you must seek for me to treat ah (laughs) indeed a devil's bane, this arcane band, your creation, taps against the arcane glass at you, Virla. Sure. I'd wager. Men who have no flesh. You trust me not? <laughs> you know me well. Very well, strangers, who know of Kinziru. Tell me of yourselves that I might know of you and what it is you desire of me. In Infernal, I will say, Hello, I am Verla. I apologize, for there is no contract that binds us. So this, and a gesture to the circle, will have to suffice. Mm, indeed, you take great cares. You must have learned much of me to know my name and bring me here. Where is here? Tick, tick, tick. Meganis. That holds true of what I know of you. A few places. More good. But no less or more lawful. This is true, a place of law. You bring me to its very bastion. Do you seek to make a bargain, perhaps? Uh, The bargain will be for letting you live. I'm sorry, there are no other um, concessions for you beyond that. Mm. That does frighten me. But... Not here. No, no. Studied enough to practice the arcane arts, yet you do not know the great cosmic injustice a fiend killed upon Beckonus. I would simply return home. So what leverage is that to use against me, metal man of folly? Oh, you must understand I have been to Beitor, and I will go there again. <laughs> you speak true, do you not? Interesting, interesting, interesting. But let's not split hairs. We come, as you may have suspected, seeking information. We do not have the benefit of long life, or as long of a knowledge as you. So we were hoping you could fill in our gaps of knowledge. I do tend to be forgetful sometimes. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, d- do me like a just a quick deception check on that one because you're obviously speaking somewhat literally there. Yeah. Twelve. <laughs> oh boy. Yikes. 
Not very charismatic, Wisdom, guys. Wisdom, plus five, 17. He now places two... Uh, you see there are claws emerging from the... Uh, underneath the wraps. Places ten claws from all his fingers on the sparkling glass and kind of just drags down a little bit. Almost nails on a chalkboard sound. Um, mm-hmm. Gets his face really close and says... Hmm. This is not a metaphor you speak in, is it, Mecha Knight? Tell me what memory problems plague you. Perhaps I, one of many kept secrets and lost knowledges, might be able to remedy this for you. The knowledge of your existence for now is enough, but I am here on behalf of a favor, and I do not tend to let that go awry. Mm, so you see, another then. Another then. Simply a lackey, I suppose? Oh, well, if that is the case, I seek to speak to the man at the top. I speak on his behalf. And what true power could you wield if that is the case? I don't need to wield much, given your position. (laughs) My position, yes. Uncomfortable as it is, I do enjoy my space, but here is a question. You would travel you say, as you once have, to Betor to find me should I return there. Well, perhaps you have ventured there to our sister city of Vernus, but you have not been to the changing city of Dis. No, you are far too composed to have seen that. (laughs) So, even if I was killed, I prefer my chances down there. But regardless, kill me or don't, see if I care. You say that you are not as long-lived as I. This is true. This is true. I cannot die of natural means. So what need do I have to bend the knee to you when I could simply wait you out? What is a few hundred years here as I wait for your carefully crafted arcane runes to fade and lose their potency that I may walk out free as ever fiend has ever been. Oh, the three of us know more than most the power of names. We hold yours, your true name. And that is some, that is no small amount of control over you. And We will not wait for these arcane runes to fade, or for either of us to expire. We will get our information here and now. Uh, Go ahead and roll me an intimidation check. Okay. Uh, By the way, if you ever wanted to make any checks, feel free to let me know. Yeah, is there, I mean, well, I'm, I know, I've, I've been, I'm starting to suss out. He's getting the, he's taking you know, the words that I've told him and starting to find the, the subtext underneath the lines, you know? I have the power to travel, inter, like, I have interplanar travel, memories, yada yada. Is there anything that I can do? Uh, can I kind of do something similar towards him? Do uh, you want to roll an insight, sounds like? Sure, okay. Okay, yeah, uh, go ahead I'll... and roll. You're, you've correct, also, Noir, you've correctly seen. Every time you say something, he has been turning the conversation back on you using yeah. that piece of information to keep it off of him and to, like learn about you. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, I got but you. that that's I'm not that's smart free. Enough to do this you thing. figure that out. You don't need insight for that. But go ahead and roll me uh, an intimidation and an insight. Okay. Uh, start with intimidation. 11. And 11. Insight. Okay. 15. Mm-hmm. 15. I do know infernal inherently. So if there's any little scrap of paper uh, on his well, body that can help, I don't know. I'll take it. <laughs> That would be a very hefty perception check because they are yeah. like some of most of it's not even really language. It's runes. Yeah. Um, so it's like think of it like you speak infernal, or let's like say you speak English now. Try to read old English as it's being moved yeah. down <laughs> like one line at a time quickly down a parchment. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Uh, in any case, uh, so you rolled a, a 15 insight. Let's go ahead and roll the Kraken dice. Ooh, he did not roll great on his deception. He is a charismatic fuck, but uh, even a five uh, with high charisma is not going to do that for him. Reading him, the most recent thing he just said about like waiting you out, you sense that he is technically correct, but that is far from any choice he would like to take. 
mm-hmm. being away from whatever he's gonna supposed to be doing in hell for several hundred years, while he would technically survive it, would totally suck for him. So yeah. you can tell that that's a bluff that he's pu- trying to pull on you. Okay. Uh, as for intimidation, you get the hint that you're kind of on the right track, but you're just not. Your threats have not been specific enough, or your f- your force of personality has not been commanding enough to actually make him feel like he's on the back foot yet. Sure. Okay. I'll go and grab a chair. And I'll sit down. And then I say, perhaps we can wait it out. And whatever machinations and plans you have back in Dis, whatever armies you command, whatever commanders you answer to, will have to wonder of your absence, of your negligence. No excuse, I don't think can compare to the punishment that you would receive in turn. So let's wait it out and see what happens. Clever, clever. He goes to sit as if he's doing crisscross applesauce on the ground and instead just sits floating uh, about three feet off the ground. Oh, so cool. It's now that you almost see there's almost like a mirror of chess players as the wraps around him almost kind of like as they flow off kind of mimic the scarf you wear. <laughs> There's like almost oh, yeah. kind of like a weird symmetry to it. As I like you guys that. Let's sit. go. Um, just, just, just for the fan artist, how far away is Virla sitting? <laughs> oh, this entire time I've been right up next to the glass. Perfect. Uh, yeah. So he sits down and kind of leans forward. Well, very well. Perhaps if we're not going to wait it out, then hmm, more swift action must be taken. You presume to hold the cards. What is it that you would desire from poor Kinziru? Okay. I need to word my answer carefully. I know mm-hmm. that I need to talk about I, a, a more specific, in, in my mind, a more, a more specific request will yield a more specific answer. But inherently, we don't have a lot of information other than a spell long forgotten that the astral elves want. Um... Yeah, there's no specific spell from your understanding. They yeah. just, it's its a power play. They want you to find something that basically no one can find, otherwise it wouldn't be forgotten. Gotcha. Okay. Um, all if right. it was easy, anyone would do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you've gone on many travels in your many years. You started out low and rose through the ranks, acquiring knowledge and power, and well-deserved, too. Look at you. As a fellow seeker of knowledge myself, I have to ask what kind of arcane knowledge you possess. You'll... I'll get to the meat of it. My request is a bit of a selfish one. I wish to pick your brain and no information that no other would spells that someone might not know a certain sequence of arcane runes or components that together will create something that no other arcanist in my time has yet ambition great ambition. In this way, you and I are not unlike. You notice and flatter me. I do make myself a monument to my secrets. And, like, kind of drapes, and you see, like, the cult, the, the flashing runes, like, go a little bit faster as he's, like, emphasizing, like, literally he's dressing himself up in the things he knows, but is not sharing. That's, like, his whole yeah vibe. Yeah. Seeking to know more knowledge, there are many who call upon fiends for just such a bargain. And (laughs) if I do not flatter myself too much, you have called upon one of the best. Yes, yes, I could provide something of, of what you request. Some secret long forgotten. Some spell formerly practiced that has not been uttered in some long ages. but perhaps there is something more that can be traded here. You seek to know secrets. Clearly, you go through this trouble for such 
a curious and unique and unknown prize? You seek secrets of all else. This I understand. Perhaps we could meet again more regularly to trade in more secrets in the future. Perhaps a partnership. <laughs> After all, if we shared secrets, well, wouldn't we have twice as many each? DM, are you making me collect bargainers or something like that? <laughs> Virla and the he, just collection. He is just secrets. trying to... He, yeah, he yeah, is, yeah. like all devils, he is a lawyer who <laughs> recognizes that you've got him trapped mm -hmm. and is not going to give up what you want without getting a little something for himself in return if he can. Or he just keeps yeah. setting you up with more magical people to go on magic dates with. <laughs> well, his proposition here was like, let's make a deal yeah. where you and I, we've got like a thing. We've got like an information inroad and we can talk a lot. Maxim in the like, background slowly We can, we can like head. chat back and forth no, no, and no, share I, things. I... You aim high and it is a tempting offer. Let us start with one exchange for now. A secret for a secret. Ooh, a secret for a secret. But my secret is potent. What promise have I from you that your secret would be as potent to me? Perhaps, perhaps, a secret now and a favor later to ensure that the scales are balanced. How do I know that the nature of the favor you ask is similarly proportionate? I would provide it up front in writing, of course. So you have the favor in mind right now? I could conjure a few. Mm, really tempting DM! <laughs> How much trouble are you gonna get in with without our knowledge Here. this season? <laughs> All of it. Would you like to inspect it yourself? Would this ease your mind, man of no flesh? The, the contract, the secret, the favor, what, what are you referring? The bargain. To read. He's saying, like, do you want to see the contract that oh, you I would see. sign to get this in return? Okay. Do I, does Virla know that it's like, seeing the contract is fine, you can refuse it, it's, it's when you've signed it that... It's signing it, which... Uh, you would know that signing it can take many different forms, but it's always purposeful. A devil yep. can never fool you into signing it. They can fool you what it's about. They can fool you how bad it is. They can fool you in lots of different things, but a, a, a mortal can never be charmed or mm -hmm. forced or tricked into agreeing. They always have to agree of their own free will. Okay. Now, if the deal's a good or bad one, that's that's what they deal in. But, like, if you read this, it wouldn't be a trick where, like, reading it signs you to the contract. You'd have to agree. Yeah. Very well, then. See what you have conjured. Very well, very well. I just require... Oh, this would do. You see uh, one of the, the beetles flies through the thing, and he snatches it with a hand, lightning fast. He cups it, brings it in close, and whispers... This whole time, by the way, Maxim is just standing in the background, I'm continuing to hold concentration on the spell. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> I mean, so far so good. You haven't you haven't signed away your soul to a to a fiend, so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. so far. <laughs> All right. You he whispers onto it, and then he produces uh, the beetle about the size of your hand, um, and there is arc, there is uh, infernal writing uh, all across it as if it is the contract itself. And he releases it, and it flies into your hand. Okay. I want to read it. I want to figure out the surface level meaning. I want to see if there are any loopholes. This is going to be an investigation check. Hell yeah! Yes. Thank you, Docent. Let's do, it. Let's do it with advantage. Uh, you bring it in, and Docent uh, comes online. News of Vila, would you like for me to scan for any hidden clauses? <laughs> uh, yes, do so, please. <laughs> My pleasure. Like, that's a five. I'm not using that one right now. Whew, 14, 21? 21, all right. I'm gonna, uh, oh wait, we don't have roll 20 here. Um, oh yeah. I'm gonna roll, let's see. He's going to make a deception check. Okay. He makes mm. deception in this way with his intelligence. Oh, you fucker, can I get, can he I is have proficient. that? 
<laughs> he is rolling with a plus 11. Jesus Holy Christ. fuck me, dude. Jeez. Okay, so about 50-50 odds. 50-50, uh, yeah. There yeah. are, but keeping in mind that there are, it's not a binary, there are yeah, scales. So for example, yeah. if you failed by a lot, he could get away with a lot. If you fail by a little, he might get away with a little. But, he, uh, you know, if if you miss it by one, there's not going to be a clause in there that's like, you die instantly and you miss it, you know? <laughs> there is, yeah. it, it, it'll be something very small. <laughs> All right. All right, here we go. All right, DM, let's do this. We go to hell again to get Virla out because he signed a contract with the I, first Okay, hour. these are my hands. I just rolled my, my teal dice. I'm going to send oh, a picture. Oh, boy, show it. He adds, a, he adds 11 to this. What is audience, it's either good or bad. Audience. Oh, no. He's too, oh, he's too no. gleeful about it to be something normal. Uh, uh, this really do be the Virla season. Do it. I'm collecting. Dude, I'm collecting <laughs> fucking bargainers like infinity stones. Let's do this. The ruined like, Danny competing for most bad decisions. <laughs> hey, I've been the most bad decisions it? title oh! holder for years. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> he rolled a natural two plus 11 Woo! for a 13. Oh, shit. That's a two, oh, not an 18. Okay. okay. Tragic. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Holy oh, shit. Oh, sad. Everyone oh, was hot quiet. shit. He doesn't know who you've been bargaining we were with. scared for Vera. So, <laughs> the terms of the bargain as intentionally set out what you just discussed. Mm -hmm. He will trade to you a spell that no one had, no mortal has known or cast in at least 500 years. Mm. In exchange, okay. you will one, release him after from, uh, from the current holding as soon as the bargain is set. You will tell you and Maxim will tell Maxim also has to sign this but it's for you. You and Maxim will tell no one else of his name. Mm -hmm. And then he spoke of a, like a favor, something you would do. Yeah. And that is at some point in time when you would strike a killing blow against a creature, he reserves the right to demand you do not kill it and instead uh, leave it alive. So in other words, he's asking in the future to, when you have the opportunity to kill someone, reach in and say, up, 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 do not kill this person. Or monster or whatever it is. Okay. That's Any hidden? As fuck. That is Any normal lures. stuff. Yeah. Hidden within the contract, as there's a part that's talking about like continued relationship, good natured, and a and a there's there's some there's some nice pros in here actually. Uh strangely, and this is what draws your eye to it. About, there's some pros about going uh, like back and forth, a give and take, right, yeah. of this relationship, and it talks uh, about conferring some to him some resistance to fire, uh, which would leave you uh, not necessarily mechanically in the D and D mechanical vulnerable sense, but in some way vulnerable to fire in the uh, in perpetuity going forward. Not fire. He's Brass? trying to he's trying to sneak in a claw so, uh, when you take fire damage. Yeah. you would take more damage yeah, yeah, in yeah. exchange okay. for him taking less in some way. Sure. Okay. <laughs> um, and in fact, it refers specifically to preservation of secrets. It's it's something to do with like him preventing his shit from getting burned. Okay. You would instead, like cosmically, that would be balanced out by you being more hurt. Someone okay. tries to burn his library in dis and you get like, ah, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> That would be sick, though, you know, if that clause isn't any other person who didn't catch that and they just spontaneously combust all of a sudden. Oh, that'd City be of sick. Brass is hitting different today for some reason. Uh, Everyone's going to okay. blame Danny, and Danny's going to be like, no, that was me. Uh, so, okay, so <laughs> I have fire, and that is not regular fire. <laughs> DM, do I, do, does Virla feel that this is a sufficient bargain? I know it, so the... the... So what he set out seems to make sense to you from what you yeah. understand of... You could always try to argue with him for a better contract in which, right. you know, you get everything basically and he gets nothing. That's going to be I meant, obviously um, more difficult. So yeah. far, a forgotten spell for you have to let him go. Yeah. Sure. You don't tell anyone his name. Sure. And you spare someone in the future see, of his choice seems, um, what's the word? For, like, of equal value. Yeah. Uh, the fire thing is definitely a trick, and if you call yeah, him yeah. out on it, he'll he'll be forced to remove it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, you know, what? I'm saying this is canon. In my in my in my wizard hat, there's a feather. I take it out. It's a pen. <laughs> um, yeah. Totally. And uh, I'll say, I just wish to tighten up some of the writing here. One of the things that I wanted to sort of clarify 
Um, mm -hmm. No mortal has cast in 500 years. I want no mortal alive knows as well. Just like yes, wait, that, wait, I think wait. that's part of it. But yeah, you can okay. yeah you can make sure that that's super tight. I did. Okay. They're religious I, shit. It's I I undo, it's it's fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it's a bit, the combination of being alive knows and casts like no yeah, one has it, cast it. You know, there there's there's a lot of bases covered there. Uh, and then I and then sort of I'll, I'll I'll go through you know the whole rigmarole of that and then I'll say uh, in this clause regarding the preservation of secrets I'll just do us both a favor and sort of excise that completely from the contract we don't need to sort of um, we don't need to belabor ourselves on either side with that do you agree reasonable let's keep the contract light and flexible you're right <laughs> oh so glad we we're in agreement. <laughs> Uh, I'll go and then read the whole thing out in full, and then I'll. So, <laughs> I'm just trying. I'm trying to make a whole like display of this. I'm not. I'm. 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 You know, like reading out this scroll. I guess it's a beetle, so I have it in my hand or whatever. I don't turn mm -hmm. to Maxim, but I'll sort of call out over my shoulder. Uh, how does that sound to you, Maxim? Acceptable. The terms are acceptable. Very well. Uh, I will go and. I'll draw a little happy face on one of their wings, on one of the beetle's wings, and then I'll sort of... He chuckles and he says, If you wish to sign, you need merely for it to bite you. All right, I'll, I'll overturn my hand and I'll let it bite me. Uh, it does. It doesn't do insect plague damage, uh, just <laughs> uh, a normal bite. Uh, but as it does the rune's flash, it buzzes over to Maxim gives him a bite as well and then oh. finally returns to Kinziru crawls under the bandages and gives him a bite and then he clasps it in his hands very well a deal is a deal lifts up an arm with tattered hanging down rips a piece off ties it up into a little scroll about like you know four inches wide very small and sticks it out to you, the end sticking out through the red and gold barrier. Hmm. You can leave it. You can leave it there when you leave. Oh. <laughs> As I said when I arrived, you know me well. Very well. He sets it down. With that, our bargain is complete. Release me, sorcerer. Goodbye, Kinzaru. But your name may not be forgettable, but you are. There we oh, go. it went from uh -huh. Maxim. Maxim. <laughs> the uh, he flashes away in that distorted plane shift. The lights black, and then uh, come back up to their normal hue. Don't let the door hit you where the father of lies split you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you like to read the spell? Yeah, I'll go in and I'll pick up the the scroll and I'll give it a scan. All right. The spell you've obtained, shrink, <gasps> third level <gasps> transmutation. Yes. Casting time, one action. <laughs> Range, 30 feet. Components, verbal, somatic, and material, a raisin. Mm -hmm. Duration, concentration up to one hour. You cause a creature or an object you can see within range to shrink for the duration. Choose either a creature or an object that is neither worn nor held. If the target is unwilling, it can make a constitution saving throw to resist. On a success, the spell has no effect. The target becomes tiny, shrinking to a height of one inch, and it weighs one pound unless it is already smaller or weighted less before the spell was cast. If the target is a creature, everything it is wearing and carrying changes size with it. Any item dropped by an affected creature returns to normal size at once. Until the spell ends, the target has disadvantage on strength checks and saving throws. The target's weapons also shrink to match its size. While these weapons are reduced, they deal one damage. If the target was not already tiny before the spell was cast, its speed is halved for the duration. So you can do like a Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Only honey, I half. Shrunk the Paraspora. Oh, I can do I think, so much with only half speed and one inch I think if you upcast it, you height. can get more people. This is, I believe this is an old spell. Um, All right. From old D, uh, like an old D&D &D spell. I might be wrong about that. I have to double check. But <laughs> I'm I'm my breath. Small. you have the shrink spell. Who cares if the astral elves like this? I love this. <laughs> I'll, I'll mutter under my breath. This would have been so useful for Kiana. Literally yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you um, know, I actually had this spell forever ago, and I thought that last week. Pocket yeah. I was like, damn, they had shrinked. This would be great. All right, I'll go and I'll read. I'll read the contents as well uh, to Maxim, and 
let's say, well, um... Indeed, it bears resemblance to, uh, a paltry level spell, but it is certainly more powerful than nuanced. The few seem to be beings of the word. I think that they will hold true. Here, yes. I will provide you with the inks and materials for copying, uh, and I will send for Ethray battle when you are ready. And the bargain itself seemed rather sufficient. Between you and me, I don't kill many things, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, then let us hope it never comes to pass. Very well. Okay. Um, God, that's so fun. <laughs> you are a scribe's wizard, which is yeah. actually part of the beauty of having you as part of this ritual, beyond being really good at reading you, uh, like uh, scrolls and... Uh, Contracts. Uh, Contracts, thank you. Beyond yeah. being, which is kind of why Max wanted you here. Uh, beyond being really good at that, you can also copy these spells, scrolls, really quickly. So mm -hmm. uh, I imagine you go and fire those off. Yep. You and Maxim have the rest of the day. <laughs> as you were informed, he uh, called her being Sending Stone that uh, Ethrevel will be uh, coming the next day. Mm -hmm. um, if there is a, there's any downtime, uh, or sure. at least before I, before I go, I'll sort of ask a, one last question in passing. Okay. You and Maxim take two, what I imagine for you guys is small talk, but is like deep <laughs> academic talk to most people. Yeah. You know that XKCD comic that's like, oh yeah, people overestimate how <laughs> little the layperson knows about their their, their uh, field of expertise. Mm -hmm. It's just that where you guys, I I, I imagine you, uh, you know, Noir, tell me what you think, but I imagine it's like that where you're like, oh yeah, like let's just talk light shop and it's way deeper than yeah. most people can <laughs> yeah. ever follow. Yeah. But what did Tensor mean when he can when he cast Floating Disc? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, what's important to remember is that there was a habit uh, in those times for uh, various beings of uh, depth, uh, dungeons and depths, uh, to keep their coin in inconveniently sized denominations. Uh, it goes on to explain how yeah, Tensor's Floating yeah, yeah. Disc is really about carrying copper coins out of the dungeon <laughs> yeah. and back to town. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if I recall during those times, um, detection of traps was rather more primitive than usual. Uh, although mo perhaps more efficient. They just carried a ten-foot pole and clacked it wherever they may. Indeed, there is a simplicity to the past. Not to be forgotten. You guys go on and uh, talk into the night. Sure. Uh, Mechanus dims and then brightens as day comes. Uh, you receive uh, the Bing pong alarm that Maxim has set up for someone who uh, arrives at the door that cannot open it via password. That would be Ethrevel. A reminder, you elves have long memories. I would tread carefully, not that you ever do otherwise. If Danny were here, I would suggest that perhaps this be a solitary meeting, but uh, it's important to make connections. Please, this way. Shade. Fucking rude. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a sign of affection that he remembers this much about you. Mm, I don't know. In, yeah, yeah fair you got your name right. Uh, Danny has been learning to compose herself for business, although the source that she gets that from is questionable also. Uh, and she is often successful in this manner. Yes. I will compose myself. Let us proceed. Mm -hmm. Perhaps there are many secrets of the multiverse I have yet to learn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you approach to the entryway. The doors open as Maximum uh, steps up to them. You see, floating where the Prasper once floated, uh, a spelljammer ship. Silver and green, its sails, it bears a small resemblance to the same kind of galleon that you guys have, but it is far more elegant, almost grown. These, the green sails are kind of stretched and curved, uh, is a ship you can look it up called a star moth hmm. Ooh, okay yeah th those are pretty it is fancy and it just silently floats there uh turned away now turning towards you as the doors open you see was indeed uh definitely an elf you can tell from the ears that emerge the you know long long and pointed uh that emerge from the long white hair uh although any other features are obscured by what is a 
featureless, domed, golden mask that completely covers her face. Okay. So <laughs> there is no, you cannot see eyes, no nothing. There is just completely covered. Um, and then she is covered from neck to foot in black and white, uh, almost vestments. They are draped and flowing, connected, like a cape connected at the wrists, has different, uh, like, furl. I don't understand fashion well enough, but it has, like, different <laughs> uh, bunches and furls to it along the back. It's very layered and intricate. Mm. You see, she turns as the door opens. Maxim says, Ethravel. Gives a slight bow. Ethravel curtsies a little bit. Sage Maxim, I understand it that we have finished our deal. Indeed. And may I introduce to you my associate, without whom this deal would not be possible. Vila. Hello. She gives a secondary curtsy to you, says. I bow. Yeah. It is a pleasure to meet you, Virla. I am Mithravil, she who whispers to the heart of the gods as one would to the ear of a lover. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. And I yours. Sorry? And I yours. (laughs) You have what I have asked for. Uh, Yes, uh, and I'll go ahead. Like, I guess I kept both of them. I'll hand one copy to Ethraville. She takes it delicately, reads it. Hmm. I remember this one. It has been some time. Thank you for the trip into my memories. Virla and Maxim. Rolls it up, stuffs it down his sleeve. And now for you. She reaches into uh, a, a kind of fold that you thought was just full, but it's apparently a pouch, and pulls out. Uh, it is folded in possibly small. We're talking like parcel, perhaps like four inches by four inch sized. Uh, and yet as she unfolds it, it spills out into what is clearly uh, a light chain shirt. Uh, silver, reflecting light so dazzlingly that it almost appears to be white. Like, each chain kind of reflects as if it's a star. Very cool. She hands it to you. Oh, yeah, I take it. Yeah, obviously. (laughs) It is so light, it is nearly impossible to tell you're holding it. This is quite the gift. Thank you. Your graciousness is recognized. Keep it safe. And it will keep you safe. The craftsmanship of the elves is seldom to fail. Now, I believe there is yet one more thing I must attend to. Sage Maxim, you wish to speak in private? Indeed, please. To my sanctum this way. Virla, this should only take an hour. (laughs) I shall be with you shortly. Brisk for an elf and a sage. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, there's there's the sense like for the there's definitely a sense to be like, for the cost of what you guys just had to go through. Yeah, like this is a real the, the chain shirt is you know, it's definitely not nothing. But the the conversation is being yeah. weighted equally as heavily, and yeah. it's one hour. So like, mm-hmm. the questions and the answers have got to be interesting. Oh yeah, uh, I make no indication that I'm going to follow them. I stand where I am and I wait. He leads her not into one of the other doors, but up the spiral staircase into his Mm -hmm. demi-plane. You have free reign to wander about um, and like, you know, look into, you know, like watch the bugs and stuff that are floating around the clockwork swarm staff, things like that. Sure. Can I just go and look at the spell jammer? I just want to... An hour comes and goes. Yeah. Max returns. And with that, our business is concluded. If you wish to stay and discuss anything else, Virla, please feel free to remain my guest. Has has Ethervel and the Spelljammer left at this point? Or? Yes, you didn't even see them go, but you assume since oh. Max returns, she just... Oh, I guess if you were waiting in the foyer, <laughs> if you wanted to wait in the foyer to see her go. Is she watching the spell jammer? Yeah, you probably yeah, honestly, I, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I do want to watch the spell jammer, so you want to watch I, I guess spell, they would yeah. see me out there. Yeah. Yeah, so you stand outside in uh the strange light darkness of Mechanus. Um the doors open. Um 
Maxim thanked you, thanks her for her time. Uh, she walks past, gives one final half bow to you, Virla. Take well and take care. Stalks off, the ship silently <laughs> lifts up and floats away more than flies. Wow. Very cool. It is here, Maxim says to you what he said before about wish, uh, staying a guest if you'd like. Um, I appreciate the offer, um, but I must be back. Uh, as I said, my ship is on shore leave. I shudder to think what its owner has done to it in the time that I've been away. I can certainly understand wanting to remain close to one's position and home. Uh, Again, you notice Maxim, as he ushered her out, never set foot outside that door. The yeah. door is open, she walks out, he ushered, he like waves, and then he stands just inside the threshold. If I could, um, if you could indulge me for one last question, however. By all means. Uh, I believe it is you, son, um, in my, well, my first, I think your second or third at this point, I don't remember. But my first encounter with you, along with the rest of the Paraspora, where I heard the term God botherer. <laughs> yes. Be careful whose company you use it in, though. You certainly would not have wanted to use it in front of the Ether No. <laughs> the Astral Elves journeyed to the sea in order to be closer to their gods cosmologically. Oh, I hold no presumptions or judgment. I just simply wanted to know your position regarding the gods. The gods hold great power. I've seen them do mighty things. I've seen their servants do mightier still. They are but little without us. And the failing of a mortal in the service of a god could be even more devastating than the failing of the god himself. The servants, typically they are chosen by the god themselves, or the servant has pledged themselves in the name of said god, but it is usually... That is usually... It is usually the case that a god seeks a patron, or more often that a patron... Sorry, I should say. That a god seeks a follower, or more often that a follower seeks a god. Hmm. But... If you wish to know my wisdom on the matter... In my experience, those truly important, the ones who go on to be the heroes of legend, they are born that way. And I it is the far. universe who must bend to them. And what if were, what if one were to not simply uh, whisper to the gods, but bargain with them? <laughs> Let us hope that individual is as good a bar hunter as you are with the devil. Oh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. We can only hope. And then I'll just yeah. very, like awkwardly turn away and <laughs> thank you for your time, Max and I shall. Uh, time to go. Hopefully we can meet under uh not simply just uh not calling upon a favor, but to further discuss our crafts and our vocations. That was enjoyable. <laughs> Our conversations are payment enough for company. Aww. Please. Be he, well, Birla. Besties. <laughs> He's still <Bye>. fellow associating <laughs> you in public, but he knows your friends. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, that's fine. <laughs> All right. And I suppose I'll go. Amazing, Noir. Uh, we're going to cut Octavian. there. <laughs> And could I please yeah, have paper. my final three uh, players roll a d20? <laughs> oh, we're rolling every time. My natty yep. one Ooh. isn't putting me right at the end? Okay. No, it's more stressful if I if you guys don't get to know who's going next. 17. Mm. Okay. Oh, I got the nat one this time. Oh. Sophia? Six. All oh. right. Oh, my. Okay. 
Oh, I'd get back my excited. character sheet. I'd resign myself to being last. Kiana, 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 Kiana. I can sit back. I can yeah. watch. No, the I'm story is member now. Brave. Yeah, it must be nice. Uh, yeah. Stretch uh, a little bit. I do like uh, yeah. Noir that Virla was essentially in a legal battle because bringing Virla to any sort of legal proceedings is the metaphorical uh, gun in a knife fight. <laughs> <laughs> you don't you don't know how long behind like for the audience how long Austin and I have been like trying to figure out how to basically do that Arcadia uh, Arcadia legal <laughs> battle that like I kind of like put on him in the first episode of last season how to bring that to fruition basically what we realize is like trying to do an actual court uh mechanically it's it's not gonna I don't know it wouldn't turn out right this however this was fun <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so rock and roll. Bargaining with the devil. I, I'm glad you enjoyed. And thus we move on to the tale of Kiana. <gasps> we find ourselves once again at the great hub world, Sigil, the great city of doors, the place between all other places. Or I should say on the way to all other places. <laughs> we see Kiana walking through uh, the streets, well trod, approaching a building you've seen in the distance before. Complex would be a better word, known as the Great Gymnasium. <laughs> the Great cool. Gymnasium, a place famed across the Planescape for being uh, somewhere that warriors can go to uh, relax, recover, and more importantly, to train and hone their craft. The entire complex uh, is surrounded in these like high black marble walls that have um, that are like veined with gold. Ooh. Surrounds the whole thing and turns it into a, a sort of a, um, a complex, you know. Uh, you can see as you approach the streets that uh, there are high plumes of steam rising up out of it from presumably saunas and bathhouses. Oh. Um, and uh, it smells actually, it's a, there's a somewhat pleasant waft. It's kind of humid as you approach, but uh, clearly there's people in their hard at work adding rose water and things like that to make it a pleasant experience. Uh, as you approach, you see a couple, uh, a pair of uh, glowing, uh, fresh-faced, bandaged up, uh, but in good spirits, uh, hobgoblins leaving as they exit through the gate. You approach, and there is literally like you're entering a theme park. There is a person sitting behind the thing, like a little counter with like a little half pane of glass. You see, there's an uh, an orc woman, so she's got like blue skin and uh, tusks uh, sitting behind there. Hello, and welcome to the Great Gymnasium. Oh. Uh, hi. Um, it, it, it's my first time. Is there anything I need to do before I head in? Well, welcome. Yes, first timers. Hold on. She pulls out a drawer and then pulls out a coin. A coin might be the, it's it's more like a medallion. It has a little hole for a, a, like a, to go on like a loop or something, mm -hmm. but there's there's not like a lanyard attached. Like presumably you would put it on something you owned. Uh, I've had a gym she... membership or two in my day. I think I know <laughs> exactly. what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> she hands it to you. So this is a first time token. Ooh. And if you've never been here before, uh, you'll want to proceed to orientation to get a lay of the land and understand the uh, what's to offer at uh, here at, uh, the Great Gymnasium. Um, so you'll just want to, uh, keep to the left. You'll see there's a red flag on a doorway. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you proceed through there, uh, I, uh, believe that the next orientation should be starting soon and that you can, uh, 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 go through that and then, uh, enjoy and return in the future to enjoy the many amenities of the Great Gymnasium. <laughs> well, thanks so much. I think I'll do just that. <laughs> Off to the red flag I go. <laughs> All right. You go through, and yeah, you walk through the gate, and immediately uh, the first, th the place you op enter into is a yard. It's like a big yard, and there are three Olympic-sized swimming pools. Each one is clearly a different temperature. There's like hot tub temperature, bath water, and then like a cold one, oh, you know? Wow. Uh, and one of the, so you can see like steam rising off of one of them and the other has like little ice cubes floating in it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You can imagine the different various races that are choosing each one. There's people like, you know, relaxing in the hot tub, but there's also uh, a tiefling like swimming in it. <laughs> Things like that. You can see there's, uh, there's an air genasi like kind of floating just on top of the ice water, <laughs> like barely <laughs> sinking in, like it's a salt bath, just barely sinking in. Wow, okay. Uh, there's a lot of hustle and bustle here. Definitely, it's not super crowded, but certainly this isn't uh, dead. You're, you've uh, you've come at a time when people are here to use the facilities. 
uh, you follow through. There's uh, that red flag there. You go through. There's a hallway which leads you to a room. There's it's a it's a small room. There's a big door on the other side, and there's a there's another smaller door off to the side. And you see there's kind of like very low amphitheater seating, just like three rows, just a couple feet tall. There's like you know a little pedestal to stand in front, presumably to watch like a, a demonstration. Hmm. Uh, you see in here there's uh, there's a bugbear who's kind of like anxiously combing their hair uh, <laughs> and there's uh, uh, this like ripped halfling who's just <laughs> like tr- imagine Dorito body but also it's a halfling <laughs> just doing some Fantastic. like stretches over on the side uh, totally like oiled up you know ready to go <laughs> uh, they each have you see there's a token uh, mm-hmm. they have the exact same tokens uh, that you do Fantastic. Uh, I'm going to take, a, take seat. a seat. Yep, we'll crisscross applesauce and just kind of wait for somebody to show up who looks like they know what they're doing. <laughs> uh, you don't have to wait long. Uh, Good. minute or two, just long enough that you start to be like, man, that halfling's really going for it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it should be done by now, but they're really, they're really into the calisthenics. I've and, never heard uh, anyone be that noisy, not in a fight. <laughs> Just doing that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's it's grunting like they're weightlifting, but they're just stretching. Uh, (laughs) You hear uh, a bell rings, and then the uh, door that you came through closes, and the small door, not the big one, uh, but the small one, opens. Uh, This human man, uh, pretty fit. He's got uh, like really like open white linen shirt, sleeveless. Walks through. Clearly, I mean. you get it. I don't need to hammer this up. Uh, it's a big gym guy vibe here. How right? hot is DM? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of that. Anyway, yeah. uh, how much of a wee fit trainer vibe am yeah. I getting on this guy? Uh, he's he's not nearly so clean. He's got he's got. <laughs> but he's, is that his, a name? You imagine his. You imagine <laughs> that from looking at him, you're like, okay, this guy's jaw's been broken at least once before, and ah. his nose four or five times before. Probably. Oh, okay, um, all right, like a boxer. <laughs> Yeah, he's shaved his head. Clearly, he does not. He's not. He doesn't have like pattern bald, male pattern bald, baldness. He just shaves his head because you can see where like the hairline is. Right. He just you know keeps it bald. Rip, uh, aerodynamics. We love you, Vin Diesel. Uh, he's obviously <laughs> bald, but uh, steps up the podium, uh, gives uh, two stomps. The halfling kind of turns and looks. <laughs> says, "All right, fresh meat. Welcome to the great gymnasium." Name's Boris. I'll be setting you up for today's activities. Obviously, none of y'all been here before. That's why you're talking to me. So, before we get started, they don't have any questions. No. Good. <laughs> so, obviously, you saw many bathhouses out there. Uh, there's a. Uh, uh, we have well, multiple facilities, many saunas. Uh, we have massage appointments available to be booked throughout the day. We have uh, uh, steam rooms. Uh, there are multiple uh, weight rooms, uh, full-length track concourse, of course. Uh, but that's not why any of you are here right now. No, you're here right now to take part in the Heart of Contest, the great rite of passage that allows you use of the great gymnasium. So, without any further ado, let's get things started. He goes and he knocks on the door, the huge door now, uh, that you see opens up, and immediately as it does, you begin to hear chanting uh, and stomping <laughs> like there's a, a there's a whole fight. You see a fighting pit inside. Uh, yes. Tall walls, uh, uh, rope nets above that to prevent people from climbing in or out, and a huge stadium full of people who are just shouting and stomping. Uh, Boris goes, I'll be the uh, <clears throat> MC for the defending champion today. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, we'll be assigning you uh, your own uh, vouchers to announce your entering into the ring and uh, answer any further questions you might have about the proceedings as they are. So, uh, let's see. Hmm. Walks up to the halfling. He goes, uh, he's like, all right, yeah, we got one for you. Um, uh, hold on. Uh, let's see. 
walks up the bugbear, looks up this tall, <laughs> lanky, thin, cat-like, Chewbacca-looking motherfucker. <laughs> um, like, mm, all right, yeah, yeah. Mm, we'll get a, mm, we'll get Lillian on you. Yeah, you should, should be good for us for you. And uh, what do we have? Here comes and looks down at you, Kiana. Just big bright smile. Still sitting crisscross applesauce. <laughs> you got your weapons? Don't need them. <laughs> lefty and righty and other lefty and other righty have served me well. <laughs> You're bold. We love a good uh we, we love we love a good dramatic uh one 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 shot puts them down fight. Uh that'll, that'll be fun. <laughs> I got just the oh, guy God. for you. All right. <clears throat> Zephyrius, get out here! We got a green one for you. <laughs> oh, Kiana. You see, uh, the, the uh, people walk through. Uh, all um, all these people are wearing uh, like really nice buttoned up. Uh, they're they're all clearly in their own way. Um, these announcers, these uh, sort of uh, you know your your own little uh, talk up person, oh. all dressed up really nice. <laughs> Um, and you see emerging uh, last a about six and a half feet tall. Skin would be the wrong way to describe it. He is made purely of crystal. Uh, he is an emerald oh, okay. dragonborn. Oh, uh, yes. cool. Spiraling little horns. Um, <laughs> Oh, and so uh, like a very, very kind of like a uh, uh, smooth snout that comes to a, uh, like a curved down point at the front. Looks one at the halfling, two at the bugbear, and then down at Yukiana. He goes, Right, yeah, that would make sense <laughs> for me. All right, uh, name's a furious. Uh, what could I uh, call you, kid? Kiana. Yeah. Kiana. Yeah, it's very nice to meet you. Thanks. All right, so uh, you know it's uh, gonna go out in there. I'm assuming I fight somebody. Uh, yeah. So there's gonna be a there's gonna be a fight. Uh, yeah. So Borb's over there. Is he a doubter for the uh, the uh, defending champion? Who we got right now? Who is uh, uh, Burke the Berserk? Ooh, uh, he's been here. Uh, uh, has been set off of his uh, King of the Hill position in uh, about three days. So uh, a pretty good run for uh, yeah, you know, pretty good run for a champion here. Uh, certainly nothing to sneeze at. Uh, it's a sort of King of the Hill situation. So uh, every day, got to fight, and uh, as long as you want to stay in the ring, you can stay in the ring. Uh, keep going, fight, fight, fight. The longer you win, you get to keep going. Not that we're going to have to worry about that, of course, but, uh, hmm. uh, you know, should you continue on, get a little break between each fight, uh, but uh, any newcomers have to fight you, and then, of course, any uh, defending champions uh, get a, uh, or sorry, any uh, former former warriors uh, get to uh, challenge you into the ring. But uh, I'm getting, I'm putting the cart before the horse here, sort of, uh, yeah, we're not going to get there. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, the first, the, the halfling goes in, and you hear the whole crowd roar. Oh, we're already getting started. All right, cool. So this shouldn't take more than like 10, 15 minutes. Cool. So that's everything you need to know, unless you have any other questions from me. Um, no, I think I pretty much get it. Uh, I'm guessing, obviously, no killing. Just... Uh, yeah, so, right, right no killing, yeah. that's a no-no. <laughs> yep. um, they do have uh, some acolytes at the stands who can stabilize anyone who's dying. Nice. Uh, you know, it's all fun and games here. You know, nothing worse than a broken bone or a serious concussion, you know. Great. Normal stuff. Um, cool, and... Uh, Just gonna be doing my stretches. See. Just, like, you all see, the way up, you all hear the way the down. <laughs> you hear the crowd go, ooh, <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, someone runs that you can see someone jumps off uh, into the pit all in white robes and uh, <laughs> picks up the uh, the crumpled form of the halfling on the ground <laughs> Ooh. drags him away ah, that's you that see, decorative um, muscle I've heard so much about <laughs> <laughs> the bugbear uh, is like nervously fidgeting uh, goes into the oh, ring you got it big guy uh, thanks <laughs> Uh, <laughs> really small voice. <laughs> Zephyrius, yeah, really small voice. You hear Zephyrius goes, All right, um, well, I told you uh, what to expect. Uh, oh, the last thing that I need is, uh, like, uh, what's your name? Uh, Kiana. I think I told you that, but that's okay. I'm sure you see a lot of people coming through every day. Oh, no, I don't. I'm, um, apologies. Uh, not, not like your name, but like, what's your, like, 
What do you want to be introduced at? Like, what's your, like, nom de plume? Yeah. Like, what's your, like, character? What's your, like, story? What am I working with when we go into the yeah, What's your title that you want to go along with? How about... The Runaway. The Runaway! <laughs> the Runaway? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, so good. I love it. That's it. That's the best you got? Well, you know... You got, like, a story to go with that? Oh, plenty. Are you actually interested, or are you just being polite? Uh, well, if you could give me, like, the 30-second version, I'll see what I can spin into out there. A uh, refugee from evil Mind Flayer monastery cult underground uh, got rescued by some friends, and I've been uh, wandering the planescape ever since. Ooh, she's a little runaway. <laughs> gotcha. So you're sort of like... <laughs> As yeah, if the Avatar sort of like references were already there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Makes oh, sense. Yeah. Uh, where are you from? Where are you from? Uh, believe it or not, Material Plane. That's it? Well, that sucks. Well, I was in a hole in the ground, so I can agree with that. <laughs> Why do you think I ran away, man? All right, all right, all right. So what are we working with here? We're working with um. You got like a you got like a gimmick or something? Like what can I what can I play on out there? Oh, you, I mean, you, you, like, yeah, you but I... you're like you're like a runner, kind of like uh, you gotta like run circles around him. Like what's the uh? What's I'm your pretty shtick? fast. Um, mostly I punch stuff. Mostly a punch stuff. All right, yep. good. That's going to go well. All right, well, I'll spend about as much time on the speech as you're going to spend out there on the uh, fight. Sound Thanks. good? Sure. All right. Oh, looks like we're coming up now. All right, cool. How, how's uh, the bugbear doing? <laughs> yeah, uh, the uh, the bugbear uh, hobbles off, um, holding uh, one one side of the rib cage, being supported by uh, their Ooh. sort of MC. All right, so uh, we're going to go out there. Uh, Boris going to introduce Burke. I'm going to introduce you, and uh, bang, 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 we get to go out for lunch, all right? Let's go. Great. You go in, uh, you oh, see so the fun. speech is already getting, being given by Boris as he introduces uh, Burke the Berserk. Uh, <laughs> this, this, this boy's straight feral. <laughs> this is... I want to I I get an insight check in on Burke the Berserk. I want to know what Burke the Berserk's deal is. <laughs> go ahead and roll an insight check. I want to know Burke. what his rich inner life is. Wait, so you have to beat <laughs> 16. the Berserk? To, to get into the gym, or is it just like a rat of passage? You know, I didn't like, actually well, check what happens in, in if order I lose. To, you just have to in, fight. In, in order to join the gym, you gotta fight. Fight yeah. You don't need to win. First time you here, gotta you always gotta fight. Right. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Presumably, you can then go into the hot springs. And yeah, like, exactly. Yes, yeah, you can yeah. then go enjoy gotcha. it, but you gotta show off your first time. You hear, uh, yeah, bo oh, so uh, inside check, um, 16. Berk the Berserk, you see, so um, he's this sweaty, shirtless dude, um, <laughs> unkempt hair and beard. Has Kiana encountered Human. a frat boy before? Yeah, he's got kind of. Um, imagine if a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, imagine if a frat guy was crossbred with um, uh, uh, Tom Hanks when he's running coast to coast, <laughs> uh, back Gump. and forth during that one sequence <laughs> in um, uh, the you know. Uh, Forrest Gump. Forrest, Gump. Uh, Forrest Gump, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's Gump. saying it. My bra All, my, both hamsters in my brain are running full <laughs> tilt, okay? <laughs> in no situation would I you start by me. describing that as Tom Hanks and not <laughs> fault. Uh, you know, I just, I care a lot about about people. Um, Look, that Patrick Warburton impression takes up a lot of processing power, okay? I want the entire <laughs> audience to know that Austin is constantly looking for a reason to do the Patrick Warburton. I'm constantly looking for a reason to do You know how every man has a Kermit impression deep inside of him? Austin has his Patrick Warburton. You've, you've yet to meet the Kermit. Yeah. They exist. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this berserker, uh, he's got a great axe uh, that looks like it's seen better days, and uh, he's kind of frothing at the mouth a little bit. Uh, you asked for the details of his rich inner life. You're yeah. thinking maybe you're getting it all kind of on the surface right there. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not much to... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all there is. Inside? No, it's all on the outside. <laughs> surface site. Um, <laughs> uh, amazing. Um, yeah, you uh, enter the ring. The the, uh, the 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 introduction for Bart doesn't need to be made again. Everyone's just getting like really hype, Woo -woo! and uh, they're they're very excited. Uh, <sighs> he's kind of keeping the energy going, and he's like, yeah, "So uh, let's see who dares go across the berserk." <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, if I get everyone to stop, yeah. it. Um, you see, Zephyrius. Uh, uh, <laughs> Gives a, gives a hand, uh, taps his throat twice, uh, and uh, like a sort of pulsing light appears in his neck, uh, and he uh, he announces uh, loudly, but it also feels like it's being projected into the head, your head, and everyone else's head as he Ooh. says it. 
petitioners, waiters, bribes, feeds, celestials, axioms, anarchs, visitors from across the plains. We have seen many warriors from many worlds, but I promise you, you never seen a challenger like this one. Worldless, a wanderer from place to place. She has escaped countless encounters with unimaginable horrors. No idea. Ageless dragons, <laughs> star raiders, and even fiends and aberrations from worlds that have never been named and never will be named, for to behold them would break the mind of any who dares do it. She has bested all of them, now she comes here, a wanderer, to Sigil, hoping to find someone that will challenge her finally. I give you the scourge of many worlds, she without a home, Kiana, or the runaway! <sighs> Did this guy pull my combat history out of my head? Go burn! <laughs> it occurs to me you are wearing a dragon scale belt. That man can do oh, his yeah. job. Uh -huh. that, that man can do his that job. That man's a professional. Considering yeah, yeah. how little faith he has in me, I really appreciate how much he hyped me up. <laughs> Job's a job. Job's That's a job. That's nothing to work with, man. Okay. You uh, you hear there's like some like, all right, all right. Thanks, thanks everybody. Respect for anyone willing to play. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's give it to her. Getting yeah, a I'm gonna... army chant going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna keep doing the little, you know, the shoulder stretches as I, I walk closer. Um, and uh, you once see, I you guess, enter, it's a. By the way, it's a forty foot uh, across circle. Oh, that's We're not, not gonna bad. use a battle map. It's all theater of the mind because basically anyone can get to anyone anywhere with right. the forty foot across. Uh, the walls are thirty feet high, and then there's some netting that goes above, and you can see all the people in the very steep stands above looking down on you. Um, oh. There's a small, like, cage door for uh, the MCs to enter into, which is where Superius goes. Uh, you see Burke looks at you, and he takes he takes his great axe, and he just mimes, like, going across the throat, <laughs> and then he points at you. I wave. <laughs> um, and as soon as we are within uh, ten feet of each other, <laughs> I'm going to punch ding, ding. The yep. round begins. Yep. Let's Roll go. initiative. Okay. Let's go! Let's go, Kiana! <laughs> let's go! How about an 11? <laughs> uh, go, Bizarre! Hold on, let's see. <laughs> dexterity plus one. You guys tied at an 11, oh. uh, but your <laughs> dexterity is higher, so you're just gonna beat him. So what happens here is he gets off the line with some surprising speed, and then your uh, turn immediately starts. Yep. What would you like to do as, he, uh, as you know, within 10 right. feet of each other now? Well, uh, now that we're within 10 feet of each other, I'm gonna uh, punch one fist in the other and summon my arms and visage of the astral self. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that is uh, uh, one uh, dexterity saving throw from him. Yes, uh, that uh, is. And the DC two, is what? Uh, DC 16. He rolled a 19. Ooh, well, he succeeds, so he doesn't take 2d6 force damage. Kind of hope it looks pretty cool. <laughs> um, uh, you see the glowing lights light up. He jumps in the air, battle axe overhead. What would you like to do? Uh, I would like to. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to punch up. Because <laughs> that was my punch bonus up. action. So I'm just going to use my action to uh, swing up. Because, you know, 10 feet. Of range is in fact my range. Um, mm -hmm. First attack. I assume I'm rolling this straight. No advantage. No disadvantage. Correct. Oh come on, please be good. Oh yeah, that is good. Twenty six. Nice. Twenty six. Yeah, I rolled an eighteen. What's your damage? Uh, my damage is one d six plus five force damage. I mean, I'm gonna be doing chip damage on this guy. I, I recognize that. I just want to put in like a good show. Uh, Go for so, it. So uh, that is um, ten force damage. Ten. You throw one golden fist uppercut. His, his, you catch him right in the jaw, his head snap back, and like a uh, sack of potatoes, he goes down into the sand of the pit and tumbles across the floor. Yeah! Balax spins off and sink, sinks into the ground like a foot from his head, just sticking up at the perfect angle. Whew. There's a moment of dead silence, and then... Yeah! Oh, yeah! yeah! You hear uh, just chanting. A cleric comes down <laughs> and like does something, and you see his 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 uh, uh, his like spine and jaw kind of like a snap back into place, <laughs> and then two people come and get him into the arms and drag him away. Is he okay? <laughs> yeah, you see Zephyrus comes out. He goes, 
Is he okay? Yeah. <laughs> You're... Are you okay? You just took him out in like two seconds flat. I'm, I'm fine. I'm... As a three-day defending champion. I'm used to things taking more punches, <laughs> if I'm completely honest. <laughs> I well. didn't even get to use my second action. <laughs> You got uh, more of that there? What is with all this, like, uh, what's this, like, uh, uh, what's the situation you got going on here? Like, uh, oh, have you guys never he makes seen legs for the arms? <laughs> no. All right, don't play cute with me. No, really. We both know that <laughs> no, you're Keanu. playing. You tried, you tried to sell yourself short as someone who has never attempted to do that in my life. I know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> what? Well, like, let's, let's get, all right. We, um, <laughs> listen, how far do you try to go here? Like, you want to, like, step out or you want to see how you do? Because, like, we could see. Um, you want to see how you can do here? Make a name for yourself. Fine. I can make a name for you. I can, I, make, I, honestly, I can make you a legend. I just... I'm really curious to see how everyone out here fights. So let's see how far the show yeah. goes. Uh, I've got like, the hands on the hip yeah. and the bigger hands like kind of also right. making the same all right. motion. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, let Frick. me see what I can do. All right. Um, you see, uh, he goes over to um, uh, Boris. He says, all right, get the hell out of my bed. <laughs> Bye, Taps Boris. his throat again. Adios, amigo. Uh, anything to get more Patrick Warburton on the horn. Well, oh, yeah. does our champion, the runaway, now have your attention? <laughs> Perhaps she is a wanderer, not because she must leave the fight, but because there is no one left in her wake to continue it. Come! <laughs> she came here to be challenged, and clearly she's waiting to be impressed. Let's go. Don't worry. She's spent a lot of time waiting. So, she's perfected her patience. You can wait here now if, if everyone in the crowd is too much of a coward to face her. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, Part yeah, everyone here is a total over. gym rat. <laughs> of course, everyone <laughs> watching wants to fight too. You hear uh, immediately uh, a gate, uh, people start getting up out of the seats and like going down aisles. <laughs> oh my uh, god. Says, All right, kid. You can take up dead minutes between each fight if you need it. Uh, but you gotta stay on the whole time. Yeah, right. Honestly, if, if these are out for more than ten minutes, I it, it takes it's more draining. So the quicker right, so the you better. Want, you want us to go right now? All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see. It was our first. All right. So yes. Yeah, so uh, you, Kiana can take up to ten minutes between a fight. So that's like a little uh, short rest. And, uh, no, short rest is an hour. Never mind. So as long as you want to stay in the fight, you cannot short rest. But I will remind you, we talked about you have some Tasha's variant rules that don't right. really come up. Yeah, so you can weird. spend a, you can spend a key point to uh, increase your attack roll by two, and you can spend up to three to do that. Mm. You can heal yourself by spending two key points, and that lets you roll your martial arts die. Right. You can uh, don't forget your dragon belt lets you use an action to regain yep. a certain number of key. So as you've seen, these fighters are on a tier lower than you. So uh, mechanically speaking, we're in we're tier two adventurers. These guys, uh, until I, uh, until I let you know, these are all tier one adventurers, which to you makes them minions. Oh. <laughs> so if they fail a saving throw that causes them to take damage, or you hit them with an attack roll, they are reduced to zero hit points. They just poof. Uh, okay. But Sheesh. they roll they roll initiative. They have AC. They deal damage like other characters do. So in other words, they can be just as threatening, but these fights are going to be, we're entering tournament arc montage. (laughs) Uh, We're going to roll initiative for every fight and then go. So first up, uh, we have introduced, um, (laughs) you see entering uh, a little purple grung. Yes. Oh God. Uh, Yes. Uh, This is introduced as uh, Grung, who is the greatest little bowman, a.k.a. Little Bow. Yes! Little Bow? <laughs> little bow? Oh yes! my god, yes! Is this a cameo from another campaign? No! Oh, yes. Yes. Am Science. I about to punt somebody's favorite character? You are now. <laughs> my favorite character. Uh, uh, little <laughs> Bow has uh, a little quiver and bow, um, and oh, no, uh, roll cute. initiative. Yeah, it's the okay. all you need to know. <laughs> Round two. Red, I'm so uh, sorry, but I hope you lose. Bow, Bow, Bow! <laughs> 22. <laughs> no. uh, 22? Uh, yeah. That is going to beat her 14. So she she pulls out and knocks a poison tip arrow. Uh, what would you like to do? I want to let her shoot it at me so I can deflect it and throw it back at her. <laughs> you take no action, just Open wait stands. and I, you, you got to taunt. No, I'm just going to, I mean, I'll wave again. <laughs> We're all Which here is a having a good time. In and of itself. All right, here <laughs> oh we go. Short bow. <laughs> that's a 17 to hit. Um, oh no, that's actually gonna miss me. <laughs> okay, t- she'll take a second shot. That's <laughs> one higher. 
Uh, 13 plus 5 is 18. That will hit me. It meets oh, it, beats it, go. I assume. <laughs> uh, it, all right, here we go. She, you do a wave taunt. She pulls out two arrows, fires both of them. One goes wide, the other comes right at you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to deal Oops. 1 million damage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be bad. Yeah. It's a that... kill shot. Uh, it deals six piercing and three poison. So that's okay. nine total damage. Uh, well, my base amount that I can reduce it by is 12. And if I reduce it to zero and have a free hand, I can spend one key point to make a ranged attack with a range Let's of 20, 60. Go. Go. So I'm going to spend uh, a key point and I'm going to okay. throw the arrow back at her. <laughs> All right, go ahead and throw. All right, let me just... Uh... It's a it's a ranged attack, so it's just dex... To, oh, you can use your wisdom. It so says, wisdom uh, plus proficiency. It says it's plus six on here, so let's just... Oh, okay. Let's go. Perhaps Come on. Here. Ooh, ten. <laughs> I only rolled a four. Uh, you can spend key points to increase You're it. You're right, I can. Uh, so I'll spend uh, one key point to increase it to 12? Uh, you can spend two points to increase it to 14 and hit her. Well, let's do that. Uh, <laughs> All right, cool. You spend two key points and throw it back. It does uh, 1d6 just... plus three damage, but she's a minion, so. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it goes right through. You hit her with an attack. Uh, it knocks the bow out of her hand. It goes into her shoulder. Uh, she goes. Sorry, are you okay? <laughs> she's immune to poison, so fortunately the poison oh, doesn't goodness. hurt her. Uh, but uh, she has a bow in her hand. Oh, uh, she gets pulled out. Uh, ding, ding, round three. You see uh, introduced, uh, also not carrying any weapons, a uh, hobgoblin, red, uh, fur, kind of, almost cat-like kind of visage, wearing all black, uh, mm -hmm. takes a monk's pose, introduced Ooh. as uh, oh, Shadow yeah, Weaver a... Oland. Oh, yeah. that's so cool. <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll initiative. Okay. <laughs> 27. <laughs> oh. Uh, pretty sure a net twenty ain't gonna do it on the even. Uh, it could do it on this one. Let's oh, see. Oh dang! Really? Plus three, uh, <laughs> twenty-one. So not bad. But uh, you're going first. Yeah. Well, uh, it, it. They're a mug. I'm gonna gonna do a little bow, and then I'm gonna run in and punch. <laughs> All right, go for it. Within ten feet. Uh, okay. So first attack. Ooh, that first one's a crit fail. Uh, so that's okay. bad. Uh, second attack. <laughs> uh, 27. <laughs> 27 will hit. What would you like to do? What happens? So, for a little flavor, uh, this goblin is a uh, is a shadow monk, essentially. Um, you see she comes in and places her hands together, and as she exhales through her nose, like, a cloud of, like, magical darkness begins to obscure her to try and hide her position. <gasps> like Naruto. <laughs> but, uh, I believe you can see through magical darkness. Okay. Oh no, that's not even gonna work, my visage. Yeah, I can see normally in darkness, both magical and non-magical. There you go. So she like oh totally thinks she's hiding from pulling a trick over on you. Oh, and God. you come in and uh I went with the her. first one, but the second one just like clocks her. <laughs> she's yeah, like not ready for it, manages to parry the first sec first one, but the second one comes in uh just right to the face, wow. hook uh head spins, dazed eyes, collapses, darkness vanishes like a cloud being dispersed. The round three completes. Yay! Dang. All right, here we go. Oh, man. Uh, round four. I'm working four. out so much bad feelings with this. <laughs> round four. Uh, you hear introduced Jasna Iron Grip. You see a uh, female Duragar um, who has just the sides of her head shaped white shock of hair. She's cool. got a big ass war hammer. Uh -huh. um, she enters, and as she enters, she's going to do uh, a little prep and she will cast invisibility innately on herself. Ooh, uh, that's gonna be interesting. And as she enters, she shimmers out of view. Go ahead and roll initiative. Okay, dirty 20. Six. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so currently hidden from view, what would you like to do? Well, uh, I guess I'd like to see if I can hear where she is. <laughs> um, like like just a, like a perception check or something? I don't yeah. know. Um, yeah, you can totally action perception check. All right, uh, yeah, let's do that. <clears throat> um, ugh, I'm guessing an eight is not going to work. That's, oh, well, she has to roll um, her stealth against you. Well, I rolled a three, great, but she so... Rolls an advantage. Uh, what would you say your total was? Eight. Uh, she rolled uh, a natural, uh, with advantage, she rolled an eight. Oh, so we're, we're tied. <laughs> so you know exactly where she is. You look around and you can see just a little bit of sand being indented where she's standing. Okay, I guess I'll throw a punch. <laughs> um, okay, so I use my action to sense, but I... Oh, wait, no, I can't. Because 
I can only use bonus action flurry of blows if I attack with my action. Correct. If you spend a okay. key point on your turn or uh, or attack, yes. Okay, then I guess I'm just gonna <laughs> wait for her to attack me. <laughs> um. Okay. <laughs> you just want to end your turn and move it to her. I I mean yeah, there's not a lot I could. Uh, oh wait. Oh no. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, bonus action on our strike is also if I use my the attack action. So. <clears throat> Correct. Uh, you do have your um your your step the wind patient defense stuff. You're Those right. That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll just take the dodge action. Bonus action. Patient defense. Bonus action. All right. You square up right to where you see she's standing and dodge. Uh, she'll come in and uh, attack. Now she gets um, advantage on the first one, but you're dodging, so she rolls first one straight. Uh, a four plus four <laughs> an is eight. an eight. No, so that's she will not miss. going to hit me. <laughs> and then she will. Uh, attack at disadvantage with her second attack. Okay. Invisibility drops and but just as you dodge left and the hammer hits the sand and sprays it up everywhere, then she's mm -hmm. going to pull it up and go for a side swipe on your legs. Cool beans. Four plus four is eight. Well, not uh, that also does not hit. That still does not hit. <laughs> with with uh, no bonus actions, that ends her turn. Alright. Uh, then I'm gonna uh, yeah, I'm gonna punch. <laughs> That's what I told the Patrick Warburton dragon I mostly do. I can't disappoint him. <laughs> He's just now starting to think I'm cool. Uh, <clears throat> first attack. 17. Uh, 17 will hit. Scale uh, mail and a shield, but it's not enough to defend against that. Perfect. Um, is this How still do you a take minion? Her out? Or should I? Oh, yeah, yeah, she's still a minion. I think that when I like kind of rolled to the side, I sort of just came up with one fist already swinging. <laughs> it's just a really wide arc that clocks her in the side of the head. <laughs> A lot of headshots in this fight. It's not uh, intentional. A lot of boom. these guys are short. <laughs> Goes down, not a full knockout, but like uh, clearly like stunned and in no, no shape to keep fighting. Mm. Led out of the ring. Uh, that was round what four? I think <laughs> round four. five. Uh, this is the uh, this is also a minion. Amazing. Oh, yeah. You uh, see a lion man, so a Leonin, just like uh, oh, Athos. Was an amazing upset. Of the season <laughs> in history. Enters. Someone's watching the news. Like, wait, do I know that idiot? Yeah. All white fur, <laughs> hey, man in a braid. Wait. Uh, go ahead and roll initiative. I think I saw this guy in Invincible. <laughs> that did, fight didn't go <laughs> so hot. Uh, oh God. Twenty-three. <laughs> uh. Uh. 11. Okay. This is, so I'm, so each round takes at least two minutes. So five rounds, this ends your 10 minutes. After this fight, you will have to resummon your arms. Okay. Um, then in the intervening time, I might also use the dragon hide belt to get some key back first. Yeah, it's only an action. It only takes six seconds to do that. So you can, yeah. you can pretty much throw that in anywhere. Okay. Um, well, let's, I, he just entered. Um, I feel like it's kind of gauche to just immediately like dive bomb and try to punch him. Uh, so I'm going to patient defense this first round. <laughs> Just dodge All right. He sees that you're messing with him. Let's I'm not messing with him. I'm being polite. <laughs> and uh, comes in for three attacks. Uh, okay. Oh, what was his name, by the way? Uh, oh, yeah. What is this guy's name? Uh, oh, just send. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, Kane. Kane. Kane? Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Kane. Blue Kane. Cool, here we go. Three attacks <laughs> right at disadvantage. Uh, this is the mortal combat. Uh, five plus seven is 12. That will not hit me. A natural one. That will also not hit me. Oh my goodness. Uh, a nat 20 and a 7 plus 7 for 14. Ooh. Uh, well, the second one of those will not hit me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, uh, just like Matrix full, dodging. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> full three dodges and your turn. All right. Uh, I'm going to see if I can punch this guy full in the chest. Uh, Go for I just it. I feel like it's a nice mix up. Ha! Uh, <laughs> uh, 27. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! How do you take him out? Uh, full in the chest. I don't yeah. want to crack his armor, but I want yeah. him to be kind of like winded. <laughs> oh, he's armorless, uh, barbarian oh. style. Oh, perfect. Um, how many barbarians <laughs> are you going to throw at me this time? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's just like, I see the point where his, because he's, he's not really, you know, he's clawing at me. His guard isn't really up. So I'm just like, oh, there's an opening. Bam! Like Goku style. <laughs> but these Very guys nice. leave themselves wide open. <laughs> uh, this is true. You see, we progress through these rounds, just uh, bam, bam, bam. Yeah. Uh, the one punch. I'm just gonna. The cue <laughs> begins to dry up. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna At use the uh, the belt action to get Go my key points back. Gain, Actually, uh, yeah. It's martial arts dies amount. 
Uh, yep. So whatever you roll for your punches. You know, it, it actually should, it should say it in your magic. Item. Yeah, it's it's a d6. You know, it actually might be more efficient for me to resummon the arms first because I have a chance of rolling a six, and I currently have three out of eight key points left. So I'm gonna spend one key point to resummon them first. Cool. And then on the next action, while we're waiting, I'm just gonna you roll on the off chance that the I next roll fight. Six. Yep. Ah! I rolled a three, so it didn't matter anyway. <laughs> but that's okay. Um. All right, you I have see, more key points now. Uh, at this point, I imagine spirits are pretty high. Uh. Zephyr is like, oh, and it seems that we've re we're reaching the end of people brave enough to face our new challenger. Anyone else dare to step into the ring with the runaway? <laughs> you hear uh, a FEMA voice come from the, like, the, the entering Ioni. tunnel. Oh um, my god, I hope so. <laughs> uh, clear, clear, very enunciated uh, as she speaks. I would face her if she'll have me. You see a woman steps through, kind of ducks a little bit underneath. Um, they, uh, there's um, uh, The doors close with a uh, portcullis each time, so she steps kind of like underneath the portcullis. Oh. Uh, she's got long black hair, and she's wearing uh, studded leather armor over like white robe. Uh, it's you not Ioni. None of us know uh, what Ioni looks actually, like. Actually, let me grab... <laughs> That's true. That would be she very gonna, funny. Gonna... <laughs> I get through the full physical description and it's like, oh yes, this person I've known since childhood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Just can't place you. her. Uh, that would be the worst she's thing. She's got, you see, she's got like a set of javelins and an axe on her back. Mm. Um, steps through, crosses her arms, most notable about uh, her, besides uh, her height and, um, you know, uh, is that her, first of all, her armor still has blood stains on it. Oh, nice. And her, each wrist and each calf is wrapped not with armor, but with red cordage that's been like wrapped around count like over and over and over and over and over again. Okay. So she's got like, you know, red um, thin line binding wow. both of her arms and her legs. Her I would like to do an insight check on how much I can learn from this person. <laughs> Well, that would be first. Uh, if you want to know about the red things, that's a religion. And if uh, you want no, to do an insight to that. read the vibe, okay, cool. Like an insight to read the vibe, go for it. Thank you. <laughs> vibe check. I was like, yeah, <clears throat> interesting fashion choices. That's fine. Uh, six. Uh, no, yes, insight. Uh, <laughs> that is a sixteen. Still be Ioni. It could have been a natty twenty. It was the eight, which is right next to the twenty on the die. Nah. Uh, she rolls. She rolls to counter your insight. Uh, she rolls not a uh, deception, but an intimidation to appear stoic and reserved. Uh, <laughs> and she rolled a 22. Okay, consider me slightly intimidated. <laughs> Ooh. All right. You hear uh, uh, Sephirius comes over and goes, all right, not too late to tap out, kid, if you want to, you know, call while we're on a, like, sort Are of, you like, kidding me? Situation. I've been waiting for something like this. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm going to do, like, the Henry Cavill, like, reload the arms thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is where you resummon the arms. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, get the belt yeah. back. <laughs> Whew. Uh, inspiration. Oh, thank you. I need that uh, on now I need my that animation by on my Monday. <laughs> Just add a little. Eh, you hear uh, as Furious walks up, taps. Facing our runaway, <laughs> we have our challenger. You know her. You've seen her fight before. Foe to the lash, razor of the fallen. She who conquered pain. I give you Hedda, the ever enduring. <laughs> you see, she steps forward, acknowledges you, says, since you wield no weapon, Wear no armor, then neither shall I. Whoa. Takes oh, off. Shit. I don't know why I closed the book with her stat block in it. That was a stupid <laughs> move to do, Austin. I was like, all right, I did the announcement. We're done. <laughs> um, yeah, she's another minion. Uh, she's <laughs> another, another minion. <laughs> uh, she's not a minion, obviously. No, of course not. <laughs> God, that would she, be so uh, funny. She um, takes off, uh, takes off the, the great axe, the javelin, leans them against the side, takes off the armor, she's just wearing white tunic underneath, uh, and the red cord that binds her. Sort of like a sandal situation going on. <sighs> Whenever you are ready, run away. Let us see who will win. <laughs> the enduring or the swift. Let's do it. Roll initiative. I hope she can, t I'm, if she's trying to figure me out, I'm 
absolutely gleeful about this. How are we feeling, Kiana? How are you feeling about this right now? I have been uh, working out so many emotional problems <laughs> that built up over the course of the last uh, session. Um, there's a strange freedom, uh, I think, and I rolled a 23, by the way. <laughs> um, nice. uh, amazing. In uh, just like, this is a place that feels very oddly free, uh, considering how, how rigid and structured it is, which is a little bit new. You know, I'm not used to, to combat training being framed in this light, so I'm just having a ball. <laughs> she rolls Amazing. at advantage with uh, with all her nonsense and rolls two fours. Oof. So that's a total of Woo. seven. Yikes. Well, I know how this goes. You know, whoever attacks first, narratively speaking, is generally the person who's going to get their ass beat. So I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to charge. All right, do it. <laughs> She's standing there completely open and I'm like, yeah, OK, I can guess where this is going to go. <laughs> Red's First attack. Sense is tingling. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, Kiana might not know this, but I'm excited for her to get her yeah, ass kicked. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Attack number one plus eight. Oh my God! Natural twenty. <laughs> that twenty. Kiana. Shit. <laughs> okay. Oh, version of trope. I, I feel. I feel bad now. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, the base attack is. Try not to feel too bad. It, okay, it's one to six plus five. To make sure I uh, know. So for a crit, it's dice plus the max damage you could roll on the die plus the bonus. Like, the bonus doesn't double, right? Correct. Um, bonus does not double. Okay, so it's just 1d6 plus 11. A 6. So, 17. 17? Yeah. Not too shabby. So, just like the anime style leaping punch. What is... <laughs> boo, comes in, crack across the jaw because that's been working for you so far. Uh, second punch? Yeah, second punch. Uh, for this one, I will drop low. Punch. 25. <laughs> 25 will hit. I rolled a 17. Okay, d6 plus 5. Only 8 points of damage this time. Okay. You see, boom, boom, you come in. This is with the Astral Fists? This is still the Astral Fists, yes. Cool. You come in. She gets kind of harried, backs up against the wall, uh, grabs jaw. That is well practiced. Thank you. My turn. Yes. Oh, can wait, I do you have a bonus action you want to do? I do have a bonus action, but I'm just going to dodge. Go I'm just going to patient gonna defense. I can, I can, like, smell that she's, like, everyone else has gone down in one hit, and she just took one of my strongest and then a second one. I know which side of the anime fight I'm on right now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Let's try and mitigate how much of a vicious ass whooping I'm about to receive. <laughs> you enter dodge. She looks at you, kind of grabs her jaw, says, All right. My turn. Yes. Uh, she's going to enter a rage with her bonus action. Oh, oh let's go. Yes. And she is going to attack twice with her fists. Yes. She's going to make it reckless so that she can attack straight against you. Okay. Oh my goodness. Let's right, go. Come on. come on, come on, come on, come on. A 17 to hit is just going to miss. That's but just going to miss. natural 17 is going to definitely hit. That one is going to hit. Uh, she deals uh, five bludgeoning damage to you. Ooh. First hit of the match. <laughs> um, I'm gonna. If, sorry, DM. I'm gonna use my uh, my reaction to use my telekinetic reprisal. I haven't been hit once yet. I haven't gotten to show this oh, off. Uh, so I can use my reaction Super to force dope. the creature to make a strength saving throw DC 16. On a failure, the target takes 2d8 force damage and is pushed up to 10 feet away from me. I think she's back against the wall, so I doubt that'll matter. But I just wanted to fire that off just so everyone here could see that I could. It's cool, Skid. Yeah, so she needs to make a deck save? Uh, DC 16 strength saving throw. Strength saving throw. I'm guessing she's good at these. <laughs> yeah. And she has She'll proficiency. Uh-huh, yes. uh-huh. Uh, her yeah. proficiency is... Uh, her proficiency is plus three. 19. Okay, yeah, she's fine. <laughs> Does she take half damage or? Uh, uh, yes. On a success, the target takes half as much damage and isn't pushed. Thank you for making me read that. I think it's just pure okay. surprise. I was not expecting to get punched. <laughs> um, so it's just like a little telekinetic, like what? Hacha. Uh, okay, that's ten half to five. Okay, so she takes five damage. She doesn't resist force. Oh, I'm sorry. Add another because she's raging. She adds two damage. So go ahead and take another two. Oh. So it's seven total. You took. Ooh. Ah. Alrighty. Um, she she strength saves again. You almost reactionarily, instinctively, you uh, the arms. Uh, you, you, it's like a string you barely had to pull on to move the puppet. The arms flash out and push her back. She slides back on that second hit, 
10 feet, but uh, clearly she, like, uh, you see her might resist it. She did not take as much damage as you expected on that. Cracks her neck, and that's her action and her bonus action. So go ahead and take your turn, Kiana. Big grin. <laughs> I'm just so happy. This is really fun. <laughs> um. uh, you are rolling at advantage because she just attacked recklessly. Oh, for real? Ooh. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Then, yeah, I'm going to um, just kind of... No, you know what? Yeah, I, I kind of know what kind of fight we're doing. There's no need to reposition. I'm just going to sort of serpentine back in. <laughs> and um, because you got pushed. Oh. Yeah, just that's the beauty of the dive. theater of the mind is we don't actually need to track yeah. positioning. We can just uh, describe cool movements. <laughs> so cool. Sorry. Fumbled my die. Okay, we're good. off um, the wall. Backflip. Do a 360 right. ollie and then just smack him across the face. <laughs> Oh, there will be a backflip. Being awesome I... is a free action. <laughs> oh, yeah. There will be a backflip if I feel the need to get farther away from her. But right now, I'm just like, yes, finally, exercise. Okay, first <laughs> attack, uh, which is an advantage because she just attacked recklessly. Um, Correct. 23. 23 will hit. D6 plus 5. Nine points of force damage. Second attack. Eight and 15, so that's a second 23. Um... <laughs> Two hits. All right, D6 plus five. Uh, 10 points of force damage this time. Damn, not too bad. Yeah. I think I'm gonna do another patient defense. <laughs> Just kind of, you know, fall back on the little, like the, the monk training a little bit because she's really hard to predict and that's throwing me a little, I think. So that's my bonus action, uh, patient defense. Okay. And that was my action, bonus action. Yeah, and I guess my reaction. She sees is. you come in and you have all the advantage in the world, mechanically yeah. and narratively. Right. <laughs> Takes two attacks, and then she sees you when you could have gone in again. Step back and patient defense. You are very well practiced, but you're un- Forgive me, you seem undriven. <laughs> uh... She, uh, you see, uh, what, do you, do you say anything? No, I think that actually throws me a little bit. <laughs> She comes in, she's going to make a grapple check against you. Huh? Okay. So you can use your acrobatics to try and evade this, uh, but she does roll hers at advantage since she's free. Ooh, well, my acrobatics is pretty good. 19? What's your total? That's my total. Oh, total 19? Yeah. Natural 20 plus 7. Ah! Okay, Ooh. the dice have spoken. <laughs> what would be she, most narratively appropriate? She comes in, and you're expecting a punch. Uh-huh. So you, uh, you go to deflect it with your wrist, and instead she just grabs the wrist. Hmm. No damage. It's not attack roll. She, she doesn't roll a disadvantage. It's just a contested check right. because of the dodge. And then she's going to use uh, one of her attacks, throw, when she has a grappled creature. She can, no attack roll, just throw you. <laughs> uh, and she's just going to turn and hurl you 30 feet against a wall. I'm getting puny uh, you got it. 10 feet of, uh, as if you were falling damage. Oh, wait. For each... Uh, for each thing throw. Oh, this is gonna be dope. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't okay. think about this. Mechanically, what does my uh, what does oh, my? Oh, that's a good question. Hold on, let me read because that's ability. Um, from... Because mechanically, I want to know what my slow fall does in reaction to this. Um, so what I'm gonna say is, go ahead and make a deck save against her. Um, her essentially her DC, her her like attack, her her strength save DC. Okay. Um, and if you succeed, you can use um, you can get your feet under you and use slow fall. And if you fail, then you're gonna take the damage. Okay. So go ahead and roll dull, roll dex save. Dex save plus six. Ho ho ho! I rolled a two. So unless two plus she, six unless is she's lower eight. than an eight, it's possible. Uh, uh her it. <laughs> Sa saving throw DC start at eight and then add things. Okay, so never mind. She, uh, <laughs> okay. You, you did not succeed. You're gonna take three D6 bludgeoning Yikes. damage. Oh boy. Ten points of bludgeoning damage Ooh. as she throws you into a wall. Wow. <laughs> this is fucking tight. I want to see fan art of this on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> She gives a, a half smile at that one. So that's both of her attacks. She's just going to walk towards you with the rest of her turn. Huh. Um, and as she does, she says, Interesting. You clearly have no aversion to fighting, as some do. Foolish. To fight is not a bad thing. It's the purpose of many. But you seem to lack conviction. Oh. I don't know. I've seen a warrior like you before. Your turn. 
Uh, I'm gonna do a little like a like a spinny kip up <laughs> um, mm-hmm. to nice. get up from being prone. I don't know how much of my movement that takes, but I have a lot of it, and I'm not using it for anything, so I assume it's fine. <laughs> um, uh, oh boy, yeah, this is she. She's so insightful. <laughs> um, <laughs> fighting but lacking conviction—that is kind of my whole thing. <laughs> Even the runaway. <laughs> oh, she was reading me like a book, so I'm gonna punch her again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fucking hell, die! This is the this is the friggin' narrative appropriateness die because it just gave me a nat one. <laughs> You're going in timeout. I want to punch her at least one more time. Oh god. Um, second attack. Ha! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Two. Hey! <laughs> no. The dice are against she's me. She's got you. Okay. She's uh. She's throwing she's me off my rhythm. Little, I mean. How does Kiana feel? I won't describe how Kiana feels. How yeah. does Kiana feel? I think uh, that the thing is the, the the nugget at the heart of this particular weird mood is the conversation we had at the end of the last episode where Kiana sort of put together at the time that technically speaking, her greatest strength has just been running away from everything she knows. But now that what she knows are good people who she cares about, who care about her in a very real way, she's sort of got this little problem of like, you know, the best thing I did in my life was run away and Danny kind of laying it out like, you know, you have to commit to, you have to commit to the bit, you know, you you can't let your moral compass get in the way. It's like my moral compass is the only thing that guides me. So it's like loyalty versus inner moral compass. And the problem is I actually know which of those is going to win every time. And I don't like thinking about that. Um, And uh, the thing is, Kiana was never good at the monk discipline stuff. Like that's part of why she cracked and and split. Uh, So it's kind of what she's falling back on, but she's, you know, she's feeling a lot of different things in a lot of different directions and she was never taught any way to deal with that. Um, So I think what's happening is she's, her her punches are getting sloppier um, and she doesn't, she doesn't know how to channel that it's just, you know, bad feelings are coming out, and normally they'd make her hit harder, but they're just making her swing wide around this person. <laughs> are you saying that Good the source shit. superpower used to be anger, but now you need to find a new source of fire <laughs> bending? <laughs> How many it's elements? It's the opposite. My superpower today, was never yeah. anger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, amazing. Uh, do you have a bonus action you'd like to take? I think for my bonus action, I'm going to get reckless with it and flurry of blows at her. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Uh, spend that key point. <laughs> Hacha! Um, first attack. Come on, don't fuck me on this. <laughs> Twelve! I'm creeping up the number scale. Twelve will not hit. Of course it won't hit! <laughs> Alright, fourth die. Don't fuck me on this one. <laughs> <laughs> twenty-four. No, twenty-five. Sorry, plus eight. That'll there we hit. Go. Eight. Thank you, Jesus. All right, last one. D6 plus five force damage. <laughs> Six force damage. <clears throat> Boom. Uh, she goes side, side, back, and then has nowhere further go on back, and your final hit gets her as she uh, runs out of retreating space, and she's, like, kind of duking around you. Um, she lets out a little... <sighs> Uh, air as you finally get like one in the gut yeah. um, just you know <laughs> astral construct on rippling abs yeah <laughs> <laughs> trying to like uh, shake out the, the, the tension in my wrists <laughs> good good when you start a fight you have to intend to finish it if you never know why you're fighting when you start you're going to fail every time uh, attack okay <laughs> She's gonna reckless. Ooh. Come on. Let's go. Kiana. You know, we're gonna keep rolling the die that rolled the 20. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> uh, that's uh, 23 to hit on the first one. Okay, yeah, I think that'll squeeze by. <laughs> Seven points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> what are you at? Uh, I am at 29. Oh, you're fine. Second attack. Uh huh. Uh, that's a natural 14 plus uh, 21 to hit. I mean, that's good. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> Cool. Uh, that's another seven points of bludgeoning damage. It's one plus strength plus uh, two from her rage. Okay, from the second one, I want to use my second uh, telekinetic reprisal of the day. Um, All right, she will roll strength save. Uh, she's going to roll 
23. Yeah, she passes. So half damage on 2d8 force damage. Push 10 feet away awesome. from me. <laughs> How about a five? It halves to a two. Two. Subi, what are you doing, man? <laughs> Boom. She gets knocked back again. Anything to add? Or uh, are you taking your turn? You're making some really good points. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to punch her. <laughs> uh, she attacked recklessly, so this is an advantage, right? These are all an advantage, yeah. Good. All right. Attack number one. <laughs> an 18 and a 19. Thank you, Dice. All right. 26 to hit. <laughs> um, totally. Yeah. D6 plus 8. Uh, uh, wait, no. D6 plus 5. Uh, nine points of force damage on the first attack. Okay. Second attack. Um, 14. That advantage will not hit. No, the, the other one was a natural one. <laughs> um, oh. another key point, another flurry of blows. Oh, well, you know, you can, you can spend that four, if you spend two key points on that 14, uh, no, sorry. Uh, if you spend one key point on that 14, you'll hit her. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's do that. To, to use increased aim or Apply, whatever. Yeah, the, the, the tosses rule. Just the, the, okay, cool. Flex a little bit and I hit slightly better. Uh, another nine points of force damage. And then key point, bonus action, flurry of blows. Okay, another nine, Jesus. Oh, okay. Uh, 17 plus, uh, yeah, 25 to hit. I mean, totally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is five. Ha! 10 points of force damage. This blue guy right. is rolling me Jesus. either ones or fives. Uh, and final attack. Uh, <laughs> how about an 18 to hit? 18 will hit. Oh, thank goodness. Nice. The other one was another natural one. <laughs> Uh, and that one is only eight points of force damage. Boom. You see, that one really gets her. She kind of stumbles back here. Well, um, we're coming to the end of this now. Uh, Before it goes down, I want to say thank you. You're clearly a warrior by training. So let's see. Are you a warrior by birth? Oh. And she's going to come in. She's going to do... Um, uh, yeah, she's gonna do two more reckless attacks. I'm at your mercy, girlfriend. Let's see what you got. Let's get it, girls. <laughs> Come on, show me that nat 20 for the brutal Let's critical. Let's go, ladies. Hey, hey. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, it's a dirty 20 to hit. I mean, that hits me. Seven bludgeoning damage. Okay. And what Ooh. are you at? 15. Just got one more hit. That's a 22 to hit. That, that hits me. Seven bludgeoning damage. Yep. Hurrah. Eight. 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 I have eight hit points left. <laughs> you have eight hit points. Huh. As we come down to the wire here, she reckless, so you will have advantage. Is there anything you want to say to her before we enter what is certainly going to be the last round of combat? <laughs> I want to say, um, I've never seen anybody fight like you, so thanks for the lesson. And uh, first attack at advantage. <laughs> ha! Uh, 17? 17 will hit. Okay, good. <laughs> Not rolling fantastic in these last few critical moments. Uh, eight points of force damage? She had seven hit points <gasps> left. Oh, okay. Oh, Could have used another telekinetic reprisal, but that's okay. This is fun. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> she, she had 100 hit points even. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> It, occur it occurs to you that perhaps if this was a fight where she was wielding her great axe, I think I'd just might be have been dead. a different fight. Yeah, I'm but, gonna, I'm uh, just gonna plop down into yeah. a little, like pretzel sitting and just kind of like, oh. boom! You see, she gets taken off her feet and goes back against the far wall. Whoa! <laughs> Stops for a second, uh, unsure if she's unconscious. She stirs and rises up. Oh, <laughs> She is, after all, the Enduring. Oh, that's right! Barbarian! Champion of Ill Mater. Uh, oh. She brushes movie style some blood off of her face. Oh, so cool. Oh my god. Oh, you're fucked, Kiana. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Ryder. It's been a pleasure to face you. Limps over and extends a big hand. Oh. Big handshake, Aww. yeah. If she throws me into a wall again, I won't even be mad. <laughs> That's our handshake. You, <laughs> you, <laughs> you willingly got grappled. <laughs> ah, I'll uh. take it. It's a warrior's bond. <laughs> Whew, baby. Remember, 
when you begin a fight, you should know why you have to end it. Yeah, I think that one's gonna stick with me for a while. <laughs> At least until some of these fractures heal. Oh boy. <laughs> Good luck, run away. Thanks. I hope you find what you're running for towards. Oh. Oh. oh boy. She walks off. Huge applause, by the way. Um, <laughs> Zephyrus comes out and gives a, you know, like, it's probably, uh, like, oh, let's give it up for our champion, Kiana, oh, who boy. has finished uh, as no more challengers <gasps> approach. Uh, she <gasps> remains the champion at the yeah. Great Gymnasium for the day. Um, uh, and, like, people come out, you're going to get, like, that you're going to get, like, the good sauna treatment. Like, you're going to get, heck like, yeah. oh, right the front side of the Huge. Uh, also, as a reward, I will go ahead and add this in, um, but you learn the uh, battle master maneuver menacing attack. Ooh. Is that like a is that uh, a is that like a feat or oh you'll add this in later. Uh, yeah. There is a Very there's cool. a feat that I will add that adds it in. Uh, but essentially when you attack, you can add a little damage to your attack and also force them to make a saving throw uh, or Whoa. become frightened. Yes. Oh. That's so you can do cool. That once yes. uh, and thus closes cool. the uh, story uh, the the um, the tale of Kiana uh, and also our first half of the episode. We Woo! were going to go to break. Uh, thank you for listening. And when we get back, we will see who we will you be and me, Wally. Uh, journeying next with <laughs> next the yeah. 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 for so, baby. Danny. Let's Lucky go. Cut. Let's see. Virla had tea with his bestie and bargained with the devil. Kiana had a spa day. <laughs> <laughs> How's this going to go? <laughs> How indeed. I can't wait to find out. After the break. Rolling with difficulty. Today's adventure is brought to you by World Anvil. World Anvil is a browser-based world-building tool designed to help you, the creator, write and world-build, all while keeping your work organized and in one place. World maps, calendars, customizable wikis, visual timelines, and more let you decide how best to build your world. And when you're ready to write, look no further than the built-in word processor. You can write your prose directly in World Anvil to keep every step of the process in one place. We all know TTRPGs are all about the power of friendship, and with real-time collaboration, you can work with your players or other creators on the same project. On top of all that jazz, World Anvil recently rolled out a new feature called Whiteboards. This visual canvas allows creators to freely draw out their ideas, adding diagrams, flowcharts, mood boards, and more. If you're a more visual creator, this feature is perfect for you. You can chart out character arcs, storyboard key scenes, draw schematics for your spell jammer, or whatever else you need to help make the story you see in your mind come to life. Interested? Of course you are. And it only gets better because for our listeners, World Anvil is offering a special discount. Just use code PLUG at checkout for 40% off a yearly membership. That's code PLUG, P-L-U-G, at checkout for 40% off a yearly membership. Check out the link in the show notes below. And thank you again to World Anvil for sponsoring today's adventure. Rolling with difficulty. And welcome back. Now that we return from break, it is time for me to ask Sophia, Wally, please roll a d20. Let's see who's <laughs> going next. Ooh, All right. Probably not me. Because <laughs> that's a four. Anything's possible. Oh, no, I'm next. That's a 17. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. Date uh, night. <laughs> The tail of Finbar. and Austin go on a dick. <laughs> oh, <ooh. laughs> we can't think of a better person to go on a date with right now. <laughs> uh, we see the beautiful, vibrant colors of the Feywild. Ooh. A forest that is mm. mid-afternoon, maybe approaching kind of late afternoon-ish. The vibrant purples of the sky and the trees, uh, lightning bugs that shine almost uh, impossibly bright, beginning to flip their way out of the forest as shadows from these trees are cast by a beginning to descend sun. Uh, we arrive, Finbar, Elise at your side. Uh, welcome back to your home. Welcome back to Hoonakil. Oh. As you enter, you see uh, there's huge excitement goes up. Um, uh, Owen, who is a uh, little furball, has grown quite a bit since you've last been here. He was the one who had the Displacer Beast kitten before. Uh, oh! Displacer Beast, uh, b- bigger. So is he, though. So it's kind of, uh, you know, so far they're kind of keeping neck and neck. He drops this uh, <laughs> cat uh, and uh, runs up, Fimba, Fimba, uh, and like goes, like, pick me up, pick me up. He's getting on the verge of, like, too big to pick up, but it's not quite, uh, it's not quite unreasonable for him to be asking yet. 
Uh, yeah, no, I, I kind of uh, grab him uh, and like, oh, oh man, I, I'm getting weaker. You're getting bigger. Uh, and You're I getting just weaker. Like... <laughs> You're getting weaker, definitely. Uh, all right, all right. Don't, don't, don't let that get to you, Owen. Calm down. Uh, you see, uh, he like laughs and uh, squirms too much, so you have to put him down. Balrin, uh, the one of the, the elders, the sort of guides of the village, comes up. Well. And this is a bride. Welcome back, Finbar. It's good to see you again, my friend. Uh, it goes in to give you a big hug. And uh, who do we have the pleasure of uh, entertaining tonight? Who is your friend uh, here? This is my friend, uh, Elise Baldwin. Uh, I think y'all might have met briefly a while back, but uh, this is a formal introduction. Uh, Elise uh, oh, Baldwin. Oh, yeah, you gotta forgive me, my friend, uh, Elise uh, my name is Balrun, and my memory is uh, not what it used to be. Uh, she goes, at least it's, it's nice to meet you, Balrun. Um, yes, I'm Vivar's uh, friend. <laughs> he gives it. He gives her a hug. She has no idea how to reciprocate. Um... <laughs> Shut up, Noir. <laughs> Noir from Color Commentary, the text. No, you don't get to know what it was. Uh, <laughs> I gotta you see, go uh, hot goss side chatter I know, right? Uh, there's all sorts of uh, people all come out, uh, and you hear people start to shout like, "Hey, Finbar's back, everybody! Let's get the kitchen going!" And uh, like huge excitement, lots of energy. Quick update on what's going on. Uh, Sersha and Balrin are uh, as uh, still, you know, leading things around here. We get a, an update on some of the uh, kids. What was the uh, the um, the name of that one kid who uh, was obsessed with fighting with Danny? Uh, you tell me. <laughs> yeah, what was his name? Hold on, I got it here. Dungeon uh, Master, answer your uh, own Killian. questions. <laughs> Killian. Uh, Killian is there. He's hype. <laughs> he was. <laughs> he's really just wants to. You can see he's very eager to be involved in whatever's going on. Um, and he's like asking. He comes up and asks Elise like a lot of questions, <laughs> like prying. Um, uh, Roshin is here. Uh, she comes out and she's excited to show you what she's working on. She is working on uh, a uh, organic construct, so it looks like a, a big ox, but it's completely grown. Um, but it's uh, clearly, from the symmetry and the, the concoction of it, uh, it seems to be. It's, it, it reminds you of like, it reminds you of like plug in the way that it's like mm -hmm. meant to sort of behave. So it, she's still working on the kinks, but she's excited to show you that. There's been there's been some growth and yet uh, a comforting familiarity to the surroundings. Uh, is there anything Finbar uh, would specifically like to do or uh, gather out for dinner so that uh, Elise can uh, partake? I, I would imagine like Finbar is still like dressed like an adventurer. Um, sure. And uh, it's been a long way since um, the city of Brass, and then he had to go pick up Elise, and then they had to find the the Fey Crossing. Um, so he's a little tired. Um, so he's kind of just like taking off his backpack, his armor, just getting down to. He finds his old clothes; they don't fit quite right. Either he's might have put on a little too much weight <laughs> uh, uh, since the last time he was here, um, and uh, he kind of pulls Elise away from the crowd, asking her way too many questions. Um, he's like, "Okay, hey, always like this." Every time I come home, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's a whole big deal. They they're doing every too much. time you come home, you're bringing a yeah. girl with you every time you come home. <gasps> <clears throat> no, <laughs> she smiles. She's like she's she she is ripping you. <laughs> uh, yeah, Finbar again. It's just flushed, um, a little tired. He's like, I I yeah yeah. Well, I'm. We got a little time before dinner. Just need you to relax. I'm gonna go talk to the elders real quick. Okay. Um, what should I do while you're talking to them? Uh, relax. You know how to do that? Like, there's, there's. But they're all you... out there waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> Finbar, Finbar. She pulls you in close. There is no peace. <laughs> there are only children. <laughs> Look. No sudden movements. You know, if you move slowly, like they, they can't see you. Okay, just that, that's what I do. Fantastic! <laughs> yeah. Just kidding, and, you're just gonna go. You're gonna and there's a lock on. <laughs> and and there's a lock on the door, so nobody gets in and out of here if, they, if you don't want them to. Um, 
But uh, dinner's in. He kind of looks outside, looks at the sun. Um, an hour or two. Uh, I'll meet you outside. I'm, I'll meet you at the the feast. You gonna leave me for two hours? <laughs> I'll be back as soon as I can. I gotta take care of some stuff. If you do this to me, I'll kill you. At least you you a grown ass woman. I you can handle this. Got games on your phone? I will entertain. I will be gracious. I will not overstep my my bounds, my reach within the kitchen. You will relax is what you'll do. You're a guest here, you're my guest. Cooking Just don't. Is how I relax. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna go over reach in the kitchen. Sorry. Uh, and she goes. <laughs> and there she goes. I. I uh, well, I tried. <laughs> you guys are such assholes. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, side chatter is going to be a boy, right How can she be this stressed about socializing <laughs> for the books at home? <laughs> She's allowed to be a complex. Um. Cool, yeah, you want to go seek out uh, Balrin and Sasha? Yes. Sersha? Uh, they are easily findable. They uh, are, you know, the village is small. Yeah. Uh, you come across them uh, just helping with um, uh, sort of weeding. The The thing about the Feywild is that uh, the wild is always trying to encroach. <laughs> so they're, yeah. they're like at the, at the edge weeding, trying to pull out um, what is essentially forest attempting to usurp them. I sort of... I kneel and I start to, to help them out. Um, oh no, like, you're, you're you're our guest today, Fimba. Please, uh, we could we couldn't ask you to uh, to uh, help here. With your, yeah, you see, uh, Tom stands up and claps his big hands, dust, you know, dirt and kind of father. Oh, come on, what what, uh, what what would you like to talk about, son? Well, I I got uh, news, um, and then I have a thing that you guys might be able to help me with. Um, I'm not entirely sure how to go about it. Is it about the girl? <laughs> yes, it's Shall about the girl. You know, the cast is not here, but <laughs> no, we're, we're 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 the little furbolg children. We're yeah. hearing this. <laughs> <laughs> We've all got our little furbolg sodas. <laughs> yeah. I want that fan out of my desk by Monday someone, too. Someone someone abbreviate that to fursona. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but you guys it's spelled Maybe differently. That's how you distinguish it. I R guys. The bulg is doing a heavy lifting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. Um, no is. All right. So yeah. So. Me and Elise are an item, you know, two peas in a pod. That's my girlfriend for now. Um, treat her extra special. <laughs> she don't really know how to relax, so like, and she's gonna get a little intense in the kitchen. Just go with it. Just, just go with it for her sake. Go get more um, intense than you. <laughs> fair enough. But. uh... I uh, say look, that as Paul Rudd. I Austin assumes the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Um, but uh, I, I think we're gonna be here for a little bit. Uh, things have cooled well, off sure with you're the guild. To stay as long as uh, as you like. Yeah, no, things have uh, cooled off with the guild. I'm not really doing that anymore. So that's what's going on with that. Oh, that's um, a shame. What uh, what happened there? Uh, it's, it's a whole adventure type thing. There was dragons. Oh, well you could tell us about over kidnapping. Dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got the whole story. Um, and uh, and then we're going through a little, a bit of a rough patch with the ship. Um, uh, everybody's going their separate ways for now. Uh, we'll, we'll be back. We got to kind of recuperate our minds. We got to figure out an angle uh, to get it back. Uh, but for now, I'm home. I'm relaxing. Uh, at least it's trying to. Uh, well, if you are staying for a bit, then you can get to uh, the weed. Uh, uh, There's actually a lot of it to do. We could actually just help there. Fair enough. And he kind of <laughs> um, whistles, and um, the pixies come out, um, and they all uh, start on the weeds. Uh, Finbar still is, is, is tiny, not. <laughs> tiny, tiny <chainsaws. laughs> <laughs> Um, and then the other thing that I need help with, he kind of ruffles the side sack and pulls out an egg. Oh. 
What's the value you got in there? Kind of a little bit of a parting gift um, from uh, when I left the guild. Um, they say they give it's a, a good parting gift. Yeah, they they say it's a pseudo dragon. I don't, I don't know too much about those, but I know they're from around here. That's true. Yeah, they're uh, naturally fey. I have a feeling now that it's home, it's gonna hatch real soon. Yeah, I'm gonna need help. I don't really know, need the dragon that's inside. I'll tell you that right now. You know, uh, now that I got, now that I can call uh, Coriander whenever I need her, um, whatever's inside this little egg uh, won't be of much help. Um, I need to find a way to transfer it to a little friend of mine. Hmm. That's odd. It's more uh, more magic than uh, I'm used to. What do you think? Uh, turns to Sersha. Well, if it's a case of uh, familiarizing yourself with a familiar, you could uh, try to seek out the hidden veil. Bowman goes, think that would work? She goes, I said people, many a person come out with a, a new uh, leash on that, so to speak, down there. So, uh, make makes sense. You can, if that is, that is if, uh, if uh, Finbar and uh, Miss Beast can find it. It's order, but uh, could work. You ever heard of the Hidden Veil? I mean, a lot has changed since the last time I went around to run around here. Uh, we took care of Agden again, which was which was nice. But uh, I didn't. Oh do yeah, much. he hasn't come back around since then. Don't worry. All right, good, good. Uh, but no, I haven't done much adventuring. So if you give me a hidden, I, I bet me and Elise can find it. Well, uh. Last me one had any lean on it, that'd be uh love. She should be back tomorrow morning, uh, from her her round. So uh, uh, talk to her then, and uh, she can point you in the right direction, hopefully. Uh, but for now, relax, like you said, and uh, let's get washed up for dinner. Dinner sounds nice. Elise is uh, in the kitchen, insisting. It's 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 a huge, passive aggressive debate of <laughs> highly. <laughs> Uh, pe- people of high caliber hospitality trying to insist their guest rest <laughs> and a high caliber perfectionist trying to insist uh, she step in on every step. Uh, <laughs> there is, it's very close to uh, a kitchen knives being drawn, honestly. Um, <laughs> it's like all, all smiles and stuff and the tension is so high. <laughs> but... Uh, Nonetheless, dinner is pre- prepared. Uh, is there a what dish do you think uh, would be put together from Feywild uh, hospitality for a returning uh, member and a uh, guest? Um, it it'll have to be. Uh, I hate to reuse dishes, but it'll have to be the Hunkill uh, mess plate. Um, so it's a hodgepodge of uh, anything and everything that they've uh, been saving up, you know, throwing together um, with some of the newer stuff uh, that probably love was bringing something um so yeah not, nothing too fancy it's it's home all right uh that, yeah that's awesome makes sense uh when you get visitors the the stuff they've been saving up and some of the new stuff they good stuff they just got all gets thrown together and uh it's always a celebration when someone new comes into town uh, or when front someone returns so uh dinner is had they ask about your adventures. Uh, I mean, do, do you keep things from them, or are you like no, no? They're, they're, about I tell them. Yeah, I tell them everything. They know. They know. I tell them stuff, about you know. Zotico, every plane that I go to. Um, <laughs> I tell them about like the crazy stuff Danny pulls, um, mm-hmm. the insanity, um, uh, Virla being very weird um, and getting <laughs> the like uh, lady or in general. <laughs> In general, um, but not also <laughs> lately, um, and um, giving him uh, the a uh, ring of wishes, um, and yeah, no, and about him leaving the guild, um, things happening with the, um, the ship, everything. There's no secrets um, uh, around uh, Honkill. Yeah, they're all. I mean, they're all hugely impressed. You know, your the values are very different. Right? So I don't want to apply a narrative of, like, you're the one who left home and went and did a big thing. Right? Uh, the value is very different here. They're very happy um, 
too. They are pretty much all extremely fulfilled in life. But also to them, it's very impressive uh, for you to go out and do this thing. Um, so they, they couldn't be more proud of you, uh, you know, to put it to put it plainly. And uh, there are, you know, they hang on your every word. And uh, Elise chimes in to correct you when you get details wrong. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, you know, with, with some of her own, te- she gets, you know, when, when it comes to the, the cooking challenge part, like, she comes in with a lot of, like, flourishing detail and excitement about stuff that you guys did and tried that worked or didn't work or barely worked and things like that. Um, so, you know, from, from that perspective, uh, that's, you know, that's how the dinner goes. The night comes... The sleeping is a communal situation where there are several, like, homes where everyone kind of sleeps in, you know, bunks, or there's there's some, like, privacy situations, but basically everyone sleeps in the same couple, like, houses, so special guest quarters are set aside for you guys. It, would you like to skip ahead to seeing uh, Love and getting directions the next day, or is there anything you want to do specifically uh, the night of? To be honest, Finbar's kind of tired. Um, first thing in the morning... Uh, meeting love would be yeah we could skip forward all right uh elise is happy to eat a delicious meal and happy to uh obtain privacy again to uh, not be uh, hounded uh and take an early bed after a long day's hike which is she not she's not really used to and a big meal so an early bed uh followed by an early morning the beautiful sunset a uh, sunrise uh, seems to have more shades of red than there are names for. Uh, the Feywild is, as always, exuberant in its love for life. Coming in, walking out of the Misty Forest in the morning, you see Love coming back, and she's got, like she's clearly been out for a while. There's like mud all over her. <laughs> she's been out for several days, so she comes back, and immediately, like someone getting home from work after a long day, it's just like shoes come off she's taken off like armor and taken off like bow and quiver like kind of just kind of tossing them to the side as soon as she gets within the the village of whom killed <laughs> yeah no um finbar's up early and unlike me up very early in the morning um <laughs> yes. to, to greet her uh and uh sort of helps her to just take all her stuff off or she probably brought in fresh kill um, and whatever oh. she... She actually doesn't have a, a, a hunt. She, oh, she... okay. Um, hey, Finba, I didn't realize you were going to be coming back so soon. Uh, yeah. Yeah, things came up. you back to our humble little, uh, bow. Uh, a little, uh, R&R. And, uh, when she wakes up, uh, my new girlfriend, Elise, is here. Oh, yeah, I met Elise in the past. Yeah, little one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember her. Good times. Uh, well, welcome back. Let me know if you want to be going for, uh, onto something. I, uh, I haven't taken anything down in the past couple of days doing a patrol, uh, checking out on some stuff. Little ways out. Making sure yeah. things are going smoothly, so to speak. Not too much uh, trouble out there, is there? <laughs> far from it, actually. I was, uh, checking in on, uh, your dog, Coriander. Oh, yeah, I found a way to, I can call her, or well, whenever I need her now. Um, so it, it's, it's been a little long since I've been hunted here, and I, I'm, I have a feeling she's getting restless, so uh, <laughs> next time. Yeah, man, of speaking, she uh, wait a few days for a corner. Uh, she should be having her litter any day now. I knew it, I knew she was having puppies. <laughs> <sighs> Poor little dude. Of course she's got Poor. puppies. Alright. The, uh, yeah. So Unkyun's gonna have more little, uh, blinkles and knows what to do with. So, look forward to that. I'm sure she'll be happy to get some time away from the pups once you, uh, start going. Yeah. Well, next time I see her, I'll, I'll give her a big hug. Uh, As but for should. now, uh, I think we might have a little adventure on my hands. Um, the elders were talking about this place called the Hidden Vale. You heard of it? Yeah, I know about Hidden Vale. What are you trying to do with that? Uh, I need... Apparently it's got something that can help me with uh, this. And once again, Finbar pulls out uh, the pseudo dragon egg. Damn, you get the best stuff where you are. Where did you get this from? Uh, from... Uh, 
have the guild, actually. I, I left recently, uh, and this was a bit of a pardon gift. Hell, I gotta take up chefing. <laughs> well, they can't lose another uh, hunter to the, to the guild right now. Uh, That's true. What would they do without me? I'm sure they'll find a way. But you're doing a good job here. The correct answer was, no, love, you're irreplaceable. Come on. <laughs> uh, keep your chin up. <sighs> Hidden Veil. I mean, it's possible. It's a tall order, though. Reason they call it hidden. Not for nothing. I know uh, about where it lies, but I uh, never found it myself. It's a bit of a journey, so to speak. Well, if you give me a heads up, I'm sure there's something I can do. Old Finbar, he stretches his legs out in a fair while again. Cool. I mean, ideally it's not more than a day's walk from here. She uh, pulls out a stick and uh, in the dirt she does a little, like, rudimentary drawing that you would understand with some slight uh, some like landmarks and stuff in the Feywild. wild things mm-hmm. are constantly changing but uh it's not as drastic as certain planes like limbo where it'd be basically it'd be impossible to to hold any geometry in your head gives you a uh, sort of a rough distance and some landmarks to look out for um tells you to pack about a day's journey and uh this is I hope you find whatever it is you're looking for. It's, uh, well, it's supposed to be a blessing to stumble upon it. So, if you do happen to, well, just count yourself lucky, I guess. Well, if the stars are willing, I'll find it. So it says. All right, good luck. I'm going to go to sleep. I haven't slept in 48 hours. Yeah, <laughs> go, go rest up. Huh. <laughs> she goes I gotta off. go get her. I gotta go get Elise. Alright. Elise Elise is coming out as she goes in, um, like kind of ducks underneath, like out of the doorway. Uh-huh. Uh, hair like all off to one side, bedhead. Yeah. She looked familiar. Have I met her before? Yeah, that's that's love. You y'all have met. Love? Adelaide. Oh Adelaide, right. Yeah, she's got my job right now, so I I, I get it. A lot of people around here, it's tough to keep track. How'd you sleep? Really well, actually. Thank you. Good. Good. That's good to hear. So, what are we doing today? Because I don't think that they'll let me back into the kitchen after last night, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. I think we're gonna, we're gonna have, stretch like, our legs a little bit. Um, uh, I got a tiny little adventure for us. Just, I know you don't like adventures, but I promise this one will be fun. Five minute adventure, in and out. <laughs> Just me and you, alright? <laughs> I like that part of it. It's gonna be a lot of hiking. About a day, day and a half. A day of hiking. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is very much worth it. I promise you'll get to see some real cool. I know you like magic. The magic out sure, here. Sure. Who doesn't like magic? All right. Well, magic the magic. Is great. I, the magic out here is like nothing else. All right. Okay. And I'm gonna pull out the egg. It's like I need you to hold on to this. Where we're going, uh, I'm gonna do something real special. Are we egging their house? <laughs> I like where your head is at, but no, we're not doing that. Do I have to carry it in my hands the whole way? No, just put it in like your, your backpack or something. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Uh, just keep it safe. Don't, uh, don't, she, she's don't trying to understand. You, you, you basically were like, "Yeah, we're going on a journey. Take this." And she was like, "Okay, why?" <laughs> the less she knows, the better. She's just gonna ask me a yeah, million questions. Yeah, she loves that. <laughs> and she's just gonna ask me a million questions. And Finbar does not know how to answer any of those questions. <sighs> Amazing. All right. Uh, fantastic. You guys saddle up. Um, you have to take like a bunch of her stuff because. She can't, she like doesn't have a good backpack for carrying this much gear. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I kind of get rid of really some of like it. We're not gonna we're not gonna need this. We're not gonna need this. Uh, okay. There's like right. yeah, there's like multiple pots and pans in there. Yeah, it's like no, we don't. Not all that shit. Just, all of her spices. Um, I have to go borrow one of the fur bulk's boots because the boots she bought 
brought are just like not good for hiking. <laughs> not good um, for hiking. No, 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 no. Your feet are going to hurt. Wearing, she's wearing standing all day in the kitchen shoes. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No. no. There's going to be rocks, but they're comfy, but they're not yeah. structurally supportive uh, uh, for this kind of thing. Anyway, yeah. So fantastic. You guys set out, and following the, uh, the trail, you guys pass beautiful waterfalls, with springs, uh, a great meadow where the flowers. Have you ever seen, you know, the flowers that close when they are like stimulated, when they are touched, they kind of close up. You guys enter a field where the flowers bloom as you walk past them. The complete opposite. So they're all closed up until you get within a couple feet, and then they bloom into these bright red so as you walk through the field just like these bright red flowers kind of like giving you uh, uh you know an, an escort through the field mm. uh it's beautiful and awesome until you get to where you roughly believe somewhere in this vicinity the veil so during sort of this first leg of the walk uh mm-hmm. of the the walk um finbar is like roughly guiding elise but he's kind of like giving her room to just like you know, go look at things and steering her away from some of the dangerous, you know, fairy trickster type things. Um, but you, you see a hut with big chicken legs off in the distance, and you're just like, like Ooh, this way. Look at no, that no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's a relatively slow pace. Not nothing too crazy until we get to uh, the checkpoint. Yeah, and for her, uh, for what it's worth, for her, it's she does come really into. Uh, she's she gets very invested into the journey it's refreshing Aww. and there's definitely some aspect of the chef that's curious about if certain flowers are edible and things like that like what sort of wild edibles there might be around but for the <laughs> most part she's just kind of absorbing and loving it so you arrive step through out of bright sunny field into where there are near we're getting near they're not as big as redwoods but that sort of vibe of the huge you know pillows and cradles on the ground lots of pine needles about and these big trees kind of obscuring any of the light uh this is where the map ends and intuition begins all right elise this is kind of a bit of the tough part i I need you to stick a little close All right. Should we get like a rope tied between us, or like, am I gonna fall off something? Uh, no. Um, you just gotta hold my hand. Um, and he kind of holds it out. Aww. Well, if that's all it is, I suppose I can make the sacrifice. Um, kind of grips it tightly, and um, do I have to make some sort of check? What would you like to do? It's called the Hidden Veil and he knows that it only reveals itself to people who are worthy. Ooh. Uh, then oh, a so simple... Yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> trip's over. Uh, time to go home. Yeah. Um, no, I will uh, simple survival check. Uh, get a heading. Alright. All right. Survival check. Go ahead. Ooh. Uh, that is a 14. A veil is a valley. So, you're looking for, in uh, survival-wise, you begin looking to go downhill following sources of water. And you do that. A 14 certainly locates you the nearest running water, and you follow it for a ways. Kind of plateaus out, but the forest doesn't seem to let, like, lighten up at all. Hmm. The geometry of the Feywild is very close to that of the material plane. It, it strongly mirrors it, but it has its own positive energy that means that things don't always necessarily align with what physically they always should in the material plane. Okay. Uh, so after... Hmm. You guys kind of stop and take a little snack as you consider what to do next. What time of day is it? Uh, Let's see, you left... At basically dawn, mm-hmm. and it was most of. But when I say a day, I don't mean twenty four hours. I mean an eight hour walk. So you know, uh, so you built six, so four hours of noon. So it's. Uh, I would say that now you're looking at like three o'clock ish in the afternoon. Okay, I really don't want to spend all day out here. We hopefully we can find the veil before the sun goes down. So we. So what is this veil? She's, like, unwrapping some treats that they uh, gave you guys. <laughs> what is this veil exactly we're looking for? So, 
because if it's more beautiful than the places you've already seen, I, then you're really not a showgirl a good time. Oh. I'm glad you're lightening up. Uh, I'm light. I'm always light. I keep it light. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Oh, <laughs> she's grinding her teeth. <laughs> <laughs> um, so chill. I kind of put my hand on her shoulders, slide gotcha. it down her arms, <laughs> give her a giant hug, like. Who said it wasn't chill? I'll kill them. I'm hip. I'm hip with the kids. Uh, so there's Vale. Uh, I need a little magic in order to get uh, the pseudo dragon in that egg. Uh, unbound from me. Because I, I don't really need it. I got enough tools in my in my repertoire uh, to right, deal with. Off. Hey, hey. I'll let she you do your... I let you do your thing in the kitchen. Let me do my thing in the Feywilds. Um, it's hard to argue with that. But uh, essentially, when this egg hatches, the pseudo dragon will be bound to me. And uh, I don't know if you remember Kiana, but uh, if anybody's sure, more like a, if Aww. anybody's more like a dragon, that girl is. And. <laughs> I, I know, you, you know the feeling of needing a friend. I mean, she's got the crew, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, I have the guild, and I've got you. But uh, outside of all that, Kiana needs more do to herself uh, than just adventuring. You know, she has to just be a home person. Um, and uh, we'll start with just a little friend for now. Uh, we'll get her back, some of her old friends back uh, from uh, the... Her monk place, I forget what it's called. Uh, hopefully Ioni's out there and she, she's willing to be a friend. Uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. One thing at a time. We find yeah, this you sort veil. Of lost me. <laughs> we find this veil. You know, we break the enchantment binding me to this egg. We give it to Kiana. And uh, we go from there. Should have guessed even your rest and relaxation is about helping someone else. Alright, so... What's the plan? How far away are we from it? That's the thing. I have no idea where it could be. <laughs> oh, she's gonna take. You that don't well. know. I only know up to this point. It's called the Hidden Veil vale for a reason. The Feywild, great with names. Okay. Um. So, if. We don't know where it is, and there's no landmarks to follow. What should we do about finding it? Why don't we ask the trees? <laughs> sure, let's ask the trees. Why not? One of the trees ever let us wrong. Um, it's... Trees are your friends out here. And uh, and if not the trees, the critters and them might help. Um, so I'm going to try two things. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to cast... I will activate the starry form. Okay. Um, and I will take the form of the dragon. I don't have my shield on me. It's just light adventuring gear, nothing too crazy. Uh, but it sort of manifests all, um, sort of like scales on my shoulders. I will go up to... The egg rumbles just a little bit. The nearest tree, and... Really, and um, actually, my, my passive perception is, is high enough. Um, and I will sort of gently ask, um, mm -hmm. would you know where the Hidden Vale is? Now, I know Fearbowl can speak to trees. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think being a Fearbowl gives you any special understanding of the uh, trees. Not particularly, I don't think so. Okay. To the trees. So go ahead and roll me an insight check. Insight. Okay, cool. I have um, a minimum of seventeen on this right now. Nice. Come on. Uh, Come on. I rolled a three on the dice, uh, mm. so, so I'll take the seventeen. Seventeen. You touch the tree, and there's a brief little breeze. But it doesn't lead you in a particular... There's, you know, a rustle to the leaves, almost, and a creak in the branches. But it's not leading you in any particular direction. In fact, it kind of seems like 
one of those little, I'm sure there's a word for it, one of those little like dust devil, like a, when you, you ever see leaves in the fall get picked up by a little cert cyclone yeah. thing that just kind of spins around in place for a little bit. With a 17, there's just, uh, it's a good thing you have a dragon, uh, <laughs> just kind of a hint of that you get from the trees, as if trying to tell you, they're not pointing you in a direction. Frustrating. Interesting. Um, Finbar kind of steps back from the tree. Alright. I don't think we're supposed to be going anywhere. It feels like walking isn't the answer. Okay. Well, at least, good news. It doesn't look like we're hiking any further than we are. Oh, God. Can I take my shoes off? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll sit down. We'll sit down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. So for wa- walking, does that mean we're like on it, or will it come to us? Uh, I don't know. Um, and I guess uh, my passive perception is pretty high, so I, I guess I would have noticed um, that when I took the shape of the starry form, um, the the dragon, um, that the egg cracked. Mm-hmm. It says. Well, it didn't quite crack. It just kind of gave a kick. A kick. Yeah, oh, there's no fissure in the in the shell, but. <laughs> but uh, let, let me let me get a look at that egg. Um, oh, we're losing our minds. <laughs> what? <laughs> go ahead and make an insight check as you look at the egg. Okay, there we go. Uh, nope, that's. That's just a regular seven. Um, so <laughs> seventeen again. <laughs> seventeen again. Uh, honestly, it's still good though. Here, in your home, summoning the stars, there's a clarity that overtakes you, and you look at the egg, and you think about the seventeen insight. You think about the journey it took you to get there, right? All the things you did that got you to the point of getting this egg, whether you know being whisked away from the Feywild in that storm, uh, being found by Cardamon, uh, you know, becoming close enough with Elise that you decided to both go to the Academy, uh, graduating from the Guild, all these steps, the Prospero, all these steps along the way. You think about the journey it took you to get there. And you also think about this connection to you, innately, to this thing that is bound to you as, fam- you know, vaguely about familiars. This thing that is bound to you as a familiar vaguely is. Um, to your your soul, you know, it's it's a, it's a part of y- your life. Not not a, it's more than a pet, you know. Mm-hmm. That's what lets people resummon that. It's it's bound to them innately. And the idea that perhaps the reason the hidden veil is hard to find is because journeying to it is not a physical approach; it's an emotional one. Clicks to you here in the Feywild. The journey, uh, uh, distance must be cra- traveled emotionally. It's not enough to just walk there. You yourself have to reach out and, you know, spiritually make a change. Ch- the same way you could change your location by walking, you must emotionally make a change. Change where you are, basically. Pinbar kind of size with the egg in his hand. And he sits down. He's like, all right, Elise. That's it for a little bit. That's just it. Let's just wait here a while. See what happens. I think... Moving forward. There's a lot of things... One of... One of let me start over. One of the things that I really wanted to do uh, in terms of leaving the guild was cleaning up my priorities. You know, um, placing you on top, the adventures on the sea, Paraspera, the whole crew. That, that That's all I wanted. Um, and you, leaving you, you know, was something I, I vowed to never do again. But, even then, you know, um, I'm still technically doing that, you know, coming and going 
out on the sea. And I never really asked you how you were feeling about the whole thing. And I know I'm not great at it, the whole communication bit, but I'd like to get better. I need you to tell me how I could do better for the both of us. She uh, puts down the little candy biscuit thing that she was eating. Huh. Don't be too hard on yourself. You're dealing with a stubborn patient here. I mean, though I'm not the most forthcoming. And I know why after everything happened with Carnamon, and I know that I shouldn't keep letting that stop me and I know that I would be better if I did I know how and yet <laughs> uh, <laughs> know it all I am I just can't <laughs> do it <sighs> I know all the things that I could do to just make myself feel better um, and I can't do them and that sucks um, so don't feel bad for you know trying to reach out when I push away. I know it would be good for me. And I thank you for being patient about it. How I feel about you doing all this? I'm glad. I would hate for someone to try and impose a relationship where I had to give up something I deeply cared about so that our relationship could be more like what other people's relationships look like. I would hate that. And I would never do that to you either. I know that you're gonna come back well as you can. And uh, in the meantime, you're gonna do the thing that you seem to love doing. Uh, and I'm gonna keep doing the stuff I love. And when those two halves of the Venn diagram fully align, that'll be awesome. And if they drift apart, then it won't be a failure. It will have been a temporarily successful relationship. See, I think about these things. I'm good at communication. <laughs> well, we still got a couple days here. You know, there's no adventuring going on. Um, I'm not entirely sure how we're going to get this egg to crack. Um, but just taking time to be here with you um, as long as it takes yeah. you see it's all I ever wanted the trickle in the stream that you guys are sitting next to hurries itself just a little bit broadens a little bit like you've gone downstream without moving downstream <laughs> you you've sensed an emotion emotional breakthrough has physically brought you closer to your destination but you just prompted one from Elise. And okay. it has to be met halfway. It's your turn, buddy. <laughs> How does Finbar feel? He cares a lot about where about other people's feelings, but how does he feel? I feel like I'm still a little bit divided. I'm not all the way to where I should be. And what does he tell Elise? I feel like my adventuring days are coming to an end. To be honest with you. I'm going to help them get their shit back. And when I'm done, I'm all yours. She smiles. She says, I never want you to be all mine, but I'll be happy when you're ready. And, you know, I love singing. But it doesn't have to be there. You know, I'm, there's there's lots of places that need chefs. You know? And uh, I'm sure Hero will write me a glowing recommendation. So when you're ready to come out of, you know, your adventuring for your nomad phase, uh, we can figure out... Am I being too forward with it? I don't want to be all like, ah, oh, let's pick out drapes. But, you know, it kind of felt like that's where we were going, so... Elise, wherever you go, I'll go. You're home to me. Couldn't have written anything better myself. 
the stream is now loud enough that you turn to look at this Bowling Brook. And as you do, you see there is underneath a tree arched roots leading down cool steps, smooth worn stairs underground. Finbar uh, kind of doesn't notice for a little bit. His eyes are like locked on Elise. Um, uh, and it sort of the, the emotion dies down for a little bit. And he, he notices it in his periphery. He's like, okay. Yeah. Was that always I think, there? I think this is it. Was that always there? No, no, I think we found it. Come on. And Fuck, kinda, this place is annoying. He kinda all right, just, hold on, I gotta put my shoes back on. No, no, no it's alright, it's alright. He hurriedly just, like, scoops her up, grabs her boots, puts it in her lap. What? <laughs> starts moving towards the veil. <laughs> alright. <laughs> uh, fantastic. You guys descend down steps that seem to, uh, a little cavern that seems to expand to fit both of you at the same time. The journey takes a couple minutes as you head down cool steps, little dripping water from roots hanging overhead. You emerge into a space lit by a small beam of sunlight coming through a hole under some roots in this kind of like small cavernous scene. It's got a high ceiling, but it's not exceptionally huge, uh, mm-hmm. but it happens to hit this one spot on the water where there are some uh, wet rocks and it, the light unnaturally diffuses off as if you're in uh you're not seeing the mummy where they turn the mirrors and all the lights come in yeah. and makes a whole light. it's kind of <laughs> like that's going on in here the whole place is sunlit even though it's underground um and there is a pond that the water that was trickling down the the, the stairs that mm-hmm. you walked is flowing into uh it has beautiful lily pads the sound of insects and you know frogs down here Congratulations, you've reached the Hidden Vale. You hear a slight giggle come from the water. <laughs> it's been so long since I've had a visitor. Hello. Finbar kind of looks around places the least down. Uh, like, say, Howdy. How's it going? I'm Vale. What's your name? Oh. Hi, Vale. I'm Finbar. This is my girlfriend, Elise. <laughs> you two are so cute together. Come here, come here. Uh, kind of. Finbar hurriedly helps at least tie on the other boot. <laughs> you guys <laughs> approach the water's edge. As you look down, you see floating under the water, uh, there appears to be a pale green woman who's just uh, like sitting under, lying back under the water and uh, slowly paddling her arms. Uh, she's an nymph. And she says, What's your names? Uh, my name is uh, Finbar, and this is my girlfriend, Elise. Don't, don't Hi, strange lady in a pond. <laughs> oh, so nice Finbar's to too you. nice. Finbar's too nice. I gotta remember this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so nice to meet you. What brings you to my veil? Um, it's like, Oh, I. Mm, okay, I see what's going on here. Um, she sits up out of the water now and comes to the edge, puts her elbows down, the hands on her hand, the head on her hands. I think there's something you might be able to help me with. Well, I'm always happy to help. Come, come, don't be shy. Can Turn I roll a quick insight check? <laughs> yeah, on go this for lady? it. Everyone's playing really fast and loose with deals with Fey and devils. This yeah, no, I, I, I got caught up. <laughs> There was nothing fast and loose about my thing. <laughs> um, not great. Um, it's a nine. Uh, isn't it a minimum seventeen with your? Well, the story form only lasts for a minute, so I'd have to. Oh, it a again. minute? Yeah, then a minute yeah. would be gone. Sorry. Yeah. So what'd you roll? Nine. Oh no, it lasts for ten minutes. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I'd say ten minutes is good. Okay, seventeen then. Seventeen. Oh um, my god. No, she seems she seems elusive, but. Ernest, uh, Fae who are looking to take things from people often do not conceal themselves in a way that you have to undergo emotional growth in order to find them, right? They want to be. Fair enough. 
fair enough. <laughs> um, they want to be found so they can trick you. They, yeah. They, they don't want emotionally intelligent people to, to deal with, you know? Sort of the whole um, uh, uh, Nigerian prince scam situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Finbar kind of brings out the egg. He says, uh, this little buddy of mine um, is bound to hatch soon. Um, and he's kind of tied to me right now. But I, I kind of want to redo some wires as Danny would do a friend of mine would do um and uh bond it to another if that's at all possible possible more than that certainly we could do it right here I don't know what a wire is but uh may I see it uh yeah you can gently pass it over to her thank you Oh. <laughs> oh god no just like eats it just eats it great protein oh, that would have been so good make an omelet full circle uh, red's oh, tail no oh, never mind oh okay no. uh, <laughs> shakes it to listen like the present oh, oh no <laughs> anyway she takes it um he goes Whew. it's very close to hatching now well it's rather simple it's bound to you uh, yeah, yeah. Easy enough. A companion such as this, I've gifted many, is always bound to the soul. So all you have to do is share your soul with someone. She's like picking up and looking at it like it's, a, you know, a, a priceless artifact right now as she kind of like absentmindedly goes on. And then it will be bound to them instead. Okay. That's all it takes. Oh. Um, and, uh, water from the spring. I forget that one. Um, okay, we can start too. there. You both have to drink from the same cup. Uh, alright. And that, Fim- that'll do it. Is it. Finbar looks around for a quick second. I don't think there's gonna be any cups here. Um, and then, uh, he's like, uh, okay, this is, my hand's gonna be enough. Is, is that alright? Yeah, as long as you both can drink from them. My hands are big enough. Um, Finbar kind of scoops um, some water, uh, takes like drinks half of it, and then uh, he gives the other half to Elise. Um, yes. right. I'm just gonna close my eyes and pretend you've lost your hands. <laughs> <laughs> drinks from it. You see, I believe that Kundrasi gave you. There was a faint silver, kind of bit your beard yes when he uh, you see just a faint little silver curl by the ear on elise oh and she does it you've already shared your soul that's how you got here um and sort of faith trust and pixie dust uh you did the first two you just really needed this last uh important <laughs> ingredient <laughs> to really seal the, the whole flight situation uh and with that you transfer the soon to hatch pseudo dragon familiar to uh Elise. <laughs> and you see uh she go uh Vale goes Very good, very good. So what are you gonna do about the other one? Uh what? Oh it's twins in here. Did you not know? <gasps> <laughs> oh, no fucking way, Austin. <laughs> Everyone wins. <laughs> <laughs> we don't play D&D to lose. I mean, sometimes you gotta lose, but when it comes to when it comes to little guys, everyone's a winner, man. So All right, so Finn Barry, you gotta share your DM. You style. gotta share your soul with Kiana, and you gotta drink from the same water. The little water. guys outnumber the player characters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, as, I mean, as it should be. That's been the case oh. since the Pixies. Oh, I think of the Pixies as one unit, though. Yeah, yeah. You know? Oh, sure, yeah. sure, sure. Um, uh, Finn Bar kind of is like, oh. She's not around here for me to. Oh god. Well, you can take some of my water if you wish. You just need a flask. Thank you. <laughs> yes. But that's not the first time. Oh, funny. Keanu over here just flash cut fully in the sauna. I'm like, oh, that's good on the old broken ribs. <laughs> and Finbar <you> <laughs> kind of grabs some water. like, okay. That's for Kiana. Um, it's, that's, that's not going to hatch like tomorrow, is it? Because it, it's going to take a little bit for me to. Can you like make sure that shit don't hatch like tomorrow? <laughs> It'll hatch when it's ready. What am I, God of Dragons? I, just, <laughs> I, I don't know. Strange lady in the pool of water. Just trying to make sure I get all the rules right. 
watery tart throwing you a sword. <laughs> <laughs> Says, well, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you is appropriate. Uh, you want you want a little snack? We bought we bought oh, snack. Nice. If you want, okay. Mostly, I'm fed by the nourishment of the growth of the pond. So, no, that's not. Yeah, I've actually. That's not enough. Eaten you, anything in, in you gotta, years? That's that's a problem. Like, and Kimbar <laughs> looks through his his backpack and he's like, okay, what, what, "What do I got?" And, like, and he pulls out, uh, I guess, uh, scraps um, from the mess plate um, that he Ooh. had saved up. And he's like, "He's like, yeah, eat this. This, this. this is some good food. There's none you got around here. All right." A mortal delicacy. I will save every bite. And I, she takes it, puts some in her mouth. If it's not being too forward, I just want to say I understand what you're going through. I went through the same thing when I married my husband. He's a he's a wind nymph, um, and you know you have to find balance between your child who relies on you, and then you know your new partner who you're trying to give yourself. Well, and she motions towards uh, yeah. Elisa. She's talking about partner. Uh, you know, you're trying to you're trying to Fimba. you know have someone. Fimba's, Fimba's like, who, sh- sh- not, you share not your not life there. with, but but yet. someone it's, still it's, relies it's on gonna... you. It's hard. To give up, one step <laughs> she's out just of time. chewing and talking. Just, thank you, thank you. And he kind of just like motions, oh. like up and out of the room. It's like, uh, thank you for the water and the egg and all that. It's like, you enjoy that. Go, goodbye. <laughs> okay, oh, okay, good luck with the dragons. Uh, emerge victorious. Would you like to camp overnight or hike back to Windkill tonight? Through the night? Probably camp. Probably camp? Fantastic. Find, find a nice, safe spot. You know, make sure it's wet and comfortable for Elise. It, it takes a while because she's got specific accommodations and whatnot. It's um, wet? <laughs> she's saying make sure it's, it's wet. It's not wet. Make sure it's oh, not, not wet. wet. Uh, yes, make sure it's sorry. nice and damp, you know? You don't want to sleep nice when you're sleeping. Just a yeah. lot of damp pine needles. Uh, can I roll to make a bomb-ass tent? <laughs> uh, please oh, roll hell. survival to make a bomb-ass tent. Okay, come on. Give this to me. Uh, okay, not bad. Um, 16. 16. Are you setting it up manually? Uh, like, or are you, like, calling upon the forest to grow for you? Uh, hell, the forest wants to help. The forest can help. Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> so you set up some things you already have and call upon with your druidic ways to influence some of the growth. The plants here are eager and willing to grow, uh, and will do so happily when given prompt. You set up a nice little tent. She kind of looks out. She says, you know, I think I'd like to take up painting. <gasps> I, I mean, not with... give up cooking, obviously. Oh. <laughs> I, I love cooking. I never give it up. But, I don't know, there's just... Cooking was a thing that you and Cardamon and I did. It's my way to be close to him. But it also kind of feels like I'm just tied there, as long as it's the only way I can. I don't know. Maybe painting could be a thing for me. You... You do that. I look forward to your paintings. And, hey, you never know. Nature has a weird way of coming around for, full circle. For all you know, that whatever's in that egg, that could just be Cardamon reincarnated. <laughs> Alright, that's a bombshell to drop at the end there. Cool. <laughs> Uh, Hope you get the right one, then. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Jesus Christ. For all we know. <laughs> that that one's Carnamon, but uh, this other one, uh, some dude named Phil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Died sorry. Around the same sorry. Time. Come on, just kind of like, look at the draw. What can you do? Uh, as we come to the end uh, for the Finbar, uh, we'll montage it. You guys make your way back. Uh, several days, Elise relaxes and begins to... Uh, you, you find her... She doesn't start like painting right away, but you find her staring a lot at like kind of picturesque scenes and almost trying to commit them to memory. Coriander returns, many pups in tow. Aww, there's so many weird little And guys. <laughs> uh, excited to see you as a dog can only be upon being reunited with its master. Uh, a, a blink wolf, basically. So it's got weird, sharp fey features, but also it's shaggy like a wolf. <laughs> and old girl. Uh, the egg does hatch and will need to be transferred to Kiana upon seeing her next. Uh, what do the 
twin pseudo dragons look like, Finn? Okay, um, so one is black, peppered with white spots, white spots that um, concentrate up to its head, which is completely white. Um, its oh. eyes are pure gold. Um, the other is purplish gray. Um, its eyes are pitch black with white irises. It has the storm rune Uvar on its forehead. Um, Cardamon also had the um, storm rune as a tattoo on his body. Ah! Um, so it obviously the gray one goes to Elise and then the um, sort of peppered one with golden eyes will go to Kiana. Fantastic. This is like the Monkeyatsu is Momo theory. <laughs> oh, yeah. <Aww. laughs> All right. And another two things reference. The first is that we're going to roll to see how much Elise remembers upon leaving the Feywild. Oh, yeah. And the other Ooh. thing is I need you to please roll me 3d6, Finbar. Finbar, you are, since you are born in Fairy, is immune to the effects of leaving it and forgetting. Mm. Uh, a reminder, so Elise has a plus nothing to the saving throw. Okay. Uh, a reminder that uh, below a five is forgets. Uh, five to uh, nine is remembers things vaguely, and ten or above is remembers things pretty accurately. So, here we go. No idea what forgetting going to the Feywild would be like. That would be crazy. I mean, it's never happened in the history of things happening ever. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Let's Can she this. actually... Oh, no, she can't inspire herself. <laughs> cool. If I forgot it, I, think, I feel like... I she could have inspired on some of the silly Austin checks if forget. Um... <laughs> So you forget the characters are characters uh, sheets. Uh, so she did roll a six. So Ooh, some remembers. of her time okay. is going to frustrate and be spotty, but she does remember pretty strongly the emotional arc that was undertaken. Uh. Uh, you think perhaps it's a good thing that she relieved some of the stress of that first day, maybe getting left behind. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, she only forgets the the little furbolgs being like, she hey, only... can you do any fun tricks? <laughs> uh, and then yeah, I need a three d six from you, Wally. Uh, I rolled a sixteen. Ooh. Jesus Christ! That's I hope that's really good. good. <laughs> yeah, definitely don't want high. Uh, you definitely don't want high. Oh, that's not okay. Good. So it's not it's not terrible. Days become weeks, so oh! your days there end up being about three weeks. Um, so that's about how long uh, the, the um, entire sabbatical lasts for people. Wow. Sure. Okay. It's like one week of all of us doing our shit and two weeks of like, where the <laughs> fuck like, is this bar? Finn bar. <laughs> yeah. I'm just hanging okay. out on the docked Paraspera, staring yeah. at that weird murder robot. Like, this is probably fine. <laughs> all right. Anyway, thus ends the jur- the, uh, the, uh, Finbar's journey. Virla went to law school. <laughs> Kiana went to the spa. Finbar went to marriage counseling. <laughs> that only leaves Danny. <laughs> uh, correction. Indeed. Virla didn't go to law school. Virla schooled the law. Yeah! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and with that, there's only one left. Let us turn to the tale of Danny. Yes. Welcome to the Danny. jungle starts playing in the background. We like smash cut <laughs> in the city of brass. <laughs> Goodbye, Feywild. Hello, Danny. <laughs> We're actually going to... I'm going to throw a little curveball oh at you. Here we go. <gasps> <laughs> we begin not with you in the heap after the ship has uh, been mm-hmm. sort of mm-hmm. sanctioned <gasps> by oh Otto. Gosh, Instead, we doing. begin flashback yes! many years ago. A breath, straight breath. A preteen <gasps> trio yes. sits in the heap, oh, uh, freshly after all being harvested by Otto. It's been under a year that you've been here. Uh, we see uh, Danny, flanked by Roy and Egan, uh, all hanging out, uh, examining and uh, basically trying to reverse engineer. Um, a piece of Arcana tech that is basically like a minor Im- a minor illusion emitter kind of thing. Uh, it makes like a small little, you know, image. Uh-huh. Um, but instead of being uh, called upon from the weave with, you know, spell, it's called upon from the weave through this piece of technology. You guys are all kind of sitting around. Uh, Roy's like, oh, let me take a shot. I bet I can do it. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, my like you always hog it, daddy. 
I was just, I know what I'm doing. It's fine. <laughs> Danny's been smoking <laughs> still? I thought it was a pretty t- He just sounds like this. They've yes. all been smoking. Roy's voice has changed. <laughs> oh, man. E- e- Egan's kind of like, when you figure it out, will you, uh, will you show me how to do it? Have you not been watching this whole time? I, like, I couldn't have laid it out any clearer. No, sorry, I was thinking about something else. What, what were you thinking about? <laughs> it's like, sort of, I mean, I don't, like, I've kind of been writing a book, but it's not really like writing, <laughs> like, you know, it's in my head. i just been, <laughs> it goes on to describe that thing where you're like, oh yeah, I've totally written a book. I mean, I haven't put anything down, but like, I have like a whole story in my head. <laughs> I'm devastated. I was this kid. <laughs> Starts, I, Danny just yes, stares I mean, at him blankly, not, <laughs> still tinkering with the not to say too much. Me too. Danny's staring at him. Uh, Roy is like, all right, like seriously, it's my turn now. And kid tries to grab it from hey. Danny. <laughs> Wrestle a little bit. Like, ah, give it a uh, You hear, as you're wrestling, you hear um, a siren begin to go off in the distance uh, for the city of Brass, which uh, you've grown up in the city of Brass. You know uh, is a sign of that the there is a um, an ash storm coming in, which is essentially what happened. Uh, what happens is a a huge basically hurricane from the the plane of air blows into the plane of fire on accident and like sweeps up a bunch of shit and it's extremely nasty outside for a while. Uh, this is one of those sirens that's like basically it basically tells it's it's basically like a like a house lockdown siren that's like everyone needs to be out uh, inside for the next like thirty minutes to an hour mm. because things are gonna be get bad outside. Danny lives here, so you know it's really less for people's safety than it is for like making sure people don't get get down to shit, um, get up to shit. <laughs> <laughs> they're getting down on the streets, man. Yeah, uh, they don't get up no. to shit. Um, you see, as that happens, Egan like gets up. He goes. He's like, "Oh man, I wonder if they're gonna do another one of the races out there." Oh, I bet they are. <laughs> shit. We should go look. Come on. I think. I swear I heard one. Do you think it's nearby? Should we go? I don't know. Might as well check it out, right? Yeah, I mean, like, what do we have to lose? <laughs> <laughs> like, Scoob. <laughs> oh, like, Scoob. <laughs> like, would you race in the city of Brass for a Scooby snack? Oh my god, I love it so much. <laughs> you hear, uh, from behind you, Now, I don't suppose any of you are thinking about leaving, are you? You turn, you see a slightly younger, slightly, um, (laughs) hasn't quite put on as much of the weight as he currently has, uh, but still same jacket, just as well upkept, same everything else about him, just a couple years younger. You see Otto steps in. Danny, straight. Going somewhere. Straight faced, like, the best poker face you can manage is like, no. (laughs) Stepping halfway right. out. <laughs> and I suppose that's the, uh, your studies here are coming along well. Nudges the device with his foot. I, it works now. It didn't before. Ah, very good. Well, then I suppose we could, uh, end early for the day. All sit around and talk about what, uh, what you learned from it. Egan, <laughs> come away from the window there. <laughs> Egan gets down and says, Oh, man, I just want to go see him race. Otto says... The race is for thrill seekers and gamblers, <laughs> neither of which the heat is home to. Come, let's talk about what you've learned. I'll show you how to make one of these so that it breaks really quickly after you've sold it, so they have to come back and pay for new repairs. Oh, this fucking guy. <laughs> you just shove a piece of coal in the pipe of one of the fixtures that does that anyway. You know, it's not a learning thing, it's just a trick. Anyone can do it. It's not always for you, Danny. Sits down. <laughs> Cut to present, Danny. <laughs> we find you in a makeshift workshop, one that used to belong to you, uh, but you moved, basically transferred to the Paraspora, which is no longer open to you. Uh, instead, we find this place. You've kind of moved things out to work here as you install the Anarch Sphere into the Devil's Ride. Yes. <laughs> I'd like you to go ahead, as the final touches are made, I'd like you to please go yes. ahead and make me... A tinker's tool check. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Say no more. So I'm basically that just for the audience's sake as I add a plus 10 to tools checks. Uh, roll 15, so 25. <laughs> oh my god. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, Amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick the stats for the bike in yes. the chat. Yes, 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 yes. So that's a yes, link yes. that you can yes. follow. We don't even need the Parasper anymore, Otto. <laughs> We've outgrown you. <laughs> It carries one person, four people on one bike. So you well, can look that over. Small. It's a, yeah, we can it's, a pretty it. <laughs> it's a pretty standard Devil's Ride. If anyone at home wants to look up the stats for, uh, it's from Descent into Avernus. Uh, it's the motorcycle hell vehicle. Oh yeah. And as you replace and finally kick in, you see you kind of replace. There's it's uh, what do people call those motorcycles? Aren't hogs? It's the one that you kind of like lean forward on, right? I think those are just motorcycles. Like lean back. I thought there was like a word the high for it. Well, there's 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 ones where you have your arms. And there's like there's the very speedy like James Bond ones that you kind of sit you know crouched uh, on leaning forward. Anyway, it's, crowd, it's more buddy. like that. It's very bulky, black iron. Uh, but it's that's the kind of aesthetic to it where you're kind of like look down where your head would like is kind of hovering above. So in between the two handles, essentially is where you've taken out the entire power source, the furnace that used to burn souls you have removed and jury rigged efficiently, but maybe not the most aesthetically pleasing. You've jury rigged the Anarch sphere into here. Uh, you said you rolled a 25. Yes. <laughs> Uh, amazing. Uh, so go ahead. So this is uh, a normal um, Devil's Ride. Mm -hmm. As you connect everything to it, you hear uh, the thing purrs to life. Uh, <gasps> there is no infernal scream, which is nice because that's how it used to run. <laughs> is it's mm -hmm. the sound of uh, someone's uh, soul burning eternally would would uh, emit from it like the engine. Instead, it, it purrs to life very smoothly, but the orb kind of rattles and in it you see like a storm cloud like lightning arc out <laughs> and then it swirls in on itself and yes. it's a it's a plasma ball of fire dancing and then it's explodes outwards and it's uh suspended water particles each fitzing like they're uh inside of a speaker that's like blowing them it's just kind of shifting through all these different kind of elemental vibes go ahead and write down that it has two charges okay two charges you don't know what a charge does yet Oh, I'm gonna find out. You can ride it you for see two rounds and then it's gone forever. <laughs> Roy comes oh, in. Oh God! Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. You, that's it. <laughs> it just blows up. It's like the um, what's the hellhound cloak that when you use it three times, you just permanently become a hellhound. <laughs> what? I didn't even know that. Yeah, there's oh, a cloak yeah. that's cursed where it's like, oh, you can become a hellhound. Like you're a druid, but mm -hmm. infernal, very cool. But if you do it three times, you're stuck. That's like classic werewolf lore shit right there. Uh, very cool. Anyway, um, you see Roy, uh, comes in and says, Shit, I thought I heard that. Is it done? Well, it... Does it work? It's never done. I mean, all mechanics are a constant <laughs> process, so you're always tinkering to prove, but... It... <laughs> it's done. <laughs> I remember what you used to sound like, but yes, it works. <laughs> <laughs> Devastating comeback. <laughs> all right, well... You'll never be taller than me again, so. <laughs> Rev the engine. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Devastating sibling energy. It's got a sweet, sweet, smooth sound, oh, uh, except that as you do, the, the glass orb rattles, and there's a crack, little crack of thunder from inside of it. <gasps> oh, oh, fuck man. yes. <laughs> So is this going to be your new, like, mobile home now that you totally lost the ship? I didn't totally lose the ship. It's right there. I was just being pissy about it. This is sort of like yeah, uh, the mobile home away from home, if you're going to put it that way. Like, uh, short-form transportation. I wouldn't live on it. Well, I wouldn't live on it now. It's certainly impressive, though. I could never have done it. It's beautiful. I mean, like, it's got that whole, like, devil we get off on torturing people for eternity kind of vibe, but like if that's your shtick, then totally it's, you know. I have an idea. One of a kind. Because you're right, this is, <laughs> it looks awesome, but it could look more like Danny. Um, <clears throat> Red paint? We need to get Sadie, and also I need to get something off the ship. Okay, you know that there's like a 12 foot tall spiky googly eye that's guarding it, right? Yeah, but it's the loot that's on the ship. We can get stuff out in storage, right? Do I look like Otto? I don't know what the rules are. I didn't sign a contract with Otto. He just owns the ship. This is loot from us totally kicking right. the ass of a sheep. All right. All right, I'll get Sadie. 
you get whatever it is you're getting. Hell yeah. I would like to get the golden ram's horns out of storage if possible. That's what Danny's thinking. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> oh. You go to the ship. As you do, you see the merit is still standing on the deck. Turns to just watch you. As you go down below decks, just watches you the whole time unmoving. Uh, pick up the ram's horns from storage. Very dope. Bring them back up. Just watches you as you go past. Stare him down. Down the gangplank. <laughs> yeah. No, it does not attack or anything. <laughs> Roll initiative. <No. laughs> uh, does not attack. You didn't go to try and get into the captain's chair or anything. And uh, you come it in. Uh, you could, like, fuse the... You gotta, like, weld yeah, the Yeah, I'd like to... to my, in my head, I'm like, what if I replace the handlebars with the ram's horns? Because I imagine they're curved a little that's bit. That's dope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Fuck yeah. You want to do that? <laughs> yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, you pop those out. You start uh, welding those bad boys on, goggles on, uh, a Baroni Fluxurator in your hand, sealing those on. As you do, a boy comes back in and says, all right, uh, so he's going to come over once uh, job, uh, paint, current paint job is finished. Uh, and as he does, you hear that he's cut off by that familiar siren going off. Ooh. Oh, well, I guess he's going to have to wait. Hey, Roy. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to say, but no. <laughs> you remember when we were younger and they'd do those races whenever the siren went off? Yes, I remember. Inescapably, I remember everything from our childhood. Please go on. I mean, I know this goes, but you should probably test it. You're going to test it in a street race Why or an storm in the city of Brass? <laughs> The Illuminators are gonna are gonna eat your ass. Or or it's really fast and I win everything. Oh god. Okay, yes, the two options. You're caught by the police and thrown in the dungeon of the Palace of Charcoal eternally, or you win some money. Those are two equal benefits. Yeah, I see no flaws with this plan. <laughs> you wouldn't. I... You're gonna do it anyway, aren't you? Yeah, it kinda doesn't matter what you say. I think this thing is faster than you. Okay, well, you should at least have someone watching your back then, so... Aw, see you again in the, in the bike. I mean, it really should be Zax, but I guess I'll go. I'm never convinced Zax can really see in front of him out of his beard and everything. It feels like there's always, like, <laughs> hair in his face. The, the... Yeah, their eyebrows kind of obscure everything. You're, you're, you're right. <laughs> Just kind of like, they really hang down, yeah. you know? Get on the bike, we're gonna go in the street race. <laughs> okay, wait. Where are we? Like, where's the... Do you know where the race is? I assume you did. <laughs> Do you know me? I remember what you used to sound like, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard yourself now? Yeah, I've always sounded like this. I don't know what you're talking about. You're the one who had the voice change. It was... Yeah, because you've been on two packs a day for the... Anyway. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Who could we ask? Who at the heap would know where an illicit street race for money? It's Mandy, right? It's being... They're the only one. It's Mandy. It's Mandy. They definitely. <laughs> it's Mandy. We gotta. Oh, God damn it! Fucking Mandy. All right. Well, the siren sounded, so I guess we got about 15 minutes to get wherever we're going. So, uh, no sense putting it off. Yep. Start pushing the bike. You <laughs> try. You wheel. So you and Roy uh, grab the bike. Silently wheel it. What have you got there? A smoothie style. Trying to <laughs> cross the heap. Fortunately, uh, the good thing about a lockdown situation is that pretty much everyone's going into lockdown, so no sign of hot, of auto currently. Mm -hmm. You go to the. Where do you think Mandy usually hangs out? If they're at the heap, what sort of place does Mandy hang out? Do they have like a room? Yeah. Or. I kind of okay. think like similar to how a lot of the heap workers who have sort of taken up residence because Mandy's sort of like the local version of the Perospero crew to the heap. Like they do all the odd jobs around the city, like all the fetch quests that are just within one plane. Um, so I imagine that they have sort of like a half room, half office that's just in one of the heaps of the titular heap um, where they hang out. Kind of similar to how like Danny has 
the sort of half workshop, half previous residence, and Roy and Egan probably split a bunk somewhere too. It's kind of everyone sort of just like makes a spot on the premises that can be their spot. Cool. It's a little yeah. So little... cobbled together a little room. You arrive, open the door. Uh, Mandy opens it. The whole room is filled with smoke. <laughs> uh, and it's it's shockingly empty. Like, you've seen Mandy's room before, so it's not that surprising. But it's shockingly empty to the point where you're like, where are they keeping their stuff? Like, <laughs> do they not trust people? Do they have a secret place where they keep their things <laughs> instead of here? Probably. You see, they open the door. <sighs> What do you two want? Where are the street races? <laughs> I never heard of any kind of street races. I don't know what you mean. I'm 100% sure that you're lying. Where are the street races that happen when the sirens <laughs> go off? No inside check, neither. <laughs> God, you're so keen. You can see right through my brilliantly constructed lies. <sighs> Just stare. It's really going to piss off Otto <laughs> if you go, right? Yeah, it'll make him fucking furious. Races in the rookery. Meet outside the Seven Maidens Casino. Make sure you don't get caught, right? The Illuminated go inside during the dust storm, that's the whole point, but that doesn't mean they're stupid and they don't know what's going on. Thanks, Mandy. Uh... Yep. Thanks, Mandy, indeed. <laughs> hey. Huh? Screw the bastard. <laughs> Give you a wink. Aww. And make sure you win. Obviously. Jesus, be embarrassed to send you there to lose. Who do you think you're talking to? to Jesus, <laughs> and I'll chuck Mandy a pack of uh, Danny's cigarettes. Hell yeah. You always know what to get from me. Yeah, well, you're pretty easy to shop for. Let's give her, <laughs> give him a little <laughs> wave. <laughs> Start wheeling the bike out of the heat. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got a race to fucking win. <laughs> 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 All right, you guys go and hurriedly. It's only a district over, which is the good thing. Yes. The dust storm is fast approaching. Um, Mission Impossible. You see shutters off. being drawn as you go through. <laughs> the normally the entire, normally the clouds, which is very weird, obscure the sky, black ash. So the normally dazzling city turns to dull. I mean, as dull as a city can be when it's made out of, you know, polished precious metals, but regardless. You sneak your way through, and indeed you see a small gathering of people kind of huddled. There's a kind of big open doorway that's half closed, but you can see there's someone leaning outside. You see this Azer who's like real skinny. Which is like they're dwarves, so skinny for a dwarf is still like you know. Usually, usually they're about as wide as they are tall. So imagine someone who's only <laughs> slightly less than as wide as they are tall. You know, <laughs> sure. But real like, real like greasy, which is a part flame, so that's really hard to pull off. Beard and hair. Uh, you see, he uh, nods. He sees you come with the bike. He gives a nod. Says. I haven't seen you around here before. I haven't seen really anyone around here before. Have you? Stare back. That's it. That's your big. <laughs> that's your big. You coming here? You're coming here to race, and that's your big trash talk. You coming in with? Haven't seen anyone around here before. I don't need trash talk. I have this, and I'll point to the bike. <laughs> Roy's just been wheeling it for you the whole way. <laughs> oh, my boy. Every, like, minute and a half, he's like, ow, as he hits a shit on a piece of metal. <laughs> Go ahead and make a persuasion yeah. Let's do I actually am not terrible at persuasion because I took proficiency in it. Uh, that is 17. It's a dope screamer. Fix it up yourself. Yeah, did a few... Uh, Tune-ups, modifications, made it very fast and less soul eaty. Right, yeah, don't care. All right, <laughs> 20 gold buy-in, you get inside the door. Can I insight check to see if this guy is... <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Because Danny's not intending to haggle, but 20 gold seems like a lot. 
I mean, the point is that you make a lot of money. It's you're gambling. Yeah. Uh, it is. It's absolutely a lot. <laughs> another seventeen. This is the die I'll be using. Uh, no, he seems pretty straight. You get the idea that perhaps if he was less impressed with you, he instead of not letting you in, he probably just would have tried charge to charge you more. You more but mm. instead, he's he's kind of running. Yeah. Through. I'll cough up the gold, twenty gold. All gold. right. All right. Makes the pot two hundred, if you win. Looking forward to my two hundred gold. Like, <laughs> chip my goggles at See, him. See, now that's the kind of trash talk that we <laughs> like around here. All right, get your ass in before the illuminated. See ya. Yeah. Wheel him on in. You enter, as the first bits of ash and dust begin to flow through the air. Inside, it's there's a lot of people, but it's shockingly quiet. Probably because people understand if they make a big ruckus, it's gonna get spotted. Um. But there's, you see, there's a lot of uh, people with, like, steeds here. You see there are a couple other hell machines. <laughs> there's uh, someone on a uh, flying carpet. Nice. <laughs> That's classic. Like cheating at a ground-based race. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see uh, there's a couple, though. Uh, I'll, I'll mention of note because uh, mechanically you're not racing against all of them. Uh, for the race, you see uh, there is a what looks to be a desiccated corpse uh, wrapped in bandages, nice. sitting upon a flaming horse. Excellent. <laughs> like that. So that is that is a, a mummy riding a nightmare. Not the nightmare. Oh. <laughs> you see. So oh, cool. You see Not one the of the uh, fire newts, which is the um, you you dealt with them before mm. in sick, uh, and they're on their steeds, the giant striders, which are the big like terror birds. Mm. So you see this dude's on a uh, terror bird uh, that looks, like, weirdly jacked up. <laughs> <laughs> Did they give uh, the bird steroids? Bird and on you steroids, see, yeah. Uh, there's a fire genasi as well who's on a, what looks like, it's a hell machine clearly by design, but it's kind of more like dune buggy shaped than just a motorcycle. Like, it looks like it can probably take a hit a lot better, but it's not, you know, it's not your bike. You see, uh, kind of like, as you enter, you know, there's just some glares from across from a lot of people. Glare right back. Um, the mummy looks at you, takes the tip of their cowboy hat, and gives a. The dip. mummy has a cowboy hat. Hell yeah, the mummy's got a cowboy hat. <laughs> what is your hair as rich as your character? <laughs> Oh, I can't believe you, you were like mummy on a nightmare, and then later you were like also in a Stetson. <laughs> the thing is that you you gotta really bury the lead. <laughs> I will tip my goggles anyway. back at the mummy with the cowboy hat. <laughs> Opens their mouth and it, you just hear, <sighs> and a scarab flies out. <laughs> <laughs> to you too, bud. <laughs> Someone says like it's coming, and you start to hear outside the wind start to rattle as it's throwing bits of ash and, you know, razor sharp little broken off pieces of obsidian through the air that's beginning to hit uh, against the side of this basically staging warehouse that you have now found yourself in. <laughs> Somewhat of uh, the, uh, the Azer, uh, whose name is Haxor, gets up <gasps> What? The guy who let you in, the skinny guy gets up and uh, <laughs> gives a sharp whistle. No magic here, just a dude about to shout. He says, all right, storm's here. Means we got about, I'd say, 20 minutes before the Illuminator are out trying to uh, bag our asses. So let's get things going. Y'all know the rules. No. No more <laughs> flying no higher than 10 feet off the ground. Mm -hmm. No help from non-racers. Pot today is 200 gold. The lucky soul crosses the finish line first. Follow the dancing lights. We've already set them up. They'll lead you to the finish line. <laughs> and above all, don't get caught. Races to your marks. <laughs> jump, jump on the bike. You ride up, get on. Roy's like, so you've ridden one of these before, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what does, no. question, does Danny have vehicle proficiency? It should be listed under oh, your proficiencies God. on DVD. <laughs> Not think so. No. So, 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 okay. So basically what happens is if you check, um, I, I might ask for a, a, a dice roll from you, mm -hmm. or I might ask for a dice roll from your bike. 
Most of them are going to be from your bike, but some of them might be from you. I'll always specify. Uh, if you are doing something on your bike, you, if you were proficient, you would get to add that plus three from proficiency. Instead, you don't. So if I ask you, for example, to make a dexterity saving throw, you're just going to add the dex. You will not gotcha. add proficiency bonus to it. Cool? Yeah. I've, I've built, like, so many of these. There's no way I can't figure out how to make it go. Come on. Really? I've never seen you build any of these before. In fact, it was sort of a big deal when Otto got them. Makes it an even bigger deal that now I have one, too. Anyway, well, revs like this. We'll try not to die or crash into a fiery pit of fire. Yeah, he really nailed that one, bud. All right. Crash and burn for all I care. <laughs> Give him a punch <laughs> on the arm. You see... Race is ready! Uh, things start to uh, per, uh, jump to life. You start your bike, that purr comes on, and then the, yeah, the, the elemental, the anarch sphere begins to kick up. Uh, you see um, uh, the, the the mounts, the, the nightmare uh, uh, begins to like blow smoke and fire out of its nose. The hell machine that that Janasi is on, which is like a couple down from you, he puts a coin in, and the hellish <laughs> scream starts off. Still on coins, as, uh, amateur. A person's soul is conf- consumed uh, <laughs> to power this man's shot at t- 200 gold pieces. On your marks! Get set! The doors slide open much faster than you thought they could. Uh, ash and cloud like whip in, and a red light. A uh, red dancing light oh, the appears. Down. You're basically going to follow a bunch of like, fl- uh, like Will o' the Wisp style yes. dancing lights along the course, so that people know where to go. Because if you knew it beforehand, you could practice, right? So uh, the first one lights up, and you hear, "Go!" Initiative. <laughs> yeah. Remember, you got to hit A right at the point where yeah. it ticks down to a. one for the super a. boost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I see. You stole my. Sh- you stole my side chatter. I didn't see your side chatter Beep. joke yet. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. We're all just nerds who grew up on Wii's. Yeah. DM, that is a natural twenty on initiative. Oh, no fucking fuck. way! Yes. All right, here Holy we go. Shit. So, quick, quick rundown of the mechanics. I'm combining uh, an encounter with a with a uh, chase. So, what's going to happen? Uh, first off, everyone's vision is obscured uh, because you're all obscured. You're basically all operating at the same level, so it doesn't make anyone like better or worse. Um, but it does mean that complications are going to come up uh, at the, uh, uh, yeah, complications are going to roll up, uh, come up, we're going to roll them at the end of the round, and then it'll apply for the next round, and everyone will have to deal with those complications as they run up on them. Uh, sometimes there'll be no complications, in which case you can take an action to do something else if you'd like. Otherwise, you're using your action to try and avoid the complication, whatever it may be. Gotcha. Uh, so those complications, I've got a chart that's going to be randomly rolled. Uh, you're also going to roll at the beginning your bike, your mount, whatever the mount mm. is, is going to make a dex check to try and avoid the flaming balls of fire. The sorry, yeah, the you know burning <laughs> spheres that are go, that are flying through Johnny the air Cash starts uh, to try and prevent you from taking fire damage. You are essentially racing against the three other best pilots. Who are these three? Uh, so we're going to go in initiative order. Mm-hmm. The first, and you know, each each person on the initiative is going to get to do a thing. Uh, it's basically a skill challenge, except instead of competing against, uh, just, you know, you need a certain amount of successes, you need six successes first. Gotcha. If you hit three failures, you're out of the race. Uh, I think that's everything. Here we go. Let's get some initiatives down. Danny, what is your total? 22. 22. Okay. A moon the ancient rolled. Do 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 do. Uh, his dexterity is zero, so he rolled a 19. So he's going second. <laughs> I am so uh, excited for the uh, let's prison see, break name? episode we're gonna have to do after uh, this. <laughs> uh, let's see, no, the next dude is. She gets in prison with uh, all of Raza, befriends them, and then they break themselves out. I feel like the implication that Kiana and Viral are just on the ship for like two weeks straight, like, should we check on them? <laughs> like, they should be back by now. We're like, Danny lives here. <laughs> Presumably, Raza Roy would have had to limp the, uh, back at some point. The Newt rolled an 11, and Flint, the fire genasi on the hell bike, rolled a 10. So everyone, uh, you know, rolled in, in the, you know, above average. But Danny, you are absolutely crushing it. Off the line first, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw uh, against 
uh, with the with bike. The bike. So whatever the bike's dexterity is, please. Yes, yes. Ooh, it's a natural eighteen plus okay, four, well, twenty-two. You, you, come out immediately too fast to even be hit by any of these spheres. Uh, is there any action you would like to take on your first? There are no complications for the first round. It's just a big open parking, like like lot area that you're driving through. So, are there any actions you would like to take for the skill challenge to attribute to your successes? Remember, starting initiative means you have a huge jump because if you if everyone succeeds on every die roll, you'll still be the first to get to six because you're at the start of the pack. Yes. But you do need to hit those successes. So, is there any skill you would like to undertake? Could I make? Because the bike. I'll remind you, you do have two charges, and I don't know if you want to use them. Like <laughs> that, but... that has to be Austin. You and I both know that those need to be saved for an appropriately dramatic moment in which to figure out what those charges do. But um, coming out the gate here, the bike has an action called stunt. I immediately knew you were gonna clock. It does have an action called stunt. That has the possibility Uh, of wiping out on a failure. You know what? It's fine. Intimidation check (laughs) just doesn't do it. Intimidation is just like pop in a sick wheelie. By the way, we're we're ignoring dashing. We're just assuming everyone is dashing constantly. Yeah. So that's your vehicle is always dashing, and the speeds of them kind of are about equal and having to go around bends and stuff. So that is uh, that doesn't come to play. So stunt. Uh, yeah, a driver on Devil's Ride can expend 10 feet of movement to perform one free vehicle stunt, such as a wheelie or a burnout. Uh, the Devil's Ride must move at least 10 feet in a straight line. You're doing that. A driver succeeds on a DC de- uh, 10 dexterity check using the bike's dexterity. The stunt is successful. So I would totally, totally call this a... Uh, a ch- uh, remember, though, you, you can't reuse the mm-hmm. same thing throughout the, throughout the... But this would totally be your... Wheelie off the front line. Pop a sick wheelie off the front line in Mario Kart. Get that little speed (laughs) boost when you hit the A button just right. This is your Dodge Charger uh, uh, coming up onto its back wheels as the Fast and Furious race starts. Show me that thumb. Okay. You're looking for a 10 with a plus 4. That's natural 11, so it's good. Plus 4. Yeah. Boom. Wheelie right out the gate. First success goes to Danny. There we go. Oh boy! Amazing. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, anything else you would like to attempt, or is that just your turn? So is that a, that's one success? That is one success. Correct. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have any bonus actions or anything you want to like put like a buff on yourself. I don't know what those would be, but just just to just to check. You can't do enlarge on yourself, right? You can't do enlarge on the bike and yourself. Oh God. I don't think you can. That's why I, that's why I offered it. Uh, Across the planescape, we all have this sudden feeling of dread <laughs> for reasons we can't explain. Did they say, also just for my own clarification, did they say no magic at the top of the race when they were saying the rules, or was that? They did not say no magic. Danny well, has the, the announcer is just speaking. Danny has lock, no magic. vortex warp. Uh, <laughs> no fucking way. No, 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 no. Um, I don't have any. I don't know if you could teleport yourself and the bike. I'm, I'm not talking about teleporting me or the bike, but uh... <laughs> you're just gonna teleport someone off the fucking yeah, field. Just someone yeah. off the field. Yes. Is that a bonus Shit. action or an action? What? Is it a bonus action or an action? That's an action. I'm not doing well. it now. Uh, I oh, don't have okay. any. I don't have any bonus actions for my turn. But um, that's just a thing that Sophia is thinking about for the future. All right, cool. Um, fantastic. Got my so that is your turn. Bonus. We're gonna do. Who's next? We're gonna do real quick. Mummy Lord is going to attempt an animal handling check to get off the board <laughs> quick. Uh, a Mummy Lord? <laughs> nah, that's a mum. Uh, natural one. <gasps> oh, that's a mummy fucker. Poor showing for that's the Mummy Lord. That's a failure for Amun the Ancient. The Nightmare winnies and he totally loses huge ground. Uh, the Fire Newt is going to attempt the same wrap to get for the his mummy lord. to go. Hey, hey. Oh, can I have plug can with his hat? <laughs> can, is there like a little... <laughs> Can I have a little, like, basket in the back that, like, plug right. is in? Oh, like, I don't want to start, too. Like, 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 like chim chim. Yes, exactly. Uh, yes. Yes. Be, like, snuck onto, like, yeah. the back somehow. Uh, Raza, Why is my gas newts, tank making uh, accordion spurs noises? On, <laughs> spurs on Sorry. his giant strider. He's good. And then uh, this dude is going to attempt the same thing from it. He's also going to attempt. He saw you do your thing. He's going to attempt uh, a trick, too. Um, fail. Fail. Uh, but he is proficient, so it's not as good dex though. It's like it's it, his thing is not as dexy as yours, mm-hmm. so it's a lot tougher though. But he is proficient, so he's gonna add his plus three, plus two. So he's got a plus five. He needs to hit a five higher on the dice, sixteen. So he succeeds. 
So, you are technically in the front. Razak, already taken an L. Uh, sorry, hey, Amun already taken an L. Razak <laughs> and Flint are uh, keeping right at your tail. We're gonna roll the end of the round. Please roll me a d20 for complications, Danny. That is a 12. Uh, a 12 is a uh, way go complication. So oh, nice. you enter uh, down to a, it's a big curved uh, path, huge, like tall walls. Um, you know, there's presumably, uh, there's a lot of like carts and stuff usually going up and down here, but there's no complications in the way. So Danny, the action is yours, whatever you would like to take. Okay, let's see. Could I maybe make an arcana check to kind of take a look over the other guys devil's ride and see if because it's working on a slightly different system than mine if there's any flaws that might occur to me with how it's working that's to that's a great idea um i wouldn't even say that's an arcana i'd say go ahead and make a tools check all righty i'll take it Ooh. um we're gonna contest that with his not as good at being a mechanic but it's kind of his bike so he's um he's gonna do uh He's just going to do a dex check to see if, like, he's riding well enough that you can't see through. Mm -hmm. So he's just rolling and adding a plus. Uh, actually, he's, he's got a plus seven to this because he is proficient. So he's going to, he's rolling a plus seven. Okay. I got a 23. <laughs> Did get a natural. <gasps> no! Ooh. As you, um, Ooh. Oh, uh, it's, uh, could you make me a dex check from your bike, yes, too, uh, yes, yes, yes. for the damage from the storm? Okay, that's a natural 19 plus 4, so... Oh, you're yeah. totally fine. Cool. Um, he is... You are, like, keeping an eye on the bike and not even realizing... You're not a street racer by, by trade or anything. Not even realizing that as you do, you're kind of, like, being predictable. And he catches up and pulls alongside mm. you, looks over at you, gives a wink, says, See at the finish line. You're gonna be the first one I vortex warp away from this track. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's your first failure, Danny. Yes. Um, the rest of them are going to take their turns. Uh, there's really not much for them to do. Um, uh, the mummy is too far behind you to attempt to like really do anything to. Uh, mummy, mummy's just gonna try to hold person and another fighter, uh, another racer, so that they fall off. <laughs> But you're you're too far away at this point for him to get you. Fortunately, uh, that person fails. So, <laughs> Amun catches up over someone. Uh, Razak's turn. He is. Uh, he really can't do much either. He's just gonna do a Spitfire attack. Um, see if he can knock someone else off. <laughs> a Spitfire. Uh, hey. <laughs> he fails. That's my thing. He fails. Uh, and then uh, it's this dude's turn. He's going to... Fuck, I guess he's going to shoot fire at you. <laughs> <laughs> nice fucking try. This isn't really a success whether he hits or not. Um, mm -hmm. This is just to deal damage to you. But he's hoping he can knock you off. Um, Vroom. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this is great. I, Sophia, don't know how to drive a motorcycle, but it's nice that Danny can just sort of learn on the fly. <laughs> how hard could it be? She drives it as well as you can ride a skateboard. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Don't bring Tony Hawk into this. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, Wonder you know what? what? He's going to use raking uh, sights on you. What now? What? <laughs> uh, don't worry about it. He uh, was in five favorite creature uh, that isn't prone. or Oh, no. Or on another vehicle. Uh, so <laughs> he can't do that to you. Boom, baby. Um, it's basically a medium or smaller creature creature uh, no you're not in the thing uh cool you're just gonna shoot a little hard for me do your worst uh natural three does not hit oh. <laughs> a little a little side harpoon shoots past um but you uh like speed up give it a little gas and pull past him a little bit all right uh end of the actually everyone's like tied up with a success and a failure <laughs> so it's anyone here we game. go uh, <laughs> End of round two. Can I go ahead and get you to roll me another d20? 20. Continues to be no complication. It moves open to a huge, mar usually market street that's very crowded, but now is devoid of anyone. Uh, Danny, dexterity saving throw at the start of your turn uh, for fire damage. By the way, it doesn't count as a failure. It's just fire damage. You can be like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is it the bike's dex or mine? Bike. Okay, cool. 
Uh, that is 15. Not great. Yep, you're good. Oh, cool. Um, cool, we come to your action. Is there anything you'd like to do? Can I see the guy whose bike evaded? You can totally see the dude. He's right next to you. You guys are neck and neck currently. Would he like to make a DC 16 constitution saving throw to avoid being vortex warped off of his bike and somewhere else into this marketplace? He... Sophia, he would love to. <laughs> uh, he has a plus two to this, so he needs a 14 oh, or higher. Natural 20. No! no! Who is this guy? <laughs> We should hook him uh, up with Tavian. He could use a few victories in his life. <laughs> <laughs> he takes off a hat, his mask and it's actually been Davian this whole time. <gasps> Who is this mysterious masked racer? <laughs> Shit, is that another failure? God damn. It is. Danny's getting real close here. Um, yeah. Similarly to, to Racer X, it's like, you know that it's Davian. Just, it's just like, there's a mask. Yeah, <laughs> just got the thinnest of disguises. This is actually one of her long lost enemies to lovers, Davian. <laughs> <laughs> who faked his own death and re-entered the race as race of Amazing. Uh, he starts to pull ahead of you. Is there any bonus action you want to undertake? Uh, da, 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 da. I do not really have bonus actions unless I summon the cannon, so no. Uh, plug is not going to do anything right now. Or you know what? Could I use a bonus action to have plug like scan behind me and just watch for danger? Like, <laughs> Uh, sure. Great. <laughs> Perception check from the robot. Come on, plug. Don't fuck me over. <laughs> okay, he's a plus four to perception. He's pretty good. Uh, that's a 17. <laughs> that's shocking. Shocking? Uh, yeah, I mean, the race as it stands currently, which is uh, Moon, the mummy is li like, mo you're basically leaving people behind except for these three people. Flint is neck and neck with you, uh, and the other ones are starting to catch All up. All right. They are just going to... Everyone's just going to do... Um, the dex They didn't really consider how many actions these guys have to take. Uh, we're just gonna roll four. Everything else was so fun and streamlined. Uh, it was. Uh, you know what? So, there's always something to miss at DM. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Danny, we're gonna come to the end of the round, so go ahead and roll on, on the complication table again. <laughs> they Actually, they really just don't have any more action. They're not that complicated. They they just try to win. So. It's a 14? They wait, they're away from 14? Yeah, you're still rolling too high for any complications. Um, the straightaway expands. Uh, we move from uh, this district. We're getting into a more, uh, slightly more opulent district mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. um, and this, as it is, marketplace narrows down to tighter streets. Danny, uh, your turn. Uh, dexterity saving throw, and then... Uh, that's a 15 on the dex save. Cool, you're good. Sweet. And any actions you'd like to undertake. Yes, 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 yes. Um, okay. Things are starting to look dire. You're catching up, man. But I do have <laughs> two charges. You do have two charges. <laughs> I don't know. What... You want to push that big red button and see what it does? <sighs> Austin, you know I want to push that big red button and see what it does. <laughs> Danny, you give the orb floating in space, arcane injury being siphoned from it. Give it a spin. Uh, go ahead and roll me a d4. Please don't fuck me over. This is that random table that I spent 45 minutes trying to find. Two? It just turns your skin a different color. <laughs> <laughs> Danny's a different color. At all. That's all it does. You're green now. <laughs> green uh, Danny. Uh, you trigger the earth function of the elemental uh, surge. Uh, you gain resistance to a damage type of your choice until the start of your next turn. I'm already resistant to fire. If I double down, <laughs> not necessarily the most. It's not necessarily the most useful one for this race. No. I will admit. That, that's the that's the drawback of the random table. Uh, you would really love some air. Actually, is what you'd really love right now. <laughs> I'll take resistance. Uh, so here's the thing. Uh, let me let me say to this, Danny. Um, or Sophia. Uh, again, imagine this race not as a combat, but as a narrative encounter. Is there some way that you, you trigger this? Is there a way that Danny thinks she can use gaining resistance to something to aid her in this race? Yeah, there's all these like shards of things fly and ash flying around in the air. Would that like would air mm -hmm. resistance count as maybe just avoiding all the dust and stuff a little bit to keep from like getting in my eyes? Oh, like maybe like resistant to piercing damage so that you can fly oh, through yeah, faster. Yeah, something like that. 
Totally cool. Um, go ahead and give me just a DC 10 constitution check to withstand that going fast. Natural 15. Perfect. So yeah, that's a success. Way to go, Danny. <laughs> two and two. Uh, they continue to go along. They are just keeping up with you currently. All right. Roll me a complication table. D20. <sighs> 16. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. Yeah, all, it's a 50% dirty. chance of a complication. <laughs> In fact, the odds of never stumbling into one of that is a statistical it's wonder. No wonder. <laughs> we don't have enough time to do it. All right, um, cool. Uh, Danny, dexterity saving throw at the start of your turn, and then whatever you'd like to do. Oh, that's a 15 on the dex save. Cool, you're good. Wait, what? <laughs> Rolled. Change out your weighted dice. Please. <laughs> I'll use a different D20. I thought I specifically requested not to use the weighted dice for this session. Okay. Uh, I have a very amazing. faithful uh, D20. Two and two. Uh, what would you like to do for your uh, ability? What check? are the tires on the Hell Rides or... made of that I see in this race? Oh, oh shit. Boy. That's a good question. Not rubber. They've got like metal, um, jagged uh, tires so that they get good uh, grip. And the whole bike is metal? Whole bike's metal. <laughs> you want to do like a heat metal? Is that what you're getting at? Because it doesn't have a save. So one way or another, it would heat the metal. But he's fire. I would enough. say, I would say if you want to do a heat metal, we're looking at that dude trying to make a con save. I don't want him. To... I don't want any more of his saves to be dependent on me. Yeah, no. Fair enough. Uh, is, there, is there a way you think that you could do an ability check to use heat metal creatively? That's, that's it. My baseline is heated up, and maybe he has to let go mm -hmm. because it's too hot. But if you can think of a way to use it creatively, I'll let you use an ability check to use it instead in that way. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's a way maybe I could, like, melt the wheels a little bit because they're already in a pretty hot place. Like, I'm wondering if I could heat metal enough to push them over the edge that they lose some of their traction and of misshapen oh, a little totally bit. Oh, that's totally dope. Yeah, that's like, totally if I focus awesome. on the wheels. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Totally, totally, totally. Um, let's see, what kind of check would that be? I'd say that's an Arcana check okay. to try and make your spell work the way you want it to. So we'll call it a DC 15 Arcana. No problem, I got a plus seven to this. And that's a good thing that I have a plus seven to it because I rolled a nine. Uh, so that's gonna be 16. 16 will succeed. Uh, so that's a success for Danny. Mm -hmm. And we'll go ahead and count that as a fail for Flint. Take that, Flint, you piece of as shit. As you see, his wheels start to misshape, they go Red hot and then white hot and start to like misshape it and the whole thing sort of little, 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 go past him as he's going over what has gone from smooth <laughs> steel to like a uh, cobblestone district now. Amazing. Bumpy roads, huh, buddy? Uh, and just keep on trucking. Each of them, uh, he actually no, he lost that round. So I've got three successes, two failures, one thin ice. Oh boy. End of round. Complication, please. <laughs> You really want complications because they can really fuck up the other people. Otherwise, they just kind of keep up with you. Nine. Nine is a complication. Here we oh, go. Oh, boy. Uh, you turn down an alley following the red lights, um, and there's just a bunch of fucking razor, like, uh, not razor, there's a bunch of, like, lines. Uh, that's what I'm looking for. Um, it's the Aladdin thing. You go down, there's a bunch of, like, carpets hanging on things here. Mm. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Clotheslines. Uh, like, clotheslines? Yeah, clotheslines. <laughs> There's a bunch of clotheslines, um, except they've they've strung out uh, pieces of uh, metal clothing for people who emit flame, right? <laughs> so basically, you've turned down uh, like a street of uh, sheet metal, like weapons and like uh, uh, not weapons, but like big sheets of metal and shit like that. that you got yeah, to avoid. it's the, like production um, line from the robots movie when they're down on the little like conveyor belt. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Come yes, on, exactly. It's exactly like that. That's exactly <laughs> what you're going through. Um, this is like, there's like a, there's a smithery nearby. A smithery? There's a smith shop nearby and they've hung all these things out. Anyway, uh, amazing. So your action this turn is going to be uh, making a uh, DC 50 dexterity saving throw to get through. With my duck to the bike stacks. Uh, the bike gotcha. stacks. But it is a check you're making. So you can add like your... Um, your flash of genius. Yes. I also have inspiration that I have not used. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. That's good to have. <laughs> it's going to be very good to have because that's... Uh, so I rolled with the bike stacks an 11, but using Danny's flash of genius, this is my home turf, add four to that, which would bring it to 15. Cool. The I don't know if you saw the bike also is a thing where you can use your reaction to give you advantage on the dexterity saving. Oh, I'm going to juke. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, you're gonna duke. You're gonna use your reaction to give you advantage. Yes. Uh, so go ahead and re-roll, and let's see if you still need the, um, not re-roll, but add another one, because it's at advantage. Yeah. We'll see if you need the inspiration. I don't. Or the flash of genius. Yeah, I don't need it. I rolled a natural 16 on the second one. Cool, you succeed. Uh, let's check in with the other racers. The Nightmare is going to make the dexterity saving throw. Only a plus two for him. Uh, he does succeed with an 18. Oh. And I lost my pen. So this counts as the fourth success? Uh, yes, Sweet. sorry. No, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm can't keep track of the successes. There it is, it's under my fucking Got my desk. flash card. I know. <laughs> We're gaining. Another way that you can keep track of your successes and failures is through World Anvil. With <laughs> the whiteboard Today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is World Anvil. All right, sorry. So Danny has a success. Moon the Ancient has a success. Razak is going to roll. He adds his giant strider, adds just plus one. He just makes it. Goddamn. And then Flint is going to roll. Here we go. Flint rolls a natural two. <laughs> Oh, Adios, Flint, bitch. Bumpy, bumpy, bumpy in the back. Hits, fully hits a um, <laughs> uh, a sheet, and you hear boom, and goes flying off the back. Yes. Flint is out of the race, baby. Ooh. Get out of here, bitch. There's only room for one fire genasi and a hell ride in here, and it's me. <laughs> Amazing. All right, end of round. Danny, roll a complication table. Fifteen. Okay, so there's no complication. Are there any actions you would like to undertake? So we're kind of like keeping an eye for the uh, local uh, law enforcement. Uh, is there maybe like an intelligence or an insight check that I could make to suss out like if I were them, where would I hide along the kind of path we've been taking? Oh, sort of like a street smart yeah. sort of situation? <laughs> like a street smart check. Yes. Is there any way you could do... Uh, what's your background? Uh, urchin? I believe it's Urchin. Let me just double check that. What's, check out your background feature from Urchin. <laughs> oh, you know what? No, I switched it to Guild Artisan, so it, it was Urchin when we first rolled the character up, but then it changed it. To... No. Uh, damn, I was going to say, that would be the perfect use of the background know. feature. I Dang it. Um, uh, I would say you could, but it would definitely be like... An ins. Mm, it would be a history check, and it would be a hefty one. Ooh. Plus four to history. So, plus flash of it would genius. Be, it would be pretty high. It's definitely. I don't know. Do you have any other ideas? Yeah. Let's see. So left in the race are the horse and. Um, horses out. Horses out. Uh, oh, sorry. No, the horse is still in. A moon. The ancient is in. And Razak, the giant stri uh, the fire newt on the giant stripe are still in. So there's two animals. Two left. animals left. Okay. Could I maybe make an investigation check to see if there's anything in the surroundings that could be used to distract a living creature or an animal? <laughs> Have you used investigation yet? I don't think I've used investigation. I used Arcana. Um, I had a tools check. Here's the thing: is it, that feels to me like an animal handling yeah, check. You're right. Otherwise, it's like something high speed investigating to find like. Something that would distract them. It, it's possible. We're looking at like 25. Yeah. Okay. Let's try. Ooh. Ooh. You still have one more charge. And, I have a spell called uh, Grease. Could I just throw a Grease out behind me? Oh. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so throw, you want to throw Grease in front of them, those yeah. guys? This is the All most right. apt use for <laughs> it. the only situation in which Grease is perfectly applicable. Why did I not think of that? Yeah. Doing a real, doing a real, fucking, what's his name? Snake uh, Oiler. Fuck. Snake the, um, Oiler okay, in the grand. Here we go, ready? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not going to count it as a failure for you if you fail. It's This is a this is a success. Uh, like, this is, you're trying to get them failed right. right now. So, here we go. Uh, deck save from DC the. DC 16. Uh, what's the deck DC? save. 16. Deck save from the Nightmare. Natural three, that's a fail hey. from the nightmare. And then Razak on the giant strider rolls a natural fifteen. Let's check what the strider's dexterity is. Plus one, he uh, will succeed. One out of two ain't bad. Uh, so uh, he stays in the race. Uh, you and the mummy are neck and neck. Uh, let's go ahead and take success for slowing down the mummy. Nice. At five. Uh, you and the mummy are neck and neck. 
Razak has one fewer failure than you, so I'd say he's kind of in the lead right now. But your initiative is still before him, so if you get to six first, which this is the final round, uh, then you're going to you're going to win. All right. Like, basically, he's a little bit uh -huh. in front of you, but you've got the initiative. So if you can do something before him, uh, you can you can snake this this victory out from underneath him. All right, here we go. Let's roll the final complication. I've forgotten to make you make deck saves, but you've made all of them <laughs> for your fire damage anyway. And it's just to accumulate damage. There was the potential you could accumulate enough damage to get out of the race, but not likely. Anyway. Mm, five. Here we go. Oh boy. You must... The storm intensifies as you reach the apex of it. This is a literal, I'll read it, literally what it says here. Make a DC 10 constitution saving throw. On a failed save, you are blinded by blowing dirt, sand, uh, ash, snow, or pollen until the end of your turn. So you're trying to succeed and not be blinded as it literally, it's about driving through a, a, a blizzard of shit. So <laughs> Danny, this is the role, and you happen to be good at con saves. So this is the role to decide it all. The start of initiative, if you get one more succeed, Go ahead and roll. That is a natural 14 plus three. <sighs> Danny, how do you win this race? <laughs> <laughs> let's see if these guys make it or eat shit, but let's, uh, you're gonna win. Tell me how you win. I have another charge left, right? You got one more charge oh left. You wanna God. roll just for shits and gigs? Spin that roll wheel, baby. <laughs> yeah. Just for whatever that. What hell, does then. a four do? <laughs> Water, you create a wave of water that bursts out from you in a 10 foot radius. Each creature <laughs> of your choice that you can see in that area must take 2d6, uh, 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 takes 2d6 cold damage and must succeed. Yeah, dead strain throw would be pushed away. I want the wave to go behind me so that they're really eating my shit when I go by. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, grit your teeth, barrel in, go through this worst of this storm. Uh, you're doing a little bit better than other people because you put yourself resistant to that that stuff from before. So even though it only lasted uh, for a round, it uh, really helped you, like you know, withstand it. And here now you push against the storm, blowing against you, razor shards flying through. You push a huge wave of water, collects ash, and just becomes like black mud and hits both these guys. They don't wipe out, but they like falter and uh, cross the finish line barely behind you. Eat my shit. Congratulations, <laughs> Danny. That was pretty tight, honestly. Woo! And a kind of weird yeah, piece of can the, I uh, skill do the, um, So thank you for bearing with slide me. Slide into the finish, you know, like do like a full, like a ski yes, stop. Yes, yes, Akira slide. Akira slide. Akira bike slide. We all knew it was coming. <laughs> we all Hell, knew yeah. it was coming. So congratulations, Danny. On top of earning uh, 200 gold pieces, uh, you've also gained proficiency in. God fucking thank yeah, God. There you go. oh, That's how you as get it. As well as street cred for the racing gang. Street smart. Uh, somehow Haxor is there. Like, you guys just flew there. Somehow Haxor is already there. Um, something was set up. Uh, and he hands you a prize. Says, I know you're new here, so. Standard operating procedure get the hell out before the Illuminators come. <laughs> Maybe we'll catch you next time there's a storm. Right on, bud. Roy, get on here. We gotta go. <laughs> get on the bike. Ch we gotta Ch <laughs> Roy, no, Roy's not no. here. Roy's back at the starting line. Ah, shit. It's I gotta go Roy. Got here. <laughs> <laughs> you race back. Uh, uh, make it back to the heap. Uh, congratulations. The story's come to a close. Uh, and we end with our Danny Mom couple days later, it's been a couple weeks total, about three, when Danny, mm -hmm. you were informed, uh, before, Virla, before you left, uh, got the sending stone from Otto so that you guys could communicate and let Virla know when it was time to come back and he could let everyone else know. Mm -hmm. Danny, Otto lets you know that he's figured something out and he'd like you to call the rest of the crew back. Hmm. I Shit's about to hit the fan, guys. You gotta get back here. You send to Virla? Yeah. And Virla with sending? I will convey the message. <laughs> um, to, in turn to, Finbar, uh, to to Kiana and then Finbar. Um, we are to return to Sigil. Otto has come to a decision. No, uh, City of Brass, not Sigil. <laughs> the heap. 
uh, Otto has come to a decision regarding uh, our place, the Paraspora's place in the heap. Promise it. Amazing. Each of you in your own way and time make it back. We find ourselves standing before the ship. Otto approaches the inevitable standing on the ship. Steps forward as he approaches. Uh, you see Otto turns and says, That won't be necessary anymore. You're relieved of your post until you are called on again. You see, there's not even a nod. The thing just plane ships out. Huh, okay. Back says, well, you all look fabulously rested. Danny has the same raccoon, Is that true? like eye, eye tattoo lines on that make her look permanently tired. <laughs> Finbar is carrying a baby dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Virla is wearing a sparkling uh, <laughs> set of torso chain is shining for some reason. Yeah, I actually like, never probably looked look glowier. Well <laughs> yeah. Danny's face is just covered in small abrasions. <laughs> There's like a distinct line where like my goggles were where there aren't any too, so you yes, can tell exactly, exactly. what yeah. happened. Nice. She looks like she's got road rash on her face. <laughs> <laughs> now that you're all back, I feel it's appropriate enough to let you know that I have subcontracted the ship. Since you do not work for me usually, you will instead be working for someone else who will stay with you aboard the ship to keep an eye on your activities. In the meantime, that person will pay me for the monthly usage of the Paraspora. We got a captain, but at what cost? <laughs> <laughs> your continued uh, uh, service aboard the ship. So, I assume no one has any objections. That I would Are care about. Familiar? He looks at Danny. <laughs> Just glare back. Are we familiar with the subcontractor? Sorry? Are we familiar with the subcontractor? Or is this somebody new? Uh, I doubt it. it. Took me some weeks to get in touch with someone with both the need of a spell jammer for just and the uh, patience to deal with the situation and the coin to afford it, frankly. Um, but please, please, um, I'd like to introduce you to from. Uh, world of Elysium uh, please meet your new boss Delphine and you see uh, this uh, 12 foot tall blue woman white hair she kind of actually she kind of looks like one of the Dabus um, a little less exaggerated though um, anyone can roll an arcana uh, check if they yeah like. oh. yes sir whoops <laughs> Sorry for bunsing my mic on that one. Oh, man. <laughs> Don't be ambitious, Kiana, okay? <laughs> you it's at a possible. Hole. I, it's you it's a, a straight in roll, one. but it might happen. Yeah. My world travelers can. Eight. Natural one. <laughs> okay. Cool. Virla? <laughs> okay. 13. 13? I'm actually going to try this. Okay, hold up. Finmar, actually, there's a reason you might know this. Ooh, okay. Uh, this is also not important, but during the downtime, Danny would have used the winnings from the race to buy a cool leather jacket. Oh, yes. Oh, nice. No, that's, that's just a 10. Is, does it say anything ten? on the back? Any uh, patches? None of you. Oh, you know those patches. Virla, this is clearly a giant, but you don't really know more than that. You've never seen a being like this before. Um, what do I know about Elysium? Uh, Elysium is the world of neutral good. Um, it is sort of like Mount Celestia in that it's a mountain world, but it is not so hard to, like, um, Mount, Mount Celestia is about personal growth. It's about, it's lawful good, and it's the sense of being the truest version of yourself. Neutral good is kind of just being about chill and happy, so there's a lot going on there. Uh, <laughs> all right. Not a lot of people, though. It's, it's kind of idyllic and... It's, it's, you can't you, you don't get a lot of civilization because there's not a lot of like people who can deal with that right the same way it wouldn't be easy for a lot of people to deal with pure law all the time mm. uh the the true nature worlds don't make it easy for lots of people to kind of get there anyway this <laughs> uh giant got like crazy winged eye makeup like really done up um huge flowing pink robes Gives a bow, says, 
Hello, I am Delphine. I am pleased to meet you, crew of the Paraspora. Nice to meet you. Sticks out a hand for a handshake. Oh, Hello. how charming. Gives like a two finger crappy <laughs> yeah. hand and gives a little shake. Yeah. I want is she sincere? I just wanna I just wanna get a read. Roll an inside check. Thank you. <laughs> just sort of like it seems like look over oh, to Otto like, like, like oh, really bad. <laughs> no, Kiana. Well that adjusts to a ten, mm. but it was a two. <laughs> seems uh yeah. Seems All right. um Seems like she's uh she's all about what she's putting out. Great. I like dealing with her more than I like dealing with Otto. So as far as I'm concerned, this is all wins, baby. <laughs> sure. Anyone else? She she turns to the rest of you. Um, she says, I'm excited to be able to have access to your ship and expertise. I'm a purveyor of many fine things across the landscape. Uh, and with your help, I look forward to expanding my clientele and the profits that we as a collective might bring in. Gonna like lean over to Virla and whisper like, you think maybe we could drop her off with Stranger or like Hira? I think they'd really get along for now. <laughs> <laughs> I think if we were to do that, she would just tell Otto. Mm. Well, uh, I think it's going to be nice getting back on the ship. Uh, Kiana, this is for you. I uh, kind of hand her the uh, little speckled uh, pseudo dragon. Um, <laughs> you're going to need to drink a little bit of this first. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and it don't, it don't have a name yet. That's up to you. Uh, I will say, though, it's got a twin, much like you. Oh, uh, so absolutely maybe. entranced so you have fun with that oh my uh, goodness <laughs> hello little guy immediately mind link <laughs> what's up buddy what do you want me call buddy that's very cute <laughs> will this be sharing the ship with us y yes oh that's you dumpy. might have to get used to a couple pets or two plug will walk up and throw oh. up on her foot is there anything with fur i'm allergic uh, no, I do not think so, actually. <laughs> no, not right now. Uh, well, just vomits up an puts... entire live bat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh um, before we go, I thought, uh, since we will be working together, it would be appropriate for you to look over the terms of the contract. Um, she holds Vera. out uh, uh, a piece of paper. Everybody moves out Fairly of the way. Well, you look I'm it. reading it. I'm treating it with the same rigor that I did the other contract. <laughs> Surface like, level meaning, any loopholes. Everyone else sees a pretty standard contract that uh, in lies exactly what Virla, uh, sorry, what Otto just laid out. Virla, as you unroll it, mm -hmm. to your eyes alone, Oh, no. Illusory script, golden cursive lettering appears across the page. Wait. Uh, and it says, At the request of Our Lady, <gasps> I am to aid you in your quest. Oh! Ah! <laughs> okay. Vila. Time, everything slows and well, gray appears. <laughs> <laughs> and stepping up next to you, Mistra. Well, you don't think that I can constantly be stopping what I'm doing to see to your needs, do you? Okay, I admit I wasn't sure how you would get us out of this, but I stand corrected. It's not ideal. Delphine has other things she'd like to be doing, but I'm sure she'll find her fun in it. And she will lead you along the way. How aware is she of our nature? She understands the nature of what's going on here even if she doesn't understand entirely the end goal. But she has been given instructions. Now that you have completed the preparations for the journey you're about to undertake, she kind of like fingers the um, the elven chain you've got. <laughs> I hope that you'll be Hands off the good, ready but... <laughs> for what is to come. Delphine will have more information, but first thing is first. We must repair your docent. If you understand Re where we're going, you will need to understand the pass. <gasps> repair? With that, the time stop, she plane shifts away, the time stop fades. 
Delphine. Who's says, a little boy? Who's well, the cutest? <laughs> I have a uh, business to attend to in Bytopia. If you would like to, uh, we could leave immediately. Um, and I, everyone here, as the time stop ends, can go ahead and make a perception check. Oh, sure. Okay. Near you. Sure. Uh, Virla, you don't have to. You saw the time stop end. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> okay. Ooh, shit. 12. <laughs> Danny? 19. I rolled a natural oh. 20 <laughs> minus 1. Oh, Finn, but it's a uh, nat 20. Sorry. sorry, fam. It's not a nat 20 is not an auto success on a skill check. No. I only got an 18. I rolled super low on this. None of those are what you needed. No Ooh. one notices right. Virla's slight shift in position <laughs> from in between moments that he shouldn't have been able to move as the ship is once again yours. Yeah, but then and that's where we're going to end this super packed, incredibly crazy episode. Yeah! I can't believe we ran four Whoa! adventures in four and a half-ish <laughs> hours. I'm going to go cry. I uh, I hope everyone had fun. Danny, oh, at some oh, point, did Danny. chuck a matching leather jacket to Roy for his thanks for helping out. Oh, that's very nice. But then, yeah, but then that ship happens everything. Oh, everyone's getting made. I'm terrified this because we all just got boons, and also one of them was quite large. Uh, every time Austin has given us gifts, it has immediately resulted in danger. So I am... Oh, that does remind me. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, it's everyone's the... level mine. <gasps> oh, shit. <laughs> It's the equivalent of like, really, uh, uh, of like an antechamber boss room giving you like yeah, a bunch yeah. of yes. health potions yes. and shit. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh no, shit's about to go. We just yeah. gotta level up. I'm proficient in vehicles now, which means we're gonna find another way to work the hell ride in. Uh, Virla's got a ride along pal. Kiana also has a weird little dude. I have a weird little dude. <laughs> Uh, oh, Ingmar also, has like figured out some of his relationship issues. I am also literally on first name basis with a with the Lord Devil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those guys are super dope. I got that guy from Kingdoms and Warfare, which is an MCDM product. Incredible. Uh, the uh, quick 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 uh, 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 the uh, Amazonian barbarian paragon that Kiana fought is from Odyssey of the Dragon Lords, which is yes. a dope uh, Greek third party adventure. Mm. Um, and I'm sure there are other things that I took. Uh, that I don't remember. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for playing. Thank you, guys. I hope everyone had fun listening. And uh, we'll see you next week as we investigate what on earth do they mean by fixing docent? <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. It's so stressful. <laughs> Virla, you're going on a highway to the danger zone, baby. <laughs> Fear Fearless season. Fearless season. Fearless season. <laughs> busted as it is. I don't know what else you could do to it. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this week's adventure on Rolling with Difficulty. We'll be back next week with a new installment, but if you miss us before then, check out the Rolling with Difficulty Discord. Chat with other fans, check out some cool fan art, and more. Got a question for the pod? Feel free to email us at rollwithdifficulty at gmail.com. If you enjoyed the show, please rate us and leave a review on your preferred podcast platform. And if you really enjoyed the show, consider becoming a patron for even more exclusive content. Links to all this and more can be found on the show notes below.